No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we're bringing you a much anticipated conversation, an incredibly important piece of Chicago as well as drill history. We got THF Bezu on the podcast. How you living, man? Most definitely, most definitely. Shout out to No Jumper, man. Hey, we made it happen. What's the word? What's the word? What's the word, Ram? Got you doing, in the man? building. What up? What up? What up? I, I mean, we exist in a climate in terms of like all the Chicago legends where everybody's kind of like over interviewed at a certain point. You know, like everybody's kind of talked a lot. We kind of, we feel like we know everything there is to know about a lot of people, but you're kind of like the last piece of the puzzle in terms of just somebody who everybody knows has some of the craziest stories and some of the wildest history in the game, but you've, you've been very uh, careful about putting it out there into the world. What, what is the reason for that? Most definitely, like, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> like I told Raymond when I first tapped in with him, you know, like me personally with the drill coach, you know what I'm saying? I've been a major influence for, 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 for over a decade, you know what I'm saying? So like with my, my legal situations I be having, I just, Wanted to fade the back on the, on the, on, the, on the doing the interviews. You know they've been reaching out with me about ten years ago. You know what I'm saying. Mm. I usually mm. adopt the, the the equation, but you know what I'm saying by me doing this music. You know what I'm saying with my career, the world want to know. I, I felt like I never gave them an aspect of how I'm coming for real, for real. They already got everybody else to paint their own narratives or create their own content for clickbait, whatever this, whatever it was. So I told myself like, you know what, maybe it's time for me to do sit down and just you know what I'm saying. I know how to I know how to move, so I know how to. You know, I, I, I've been doing it too long, so I know how to dodge certain questions and everything. But I feel like I need to get a world an A for this has coming in a row. You know what I'm saying? All my fans be want to check in with me. The most they get with me is on live. You get what I'm saying? Right. I go live a lot just to interact with my fans. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, man, I'm just gonna sit down and just 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 give it a try this time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This might be y'all only, so y'all might be lucky, man. Y'all got a real dude, a real real 100 genuine dude on on, on the chair right now. So like. Okay, so my first question based off of that is you've seen a lot of so-called gangsters and a lot of like real, you know, people who really like been in the streets, grew up in the streets who I'm sure you have respect for, but you've seen a lot of them kind of, you know, be out here spilling secrets and sauce over the Most years, right? I've seen, I seen a little bit of both, you know what I'm saying? I've seen some people, you know what I'm saying, that I didn't expect to get up there and do it right, but you know, like this, the media, get, get in front of this camera you know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard for certain people to know how to talk and interact with, with y'all or know how to respond to certain, you know what I'm saying? Because they ain't did it before, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a time I was camera shy before I started shooting music videos, but I always wanted to do music. So I'm like, damn, how could I be camera shy if, I'm, if I plan on being on the stage in front of millions and millions of fans, you know what I'm saying? Like, these my dreams that I'm chasing. How could I be camera shy? So, you know, it's like a pill certain people got to swallow, but some people don't know how to don't know how to take it. So it'd be like, I don't feel like too many people be talking too much, but I definitely seen, like I told you, a little bit of both. I seen some that I thought that was like real and new. Like, I feel like they said too much, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, me, Pierre, like I got a public eye regards no matter what I do. As y'all see, you know what I'm saying? You look on YouTube, you're going to see more content with them promoting violence with my name more than they is me doing some serious shit. Like, mm. I could say I'm dropping a tape or dropping an album, tuning in at this time. I don't feel like the following that I'm going to get by my name being so hot in the streets for so long, I feel like they reach out more when it comes to promote violence for my name. So, like, anything for clickbait, they going to tune in with it just when it comes to my name anyway because I'm one of the authentic ones that's still here, you feel me? I mean, that must have been a crazy thing for you to witness over the years with people just taking your name and choosing to, like, make documentaries about you and probably putting all kinds of shit on you that you know that you weren't involved with or if you did have any involvement, you're like, well, why the is it in your is it, is this your business to be talking about me like that? Has that been kind of like a weird yeah, thing to know, see? It, it bothered me. It bothered me at a point in time. But like I said, like certain journalists, this is what they do. You know what I'm saying? So like me arguing back and forth with the internet or on on that's clickbait or they line me going back and forth. Like I don't feel like I'm a win. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why I did make the decision. Like man, let me sit down and get a world how I'm coming for real, for real. Like whatever y'all want to know. You know what I'm saying? They got the right to sit and watch. The and it comes from the horse's mouth itself, you know what I'm saying? Other than them just judging me off somebody else creating content just to use my name on, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's a lot of decisions I made, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've been fighting legal situations on and off since I've been home. I beat my murder case 2018, January. You know what I'm saying? I've been fighting legal situations ever since, but, like, I didn't beat a lot of drama. I didn't beat a lot of So, like, I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like with the drill culture, a lot of it reflect on me fighting the cases I'll be fighting. And, and, and like, people like y'all don't even know 
like DJ Academic before he got big, and I was one of the first drill people he talked about in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? They kicked Dirk Doe in, charged me with the murder whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, when it came to the drill culture, by me already having a big name in the streets way before the music, you know what I'm saying? A lot of tuned in. So I was kind of salty at him for a minute, you know what I'm saying? But I seen he elevated and did, you know what I'm saying? Now he do it up. Everybody with him now, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I've never been a follower, so I always still fade the black like, man, when my time comes, it's going to come. But at the same time, when he when he, when he he created what he created, it calls other bloggers. If, if you notice, he was one of the first ones, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, that was before he got any of the recognition he got now, he was the first ones that's pushing Chicago drill culture through the door. So, like, you know, I be feeling like we don't get, give you your flowers, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of, of what you're doing and what you're not doing, you know what I'm saying? I, I read them want to see me like like Gil and Wallow mm. I know they want to see me prosper I know they want to see me do something good with myself so me sitting down with them and chopping it up would never be a problem but like I told Raymond when I hollered at him on the phone when he first reached out to me I told him like man it's like I got I got I be I be having a cold shoulder about a, a lot of individuals you know what I'm saying I just sat and watch all podcasts y'all got a major platform I'm like man they be reasonable with them all you know what I'm saying like Y'all gonna ask the questions y'all gonna ask regardless. You know what I'm saying? So I can't do nothing about that. But at the same time, it's up to me to answer because, like I said, that affect me with my legal situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That you get and it get televised. Them people be watching in. You know what I'm saying? And me before the music, I was in the streets, heavy, heavy for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I didn't elevate. I didn't, I didn't grow. You know what I'm saying? Like what sent me, what sent me ain't gonna never be off me. But at the same time, though, I just know how to move now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't got more. I didn't, I didn't analyze a lot of situations, so I got more. I got better with it, so I'm like, all right, cool. Sure. I know how to. I know how to rock out, so I ain't really tripping, on, you know. So let's talk about your real childhood. Like, where exactly were you born and, and raised, and, and what was it like? I was born and raised in Cabrini Green, man. Right. That's the, that's the that's the near north side of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? My mother stayed in the projects. My grandmother, she stayed on Mohawk and Black Hawk. My grandmother, she owned properties all through the community. You know what I'm saying? That's my neighborhood. But right now, they turned. After the projects got towed down, my grandmother moved on Cleveland. It's 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 a little distance from the project buildings that got towed down. They tow our one of our buildings was the first buildings that got towed down when when they was tearing the projects down or whatever. So my grandma moved on Cleveland. My, my that's my mother mother. She raised me. You know what I'm saying? She moved on Cleveland. So they called Cleveland. That's like the 1300 block. You I know you're familiar with Polo G. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I hung with his father. Like Polo G. We from the same community. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I was over there until I was probably like nine, ten years old, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I was already bad as hell through that motherfucker. Like, my name, that's why I got the, my name was Bebe at first. That's where I got Bebe from when I was a shorty up there, you know what I'm saying? But as I was up north living with my grandmother, my mother always stayed out south on the low end, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And my community where, 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 where I reside at now. So at the same time, it's like I had family on both sides of Chicago anyway, you know what I'm saying? But... I moved from my grandmama, you know what I'm saying, a situation had happened or whatever when I was a, a kid, you know what I'm saying. I don't really want too much talk about that on a, on the internet or whatever, but a situation happened. I had moved southbound with my OG. That's why I really jumped out the porch and made my name for myself at on the south side on low end, 46th Street, you know what I'm saying. So my recollection of Cabrini Green is that I, in 2006 I was dating this girl that lived in Chicago, so I used to fly from New York out there all the time. And whenever I would be driving with her from the airport, she would point at Cabrini Green off the highway or whatever and just be like, that is the most dangerous, worst part of Chicago that you would never want to go to in a million years. Fuck is, Chicago, is that bro. Accurate? Like, it's Man, if you do your history and your research, man, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Cabrini Green is one of the worst project housings in America. Like, right. They label it one of the ones, you know what I'm saying? Like, our building is like me going to grammar school or or even from kindergarten on up, you know what I'm saying? I was witnessing motherfuckers getting sniped off buildings, all type of shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? The police didn't have no control over the buildings. Like, really? they was making so much money back in them times and, and game back, and they had the shit all organized the right way. Police had no control on running in and, and shutting the buildings down. Like, they locking the ramps. Motherfuckers shooting off the ramps. You, they running from the police, running in this apartment, got holes in the wall to get the exit out of another apartment. It was just crazy, like, coming up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cooley Howard shot at uh, Cabrini Green, Candy, man. You know what I'm saying? But, like, if I know y'all probably familiar with the movie Hardball. You know what I'm saying? I played mm -hmm. baseball when I was a kid yeah, whatever. But, really? You know what I'm saying? Hardball really supposed to have been in Cabrini Green. But, you know, we had the, the youth baseball teams and shit or whatever. So we were so bad. They were scared, the, 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 the people that was filming were scared to come in the Cabrini Green projects to shoot hardball. So 
they just took the they took their talent out west somewhere. I think I forgot. I don't know if there was a Rockwell project somewhere, another project building out west. Mm -hmm. They were scared to come shoot the, the movie in our, in our community or whatever. But like, Cabrini Green was like, I, I didn't witness so much shit coming up as a shorty man. I believe like that's what just had me grow the excitement of, of, the, of, the, of the drill culture for real, for real. You know, watching my big brothers and shit when I was a shorty, like right. I was already advanced as a as a youngin, like a puppy off the porch. I was advanced. I was I was going to school and everything. You know what I'm saying, like. My older, my older people, you know what I'm saying, the gang that, that, that I'm affiliated with, you know what I'm saying, they used to be telling me, like, man, make sure you stay in school. So they wasn't really too much, like, forcing me into no gang or whatever, but it's just out the excitement I had, seeing how they was moving, all the money they was getting when I was a shorty, man, like, that, that that's the way I told, you know what I'm saying, this shit stuck with me, so. Damn. So you were, you, <clears throat> did you find it exciting, or was it kind of scary to you as a kid? Obviously, you didn't really know any other way, right? Like, you know. That's just what life is. I remember, I recall one situation of a, uh, if I ain't mistaken, man, a man had like had accidentally killed one of the kids that was that was in the front of the building, one of the builders playing because they was in tour with another builder, you know what I'm saying? And he had ended up killing the child or whatever. So it was exciting, but at the same time it was scary too, you know what I'm saying? But to me, I I didn't get no fuck whatever was going on around me because it's like I wanted to see the shit. Like, but I don't know why the fuck I had a pass for that shit as a shorty. Like all the crimes that was happening around me, like it was just a normal lifestyle for me because this is, you know, I grew up in poverty, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. you know, that back when we was living in the projects back then, like, motherfucker ain't have a pot to piss in, you know what I'm saying? We, I wasn't, it was I wasn't, bad I like grew that, up, huh? yeah, it was bad. Like, I remember being homeless. I remember going shelters, all that shit when I was a shorty, you know what I'm saying? So, like, be elevating me just, like, I'm just grateful for everything that I got going on now, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of motherfuckers don't know my story, like, you know what I'm saying? My family... <clears throat> My, my 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 father, my father, mother, she owned buildings all over there. So, you know what I'm saying? She always was financially stable, you know what I'm saying? But, like, on my, on my mama's side, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you stand in the projects, everybody know, you know what I'm saying? That's housing projects. Like, so just growing up, I didn't too much care about the crimes because everybody that was around me was dealing with the same situation. You get what I'm saying? So, like, we all fitted in. I ain't feel like nobody was better than me or I was better than them. You get what I'm saying? Like, we all was the same. We all from the projects. We all know each other's situation. You know what I'm saying? So it was more yeah. fun than anything coming up. You know what I'm saying? But you had your mom yeah. and your dad both around? Yeah, I always had my mom and my dad. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You said you played baseball. That's something I would never expect. I don't know how to play basketball, football, none of that shit. That's, it it shocked a lot of people. Baseball always been my sport. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was infatuated with baseball. But like I told you, our whole community, everybody played baseball. You know what I'm saying? We used to go to championship games, get took. That's why I be trying, like, now... You know what I'm saying? As we pushing this peace shit right now, you know what I'm saying? The shit that I had when we were shorties, that's what I've been trying to do to influence the youth now, you know what I'm saying? Like, and stop them from jumping off the porch. You know, I probably can't save nobody out of 12 years old. I ain't gonna lie to you, but like the youth that, that I'm influencing and the people that look up to me, I try to show them a different way. Like, I'm trying to put something together. Like, my legal situation, I'm on house arrest or whatever, so my legal situation, before I had bonded out then was my plans. It was like, man, get up with the community activists or, or the aldermen in my community, you know what I'm saying? And I was going to put my bread behind buying a van and a baseball equipment and just show, just show the all of them and the government I'm trying to do something different with the community. And I was going to train the youth myself because a lot of my guys that I grew up with know how to play baseball too. So I was going to have them help me coaching the kids and shit. So mm. I was going to start from like 7 to 12 with the youth, the, the boys, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't really think of too much for the females besides jump rope back then, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know what the females did back then, but baseball, that sport, and Cabrini Green, yeah. we was infatuated with what baseball. like. Play? I played shortstop and third base, you know what I'm saying? A good ass base, you know what I'm saying? Like shortstop, you gotta be ready. Like usually a, a, a right hand batter always hit towards shortstop or third base, regardless, you know what I'm saying? When they hit the ball. So like it was a it was a it was a tight situation for me coming up. That's why I was in fact with baseball, because the ball basically almost almost came my way all the time coming up. So like growing up, I Baseball was huge when I was growing up. And then as I get older, it's like within hip hop and shit, you just don't hear about it. But one day I was playing po uh, poker on a live stream and I was playing against somebody who played for the Angels or some shit. And people were DMing me like crazy. Like, and I didn't realize that baseball is like bigger than football and basketball still, yeah. right? Just they got more the games. The most highest paid sport, yeah. if I ain't mistaken. Yeah. yeah, it's the most highest paid sport. That's wild. For sure. And it looked boring to people like people <laughs> like by us growing up, we was so addicted to it, like it was fun to us, you know what I'm saying? And you was playing baseball in uh, Cabrini Green, that's what you said. Yeah, saying. yeah. So uh, around... Hey, let me call you right back. I'm in this interview, bro. Uh -huh. So around what age did you move to 46th Street? Uh, 
<clears throat> like I told you, my mother always stayed out there, even when I was standing in the grandma's my grandma. You know, my grandmother raised me, rest in peace, you know, since she passed away in October last year. Sorry so my mother, mother, my mother, mother, and my father, mother, been up north all their life, you know what I'm saying? My mama was raised in Cabrini Green too, but at the same time, she she was living out south, and my grandmama was raising me, so like, I was back and forth, but I was I was living with my grandma for the most part, but like all my guys that I know right now, I've been knowing them all my life because I was back and forth from my grandma's house to my mama's house, even when I was a shorty, you know what I'm saying? So, like, me moving and migrating out south, it wasn't nothing like, oh, he just moved from this neighborhood and just moved to that neighborhood. Like, everybody in the community where my mother was living at, I've been knowing all my life, you know what I'm saying? I just didn't go to school out south yet because I was going to school up north, you know what I'm saying? What were the biggest differences once you moved over there? What, southbound? Yeah, versus Cabrini Green. Was it nicer? Or? Like, you know, I, out south is... It, they call it the Hyde Park community. Like, if you ride through my community, it's going to look like glitter and gold. You get what I'm saying? Until, like, you 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 figure it out. Like, Barack Obama stayed on 51st and Woodlawn. I'm from 46th and Woodlawn. You know what I'm saying? Louis Farrakhan stayed on 40, 48th and Woodlawn, I believe. You know what I'm saying? So, it's a lot of people that, that, that was high, that stayed in the Hyde Park community. They consider that like a... I wouldn't say a white people area, just like a, a more more high pay area, you know what I'm saying? But our community, it just turned out, it turned out what it turned out to be, you know what I'm saying? There's different sets around in, in the vicinity, you get what I'm saying? So it's not just our community, you know what I'm saying? Like our, our community from 47th Street to 43rd, from Cottage Grove all the way to the lake, you know what I'm saying? That's a big ass community, like probably like a 25 block radius, like for real, like going in a circle though, you get what I'm saying? Mm. We got one of the biggest communities in, on the low end, so like, yeah, it looked it look like glitter and gold, man, until a motherfucker really live over there and see what, what, what come with it, like, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it was. Like, I've I been had the factuations for the streets, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like, I was young already, witnessing a lot of shit when I was young. So, like, when I got southbound, it wasn't no different. Like, it wasn't like I was the, the new kid on the block and I got to fight everybody because they don't know who I am type shit, you know what I'm saying? Everybody already knew me, so, like... I was like a fake, fake little bully when I was a shorty anyway, though, man. So, like, I, you know what I'm saying? That's why I really got my name from, like, and that shit followed me. Like, a lot the of niggas. Part, huh? The zoo part of your name. No, I mean, it, my, my name didn't change. I don't know that the streets just give me names as I go. I ain't going to lie to you. My shit that went from Bay Bay to Bay Zoo to Zoo to Zoo Wop to Wop Skin, though. Like, they just, they just, the guys just called me whatever they called me. But Bay Bay came from my auntie, you know what I'm saying? She was calling me Bay Bay Kids because I was always bad as hell. Throwing, busting motherfuckers head with rocks and bricks when I was a little kid in the project. It's like just doing bad shit, you feel me? My auntie Didi started calling me Bebe, so she will call me Bebe or Bucky or whatever, but it followed me. And then South, South just gave me zoos, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't because I, like, everybody feel like because I love animals, they call me zoo. Like, they just, I don't know where the zoo came from. I ain't gonna, I wouldn't even lie to y'all. I don't even remember who started naming that, you know what I'm saying? I, I remember thinking that when the first time I heard that name, I was like, it seems like a very unlikely combination of syllables of the bass. Yeah, I mean, I just, they, I guess they just put the name with the face, man. You know what I'm saying? Only difference with me, I can't be tame, man. The zoo animals, they tame, whatever, however, I, ain't, I can't be tame. But it know? wasn't because you have a love of animals? And where did that I mean, come from? I always had a factual rating with animals. Like, I was nine years old, walking around with a 15, 15 uh, feet snake on my neck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always liked the animals, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I've been loving animals all my life, but I don't believe that's where the name came from, though. Like, Okay. I'm, I'm, to be honest with you, I don't even remember for real, for real. Like, Yeah, but it followed me shit, you know what I'm saying? Do you remember when you first even heard of THF? Because that was around before you even moved there, right? No, hell no. Oh, really? No. THF, like, man, <laughs> that's like a brotherly, like, man, like I told you, the internet takes shit to run with how they run with it, you know what I'm saying? We just follow suit, you get what I'm saying? But we was just badass kids. You know, back then, say for instance, cash money and no limit, they got, they had, they little rap groups and shit. You know how kids, when they little, they want to be something, you know what I'm saying? Like we was, we we used to hang bad as hell on 46 and Woodlawn. So like, it's a mind, a mind's here right there, right now, but we used to hang that 24 seven. Like when we all meet up and come outside, Meet me on Woodlawn, meet me on Woodlawn, you feel me? So we went from 4 6 to Woodlawn, you know what I'm saying? Then we started hanging on Princeton probably around 2008. Like 2008, them are our brothers too, you know what I'm saying? We started hanging down that way. So, like, we just put all that shit together and just made it just, you know what I'm saying? Back then, like, everybody be seeing gangs and shit. Chicago, that shit that they be getting on this motherfucker yelling BDGD war, all that shit, all right, that shit cool. But, like, Chicago was full of sets, bro. Like, it don't matter. It's, it's a lot of blocks. 
that got different gangs in them. So you can't you can't literally just say, oh, they gang bang. When you gang banging, it's this set and this set and they oppositions. Yeah. If anything, they set tripping. You get what I'm saying? Like Chicago never gave a fuck about what gang you is. Like it's all type of gangs on my block right now. You get what I'm saying? That's like a simplified the BDGD thing is like a simplified I mean, version you for know, the people when online. Keith, when Chief Keith blew, he the shit to <laughs> Chicago. He was buzzing. I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot of motherfuckers in Chicago flip BD. So JoJo was they opposition. You know how that shit. They just went from there on forth. Like that's why the GD BD thing so big because you had to like the shit with the, it got serious with the drill culture. If you pay attention, like Gucci Man. Gucci Man and Young Jeezy was into a damn near they whole rap career. You get what I'm saying? One motherfucker died with they rap beef. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. A motherfucker playing with Gucci, however that went. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But if you pay attention to Chicago drill culture, all throughout the years, from when, when Bro them first got turned up and got turned on, the rack been going up more and more. So it's just, it just a lot of motherfuckers want to be this and be that. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't know how to be themselves in Chicago. Our city... Built off, hey man, like if we if we come together like all these other states come together and make this shit right, shit'll be way better for a lot of motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? But niggas just grow hate for no reason, bro. Like I never knew that about Chicago. Like it'll be a nigga you've been growing up with all your life that you felt like want you to prosper and be something with yourself, you know what I'm saying? Whole time you get to doing too much or the most. A nigga side hating, side looking you, sneak this you behind your back. That's just how I city built. I don't I don't understand the rack though, but I love the rack. Like that's my city, you know what I'm saying? I didn't. I didn't did a lot of shit, man. That you know what I'm saying. I probably would have looked forward to 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 doing it a different way if I knew better. You know what I'm saying? And knew how to capitalize. Like I'm a real good thinker. I play dumb to a lot of people. So a lot of motherf- like I told you, I don't too. I don't talk much. I talk. If I talk a lot, it's gonna be with the individuals that I deal with on a daily basis that know me. You know what I'm saying? Like all my guys know me. You know what I'm saying? Whopper bug, Zua bug, all my guys gonna say that shit, but that's because they know me personally. Like, but when it comes to other motherfuckers, I be. I be really zero tolerance for a lot of bullshit, so I really don't be vocal with a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? So You are, like, a really good talker, and that's why I was, like, thinking about that when we first talked on the phone. I'm like, this dude has, like, a reputation for not talking. But I then play as a soon role. as I, I, I get you it. on the phone, and it's like, you got long-ass conversation, you telling me all kinds of shit, and that's when I was like, oh, my God, we really got to do this interview. Yeah, most definitely, man. Like, I, that's how I play it. I play the back, but you know what I'm saying? Like I told y'all, it wasn't too much out shit that I was scared of, bro. It's like... The harassing part, like, you know, me and Vaughn beat our murder a month apart from each other, you know what I'm saying? I beat my shit January. Yeah. <laughs> he beat his shit December, so, you know, we both flew to Atlanta and stayed with Dirk, you know what I'm saying? Bro took us shopping and shit. We in his crib. This one, bro stayed in Alpharetta and shit. And we was just, you know, I was new to the internet for real, for real. <clears throat> like, I, I knew about Instagram and Facebook just off motherfuckers that I'm in, I'm in cars. I, was, I just did four and a half years fighting a murder case, so... I'm seeing pictures and shit of people being incarcerated and shit. They showing their pictures. I'm seeing how Instagram work. But I ain't like, you know, a nigga ain't going to have no conversation in jail about, oh, yeah, they screen record you and put you on YouTube, all that shit. So I was like kind of new to it, you know. But, yeah. you know, me and Vaughn beat our murder case or whatever, you know what I'm saying. Bro took a, Dirk took us shopping and shit. We down here chilling and shit in the A. So we we had the crib board as hell one day, you know what I'm saying. Like, this shit wasn't never a plan for me or Vaughn, for real, for real, man. And I be wanting a lot of motherfuckers to know that, like, the way he came hard and still on business, bro, like, I'm going to tilt my hat to him for the fullest, because he did a lot of shit a lot of niggas ain't did. I've been in this industry 30 years, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything that man said he did, he stood on. But at the same time, Vaughn always been talented on everything. Like, bro know how to flip, draw, whatever. He going he gonna to put that shit to the puzzle. So at the same time, we, uh, we, we chilling in uh, Dirk studio. The whole time, we never had no intentions on being no rappers for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, we talked about it in the jail on some plan shit, though. Like, but the song that all our fans fuck with the hardest, I don't even fuck with. That was my first song with Vaughn. Like, Beat That Body? I, yeah, man. One of the greatest like, songs. Everybody, ever. my whole fan, like, and, and my guys taught me that shit. Like, man, a lot of shit you don't like, you got to start putting. I got so much. I got a catalog so deadly right now, man. Like, y'all don't know how much music I got. But it's like, I be tuning myself in to, like, I don't want to drop this. Unless I like it type shit. My guy, something, oh, you got to put that shit out there and let them be the judge. That's what your fans for. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, like, we just sitting in Dirk basement. It's me, Dirk, Buka, uh, Ike, Mikey, and Vaughn. We chilling and shit. And I tell Dirk, like, man, t- go on your live. We, we set the phone right there on the live. And that's all the fans saying, all Dirk fans. That's all they saying, like, man, 
Like, man, bro, for y'all just beat y'all body a month apart, man. Ooh, two different bodies, man. Y'all should do a song, beat the body. That's all they saying in the watch call. So, like, I'm looking at Vaughn laughing and shit. I'm like, man, they ass tripping, man. We ain't no motherfucking rappers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Vaughn tell Dirk, like, man, call the engineer. Nigga, we finna do that shit. I'm talking about literally every fan that was coming on that motherfucker. But, you know, I'm looking at it like, instead of me looking at it as capitalizing off of it, I'm looking at it like, damn, these just Dirk fans, you know what I'm saying? They see two of his brothers home, you know what I'm saying? They just beat their murder rap, this, then the third. You know, I ain't take music serious at all, even though I tried rapping way before then, you know what I'm saying? I, got, I had a song called White Rocks Green Weed, like in 2010, some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like I told you, like, that was way before the drill wave even, even went where it went with it. But at the same time, me and Vaughn literally, like, Dirk, like, man, y'all ain't got it right. Y'all ain't got to think too hard. Just speak how y'all feel. Go in that motherfucker and talk about what's going on for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when he called the engineer, bro, like, that's what made me and Vaughn go back and forth on the song. You, you must have me? been close because you're both spitting, like, really short verses back to back. No, it's like I jump. Like, we end up, we, we, he recording. I, I say my, 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 my two bars, then I'll get back, and then he'll come up and say his two bars. Like, it's, it's called punching in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But we didn't even write that shit. Like, Dirk like, man, this how y'all should come. Both back and forth. That bitch gonna go crazy. He tell us through the door. Like, he seen it. Dirk seen the vision before it was. Like, I never knew that bitch was gonna do 14 million that fast. Like, So y- y'all shot the music video, and then y'all did the 16 shot on interview that same day? The same day we shot the video, we did the 16 shot. So well, that Vaughn did the 16 shot. It was yeah, his interview. I, I was just sitting there. Yeah, sitting yeah. On it. We was doing the beat the body video. So when we, when we do the beat the body, boom, we do it. Man, imagine, we both fresh home off the murder rap or whatever. So... We shoot the video. They fucking with it, fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? But like you I pretended told you, to be getting out of jail that day. You like yeah, went, yeah. We went, went back up the, to the county <laughs> like we was both getting out, beating our body. The guys right. came through us some clothes and shit. You know what I'm saying? We playing us out or whatever. You know, like I told you, Vaughn always thought even before the storytelling shit, he always thought like, man, when we put this shit in their face, give them more than something to listen to. Make sure you give them something that they want to tune in and watch. That's why he called himself the the, the 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 new generation slick Rick. He wanted to tell a story behind all his music. Everything he's speaking facts, but it's a story behind it. So it's more than just doing what they doing, you know what I'm saying? So when we do this shit, bro, we shoot the video, that bitch get the going up. The whole time, Vaughn saying it going up, you know what I'm saying? So he was, he hugging the booth, and guess what I'm doing? Hugging the streets. Like, I'm trying to get back on the time that I would have missed. I wasn't capitalizing yet, bro. Like, it took me to get locked back up. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just around. I was around with Dirk showing us the way, showing us everything. I'm looking at like, man, at first I was looking at like, man, these are fans. I'm like, man, Vaughn, tell him, like, Sue, we can do this shit, bro. Like, they on our dick. Let's do it. You feel me? Six months after I beat the murder rap, I get in a high speed chase in Chicago and shit. You know what I'm saying? Get caught a Drake case or whatever. So I had to sit down for 11 months for catching the case. You feel me? Mm. I sat down, you know what I'm saying? 11 months. I beat it in emotion or whatever. So. All the 11 months I was sitting in the county, that's all niggas coming on the new saying. Like, damn, Sue, you tweak, bro. You back in this bitch. Vaughn out there turning up. He losing the shit. He losing the shit. So I had to really come home and play catch up. You get what I'm saying? But to, to be saying everything I'm saying, all this shit from me catching cases and me dropping that Beat the Body song, that got them people on my dick overly hard because, like, man, Vaughn came home bragging about some shit and getting away with murder. You get what I'm saying? So... When it come to cases, I don't give a fuck if it's 25 of us on the block, bro. Like, if they smack that bitch, everything going on me, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I was in there 11 months. All while I was in there 11 months, Vaughn capitalizing and shit, whoop. I'm looking like, damn, I, I, I got to play catch up now. Like, I just jagged myself, bro, steady going. He working, he working. Everybody saying, I'm like, man, I was just out there with him. But they saying he turning up, he turning up. Little pitches coming through. It's looking better and better for a motherfucker. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? So, when I finally got out. That's when I got to taking rap serious, like, you know what I'm saying? Start standing on my business, standing on everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, so what I got, so I seen you early on, like, from the beginning, like, you was part of the drill scene, like, early on, because, like, you was in the, uh, This Ain't What You Want video. Yeah. So you never thought about rapping back then when you seen it take I it off? I rapped way before this, that's what I'm telling you, before, I had, I had, I didn't take it serious, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? I played my part, I played my position, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's a lot come with this street shit, bro, like. When I say Horizon, bro, like Chicago, that's my city. I love my city. And like, motherfucker, like, man, you dumb as hell. You steady coming back, bro. Like, I got seven kids, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got seven, bro. My old is 16. So, like, when I be coming to the city, I don't just be coming to the city just do dumb shit or fucked up shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm 33, gang. Like, I don't got to sit here and just talk to a motherfucker and, and tell him what I'm on. And then, oh, yeah, he just did some dumb shit. We just told him don't go, and he just went anyway. No, bro, I be, I be, I be going to see my kids. I be going up there to stand on business. That's my city, gang. Like, 
they don't be understanding that shit. So like, it's like how I gotta move. They be harassing me so much and be on my dick, bro. Like, the shit be scary. You know what I'm saying? The shit be so scary. So like, I be having to watch this shit. That all played the part with me doing interviews and telling people my lifestyle ain't to be televised, bro. Cause like, I'm seeing this shit like, I'm going through these legal situations, you know what I'm saying? To everybody else, oh, that's dumbass that he get locked up, his ass in jail, bro. He love jail, you know what I'm saying? However, the shit don't be my fault, bro. However, these cases I be beating the fighting gang don't be having shit to do with me. Literally be the wrong place at the wrong time because the name I built for myself as a shorty, you know what I'm saying? I probably built my name off doing some little bully shit in school or being bad as hell, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They be putting too much sauce on a nigga name and that shit, that shit fuck with a motherfucker legally, like. I'm fighting a gang child in Georgia right now, bro, with some shit that don't got nothing to do with. You feel me? They yeah. they they got me tagged as a black disciple. I've never been a black disciple a day of my life. You feel me? Talking about a high influence you gang member in Chicago. But that's Chicago police doing that I'm in Georgia. Me, Dirk, and Vaughn was fighting a case in, in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? So once we beat that case, they sick a motherfucker beat that case. So they just call it down. I'm knowing what it is. They in cahoots with each other. Oh, yeah. He's not a civilian. Y'all make sure y'all know this. You know what I'm saying? He's a high influential gang member of Chicago. This is the third. So now, while I'm thinking I'm tucked in low key fighting this case while I'm on house arrest, I beat that shit. Y'all slap another case up. Bro, I'm steady fighting legal situation. I'm on a band right now, Lily, because shit ain't got nothing to do with me, gang, but I know I'm a bitty. You feel me? Yeah. That shit be hurting them, bro. I didn't beat attempt murders. I didn't beat murders. I didn't beat armed robberies. Like, I didn't beat a lot of shit, gang. You feel me? Like, shout out to bro. You know what I'm saying? They stood on business for my, for, for, for my, for my body. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to you, that, that situation right there changed my life, period. So, like, me jumping out in the streets doing dumb shit was never my plans, you know what I'm saying? Like, I sat in that motherfucker four and a half years, lost a lot while I was in that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And what that year came was this? Place. When you... 2000, I believe that was 14 to 2018. Okay. I was sat in that four and a half years fighting my murder route. Look, just to, like, try to go in order a little bit, what was your high school experience like? Because that was kind of, like, before the drill wave Barely. popped off. I was only a freshman, bro. I was in juvenile DLC for oh, okay. a robbery. Really? I did, I did four years as, as a juvenile. What happened with this uh, alleged armed robbery situation? Uh, I was in, I was a juvenile. I saw my juvenile background, so it, it didn't really affect me because I, when I had went to trial, lost trial, I lost trial as a uh, juvenile. They didn't charge me as an adult back then because I was 13 when I caught the armed But that took you out of high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was 13. I, uh, <clears throat> I was in Chicago. This is when I was out south with my mama, you know what I'm saying, on the low end and from my block and shit. I was stealing cars in grammar school, bad as hell, you know what I'm saying? Me and my, man, that's my right-hand man that's here with me right now, you know what I'm saying? So, like, me and bro used to be bad as hell when we was kids. We was youth stealing, pilling up this one. You can pill up the car, steal the car and shit. My OG really ain't had no control over me, dog. My grandmama raised me, so my mama really, like, you know what I'm saying? She was hard on me, but at the same time, like, she couldn't control me. So, like, she had sent me down south with my, uh, my grandma moved. From up north, when 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 the situation happened, my grandma had moved down south or whatever. So my mama sent me down there, down south for a family reunion for my great grandma uh, family reunion, and I never made it back to Chicago when I was thirteen. You feel me? It's what, a crazy you, you story, bro. You ended up stealing a car down there? No, no. I'm gonna tell you the situation. It was a crazy okay. story, bro. So uh, my OG sent me down there with my grandma and shit. It was in Cairo, Illinois, to be exact. You know what I'm saying? She sent me down there because I was stealing cars in Chicago. She ain't had no control over me and shit. So. I'm down there for the family reunion, so when everybody leave, they tricked me and went back to Chicago with all my family from Chicago and left me down there with grandma, but grandma raised me, so I, I ain't mad, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to school down there and shit with grandma for a little bit, and I got fed up, like, man, this ain't me. I don't fit in down here. Like, it was, everything was off. The whole town shut down at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Those stores open, the whole city be dead, but I mean, it was busting down there. Don't get me wrong. I fuck with Carol Hart, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I met a lot of people. I know they be looking at me now, like, damn, that, he was down here when he was shorty, but my OG sent me down there, so I was kind of bored down there because I'm used to the city, the fast life. So I had, uh, it was a little nigga that was already incarcerated with the with the cliques I was hanging out, hanging with down there. I was fighting a lot down there and shit, so everybody I was fighting and shit, they like, man, your little ass rough as hell, you, man. I said, Chris Howell, ooh, this and third, he stay in jail. I'm like, nigga, I ain't never been in jail down here. Hire man, y'all him. But when he ended up coming home, me and him end up being cool as hell, locking in. So uh, I lock in with him and shit. So we just down there just doing bad. That was my little rappy down there just doing bad shit and shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, His brother was in a high-speed chase one day down there. The town's so fucking small, I think it's like 35 blocks. You get what I'm saying? His brother was end up in a high-speed chase down there, bro. And back then, 
like I told you, I'm 13, so I'm thinking some shit like a movie. I'm already plotting because I'm bored down here plotting in my head. Like, man, how the fuck is I going to get back to Chicago? Yeah. I ain't got no ID. I, ain't, I can't drive nine hours from Cairo to Chicago. No, that's all I'm thinking. So I'm sitting on my grandma's porch one day, bro, and uh, his brother was in the high speed chase in the little Impala. She fly past. He had like seven cars on him, you feel me? But he took them all the way from uptown to, to downtown, back around the blocks. But it's a project... The, they projects was like little row houses across the street from my grandma crib. It's a way in this way and a way in there. It's only two ways in through the whole project community. You feel me? Ain't no back roads or nothing. So I was trying to see, like, if you in a high-speed chase, he fucked them people up, bro, and it, it, it excited me. And I, I, I pulled a caper, man, that ain't even had no business doing, bro. But this is how I end up doing juvenile life and shit. So I, uh, I'm sitting on the porch, and I'm watching them and shit on the high-speed chase, but I knew who Impala was because I was hanging with his brother, you feel me? Yeah. So he go uptown, back downtown, go back uptown, but when they was, he seen there was so many cars on him, he went into the projects. So when he went to projects, you know what I'm thinking in my head, like, oh, they finna box him in. It's only two ways in. They finna go in both ways, you feel me, and, and cut the front off. So the man went through that motherfucker, bro. I seen the cars going in the front. I seen the cars going in the back. So I'm just sitting waiting to see what's going to happen. I ain't get up. I'm just sitting on the front porch and watching everything. Guess what I see, man? This nigga walking through the projects, bro, like ain't shit happened. Mm -hmm. This nigga went through the back of the projects and hurry up, made it before the cars can get back there and threw a car co cover over the car. You feel me? And walked to the front. So when he got away, I got on my mind like, man, I'm finna use him as my getaway driver. I'm thinking about here like, man, whatever the fuck I'm finna do, I'm finna get back to Chicago. You feel me? And man, I was plotting for like two weeks, man. I robbed a motherfucking liquor store down there. Uh, I think it was on 2nd Street, bro. I was 13 years old. I robbed a liquor store, but I was plotting with my homie. I told him, like, man, I need your brother to be my driver. You know what I'm saying? He fucked the people up that day. You feel me? I'm like, I need your brother to be my driver. He like, uh, he like, I'm going to holler at him. Water, bam, his brother was acting like he was with it, bro. But that was my fault. Like, you feel me? I met him how I met him, gang. Like, he, we wasn't cut from the same cloth anyway, so that was my mistake as a shorty. I was a young nigga, young, young and dumb. You feel me? We had plotted. He like, his brother was telling me, like, man, shit, we can hit this liquor store. We might as well hit the one uptown, too. You feel me? So I uh back then, you know the uh where they where they where they do the scratch offs and, and play the lottery and shit. Mm -hmm. Me as a young nigga, guess what I was thinking in the lottery machine? Yeah. Millions of dollars. That's what I thought. <laughs> right. I ain't know no better. You know, I'm watching movies and shit. I did some fuck shit, man, on my kids. I we plotted out, planned out, we I, we end up robbing liquor store, I run them motherfucker, lay them down. But I'm so young to be in a liquor store, it wasn't nothing but a liquor store. They only play lottery and liquor. So I had gloves. I don't know how the fuck. I think I took my glove off or whatever, or I don't know what the fuck I did when I was shorty, but I had one through the whole case once I got arrested and shit. My fingerprint was on the counter, my, 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 uh, my, my index finger or whatever, you feel me? I had robbed the liquor store and shit, man. <clears throat> so actually the nigga that I told y'all that I clicked up with and, and, and got locked in with, he was already in jail for armed robberies as a shorty down there already, so he had a rap sheet. So they end up arresting him and letting him back go just to, 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 to grab me with him. So he had called me one day to kick it with me, man. You feel me? And I pop out with him again. After we, we didn't we didn't get shit, but like, I'll say like $900, bro. I promise you, like after the whole liquor store, like on a robbery mm. and broke it down three ways. Like I was I was disappointed in myself. Like, damn, it wasn't even shit. But we got away and everything. But he ended up getting arrested. I guess his felines or some shit, he had the same shoes on that he had. They grabbed mm. him. But they let him go just so he can grab me too, you feel me? Right. So they ain't do nothing but give him a parole violation if he would have wrapped me up with him or whatever, you feel me? So I had uh, popped out with him one day, man, and they just smacked the projects, 100 cars, you feel me? Booked me, I got locked up. And then they was telling me, like, man, you know what I'm saying, 14, you will be tried as, we could still sure. hold you to you 17 and try you as an adult, you feel me? So all while I was sitting in the little juvenile down there, I'm just thinking, I told my mama, like, man, I'll take juvenile life before I had to go get transferred from juvenile to the adult facility, you know what I'm saying, to do all that. So I just took the little, I took the, uh, they, they, they left me as a D number because when you a juvenile, you either a felon, if you an F number, that means they charge you as an adult or a delinquent. I got charged, <laughs> excuse me, I got charged as a D number and just took a little time, you feel me? I did four and a half years as a juvenile, so my whole high school years was over with, you feel me? So what, what, I did that incarcerated in, in Little Joliet, Little St. Charles, and Harrisburg, you feel me? What was that like? Was it like, did that change you a lot being around all these crazy ass kids? 
I mean, I've been bad as hell. All <laughs> you were kind of the anyway, worst one. So like, yeah. <laughs> out of my mama kids, like out of all her kids, I think I was the worst one. So, so how many years of your life you think you spent in jail? Because you said that was a bit. Well, I tried to do the math. Like I was on live. They really trying to count. But I real life gave the system a lot. I counted 12, but I believe probably more than 12. Like if you put it all together with little bullshit, little times I done sat three months, six months. I tried to do the math, bro. But I in jail. My rap sheet so fucking long, bro. I'd have been in jail a million times. But like I ain't, I ain't been to the adult joint besides like seven times I've been to the adult joint but two times was only for a conviction and the other five times was parole violations you feel me so mm. so I ain't got no back I ain't got no background I got a I got a rap sheet as far as being getting locked up like my arrested rap sheet long but I ain't never went down for no drama or no no I never did no long period of time in the penitentiary I, I always sat in the county and fought my shit you feel me so I ain't got no background for real for real I got two guns in my background one of them unconstitutional I just got a sponge and I'm working on getting another one to sponge but Hell yeah, man. But I done elevated way harder than that. Like, I don't even be on that type of time no more. I used to be bad as hell, though. I don't get me wrong, bro. Like, But were you, how would you describe how you fit in in that environment when you were doing uh, in, in juvenile? The jail? Yeah. Bro, I was in so much shit in juvenile because, like, okay, when I when I first took the juvenile uh, the juvenile life when it looked DOC, bro, I was in Cairo, Illinois. I imagine I told y'all. So that's like Southern Illinois. That's like bad up down in the back Kentucky and shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? Carbondale. You know where the Carbondale at? Right. It's down there. So I didn't fit in. All the little youth that was in that motherfucking jail had goals in their mouth. You know, I'm from up north. So like I didn't fit in. But what saved me is I was from Chicago. So, you know what I'm saying? When I first went to the little juvenile joint, they transferred me from the detention center to the joint. And I was fighting down there in Harrisburg like a motherfucker, you feel me? But they were shipping a lot of other other guys out. Like in Harrisburg, it was like a medium max. By me having an armed robbery, I was on a medium max deck, so you feel me? I'm fighting so much down there. Uh, one of the guys here got shipped that was in the cell with me for uh, fucking with one of the, the, the officers down there or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm 13, I'm bad as hell, young as fuck, so... All while we was fighting, they was already shipping him out because they had heard his name and some shit fucking with the officer. And then the counselor come tell me, like, uh, she like, have you ever been to St. Charles before? I'm like, no, I've never been to no juvenile facility, period, before, you feel me? She like, uh, well, write a request uh, to come talk to me on Wednesdays because these are my days that I come see the cottage on Wednesdays or whatever. So I ain't know what she was talking about, you know what I'm saying? But by me fighting so much and going to the hole, getting right back out, going to the hole, getting back out, instead of them shipping a lot of them out, a lot of the guys down there in Harrisburg was trying to get shipped to Lil' Joliet anyway because Lil' Joliet was like the, the, the max of the max. All they homies that been doing fighting and jumping on motherfuckers down there, all of them used to want to get with their homies. But I didn't fit in down there in Harrisburg anyway, so I didn't know what the fuck. I ain't know how the shipment go. Like, I ain't know you got to fight so many people or take off on an officer just to get shipped. You get what I'm saying? I didn't care to get shipped because I ain't know nobody little DLC, period. So they had ended up transferring me when they transferred Marcelli, but they transferred me to St. Charles and transferred him to Lil' Joliet. But I was wondering, like, why my counselor transferred me to St. Charles, but that's because my mama had told him, like, man, we got to take nine-hour drives to come visit him. He all the way down south, all his family in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So once I found out how the, how the system was going shit, I was trying to get transferred to IYC Chicago, but my, my, I, I, was, I was maximum security. So, the, like, St. Charles was like a medium, but it wasn't no max, but it was a lot of – it was going up. That bitch was busting, you feel me? I ain't last long down there for, like, for two years, though, out of my whole little juvenile bid, like – once I got used to that motherfucker, I got to sending that bitch up, you feel me? Because I got to seeing everybody from Chicago. Now, like, down here, it's people from East St. Louis, Mount Vernon, Carbondale, you feel me, and, and, and Harrisburg. So once I got to St. Charles, I got to send everybody I know from the city, and that shit just hurt. As far as fitting in with the environment, I ain't going to lie, we was gang banging so hard, we had the chaplain bringing us for gang meetings, all type of shit down there, like the chaplain, just to keep the compound to keep the compound on, on, on pure grounds. Like, they used to come get us from off this cottage, whoever got a slot on this cottage, just to bring up, to try to bring peace through the jail, you feel me? The jail go up. We got to send that bitch up so much, they shipped me to Lil' Joliet. So I did two and a half in Lil' Joliet, and I did two and a, two, I did like six months in Harrisburg, and then probably like two years in St. Charles. You feel and me? you got out when you were what, like 18, 19? 17, I believe. Okay. Because back then, that was when you when you were adult. It was 17. I supposed to have juvenile life, you feel me? But you know, down now. I was going before the parole board. The parole board, if you if you if you chilling out, like all the tickets I was getting when I was first in that bitch, the the, the boy like they kick, they actually kicked me out. To be honest with you, they kicked me out. Like man, you fighting so much. I never seen no happen. It was me and my little homie uh, B D Haywood. We used to always be snaking motherfuckers in Little St. Charles and Little Jolly and shit. Like when we nigga ain't did nothing. Nigga come on the deck. He don't know why he got snake. We just snaking his ass. You feel me? We used to be bad as hell as shorties. You feel me? So 
we had went before one one board, and they was tired of study continuing us at the board. They had paroled us. We didn't even know how we get paroled, folks. We just got out. We, we just got paroled from the board. Y'all just kicked us out from the hole. You feel me? We was in the hole when we went to the board. So they ended up kicking me out when I was 17. So I ended up catching my first adult case. Like months after that, I caught my first gun case as an adult. You feel me? Okay. So they had, I went to the county back then. I ain't want to sit in the county so much. They, they tricked me and told me I was going to do 61 days for my adult pipe case. But I ended up doing uh, six months. But you back in Chicago at this time. Yeah, I was back in Chicago. I got I got I went to Chicago. So back then when I caught when I was 17, I was in the streets and shit. You feel me? And they was telling you, like, man, you get your first gun case, you cop out for a year, you only gonna do 61 days. This one is 61 days, that's two months. You feel me? So I thought that's what I was gonna do, but they stopped the 61 days when it was my time. Mm. So I had, had my first court day when I caught the gun case. I ain't even sitting go to trial for my first gun case. You feel me? They told me I was gonna do 61 days. I'm fucking I'm gonna take that shit. I copped out. Thought I was gonna do six one days, end up doing six months. But this the gay shit they did, bro. I was still on juvenile parole when I caught my caught my first adult case, seventeen. So when I caught my case, I did six months and, and I DLC the adult I DLC. These bitches transferred me back to the juvenile DLC, bro. They was at the gate waiting on me. Mm. I was paroling out of the, the adult facility. Soon I'm walking to the gate, juvenile right there. Take me back to juvenile. Man, I'm growing as hell, man. I just came from the big joint. How the fuck is you gonna be on two parole, juvenile and adult parole? Right. I had to go to little DOC, little Joliet, sit and wait till that parole boy came, probably like two months. And they kicked me out, like, man, you can't be on juvenile in a dope parole, you feel me? So after and that, like, it was over. I was living my life, like, you feel me? What was your mentality about guns at that time that you got picked up that soon after you got out of the juvenile center or whatever? Like, did, was that just something that you kind of knew since you were young that, like, you really it's needed like, that to protect yourself? It's like 2006, 2007, bro. A lot of people that's playing with guns now, like, Back then, revolvers was was, was, was was infatuating back then, you feel me? Like, they That's had just what you had? 30 shots and all that shit didn't exist, you get what I'm saying? So, mm. I had got caught with a 357. That was one of my favorite guns when I was a shorty, you know what I'm saying? I was I just felt like I, I was more advanced. I was playing with guns way, like I told you, I, don't know, I didn't watch my brothers coming up as a shorty. I was playing with guns like way, way, way before a lot of motherfuckers playing with guns. So, I had infatuated with guns. I, was, I had infatuation when I was young, you feel me? And was that, would you say that that was just you wanting to, you know, be on some grown ass shit or was that just straight up like what you needed to do to survive Back at then, that point? It wasn't too much like the, the, it was going on, but it was more of a, a protection type. Like I, I I was a bully, so you know what I'm saying? I, I used to be doing a lot of shit with motherfuckers. Like probably robbing was my thing back then, you know what I'm saying? I got away with a lot of robbing, but that, that was my thing back then. I ain't I ain't too much had guns to be wanting to hurt nobody, you feel me? Like that wasn't ever my plans. Like that's why I say like, man, people just, my rap sheet so long, people just, Create their own narrative, man. Like, mm. don't nobody got no knowledge of me hurting nobody, bro, besides me fighting a murder charge. You feel me? Right. They sit here and put that shit out there how they want to put it out there. But don't nobody, ain't nobody seeing me active, actively doing nothing. Like, I don't get no fuck about no comedians getting on here acting like they saw me shooting nobody. Ain't nobody never seen me do shit. Well, for the record, bro. he didn't say that he actually hey, saw we, you doing it, right? Listen, I, I showed him what I, I showed him why I took it the way I took it. I don't know what he said. I don't care. Like, he a comedian to me. You feel me? Right. That's what we want to do for content. That's on him, bro. Like, I ain't. I don't got nothing to say about nobody. I look at him just like I look at the bloggers. Like, whatever he do to create his content, to get his views up, to make his money, he do so. Mm. I'm telling you, person, ain't nobody never seen me do nothing to nobody, bro. Period. Like, you feel me? Right. So I, I can care less, bro. Like, I sat back. Like, I watched the shit with, 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 the, with the guy, I don't know his name, that did the LeVon documentary, man. Like, you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me? If Vaughn was trolling on the internet, because he's been a troll all his life, you feel mm. me? That's what he do. He good, he good at that. You get what I'm saying? But the what you say, trap trap boy Ross? Trap Lord. Trap Lord Ross. So what he did, say for instance, an op got hurt in Chicago or something, you feel right. me? And Vaughn to make a tweet, like, I bet he won't do that no more, or some shit like that. You get what I'm saying? Like, he made the shit so believable that the world society really looking looking at Vaughn like a real serious. Regardless of what they can say what they want to say, oh well, he'll get offended if you if you don't call him a serial killer. No the fuck he won't, bro. Like. Regardless of what y'all want to paint a picture, don't nobody know Chicago niggas, gang. Like, y'all paint y'all own pictures just because a nigga rap about it. Like, music is music. I'm not saying blood was no angel, but at the same time, like, a lot of shit y'all just be throwing on motherfuckers. Like, all these murders they putting on my name on YouTube, blood. Like, I've been charged with one murder, gang. You mean tell me y'all can solve this shit better than the, the, the police, the, 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 the CSI, the, the, the FBI, the ATF, the... Y'all, y'all smarter than them. Just you, just YouTubers. Y'all think y'all smarter than them. You feel me? But I don't, like I say, I don't knock them for doing what they do for content. But like, they'll take just a tweet that bro will make 
when somebody get hurt, of course he's going to be happy as they from the other side and crack a little joke or two, you feel me? But they want to pin this on him, just be, oh, this is the right time. And he did this. When he said this, this happened. When he said this, this happened. I just be sitting back watching that shit and just take it as a joke. But, you know, Chicago, we set trends, bro. So, like, a lot of other, we, we a big influence of a lot of other states, no matter how much they want to give a motherfucker they props, we trend set so much, bro. Like, I just be looking at it like, damn, like, he did, he made, he did numbers off that shit and made him a bag off that shit. You know what I'm saying? A dude from a whole nother country mm-hmm. don't know nothing about the drill culture. He just pay attention to the internet, social media. Like this social media world is different now, bro. Like, so I can't get mad at dude for sitting down here saying what he said. He didn't, he never said my name. Right. But I, I caught it on a, uh, I caught it being chopped. Once I seen the real, the, when I, when I said something to, to Raymond, I ain't, the interview ain't dropped yet. You feel me? I seen it chopped up. And the way that they made it and emphasized it and made it what they want to make it as. Yeah, That's why I was so hot, offended by it. Saying. Yeah. I was hot. This almost hot. didn't happen. This almost yeah. didn't happen. So we're talking about the FYBJ Man clip. There is a clip that came out. Had to say but it got chopped up and shit. Right. Just, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody's going to be wondering, like, what the fuck they talking about? But 100%, yeah. I mean, he, he just said, what I see, THF shooting at blank. And, you know, he like, he's kind of like implying. I've been my that own you, boss, right? though. You feel me? So. He couldn't have been talking about me when he said a one dude did this for, a dude did that for. Like, I'm Zoo, bro. Before any of this rap shit, I've been Zoo. I ain't gonna bite my tongue about shit, gang. Like, I don't, dude don't know me. I ain't never seen me a day in his life. I never been incarcerated with him. I never been on the streets with him. Mm. Not my not my caliber type of, type of nigga, but at the same time, like I told y'all, a lot of shit be for content. He do his whoops or swings, whatever the fuck he call that shit, you feel me? Do your thing, bro. Like I ain't, I'm not a tool with him, bro. I'm not. I don't got nothing to say to him about what he said, what he did, yeah. what he doing. You feel me? I mean, he he said he never seen you. That's never cool. Met you. That's we cool. back on the Durkios, people. We're that's off the cool. whoops. Y'all off the whoops. Back on the Smirkios. <laughs> there you go. That's that, that. That's about right. You feel me? So did Smirk know you was coming up here to do a no joker? No, nah, bro. Don't know. I think blood out of, out of town, somewhere out of the country, man. Living his life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Bro, living his life. Yeah. He doing what he's doing, I'm doing what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? That's my brother. Of course, yeah, yeah. like, I, I don't mind telling, like, yeah, I just did a little jump, you know what I'm saying? But, like, this ain't nothing, like, it wasn't so much of me being excited because I wasn't excited. It's just, I, I just really want to talk to the world, like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Now, after this interview, baby, I can sit back and watch my own interview and check the comments and see what a motherfucker really want to know about me or, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't even know if I'm going to do another interview, bro. Like, I don't like interviews, you know what I'm saying? But, like, like I told you, I gave y'all my word. Whatever y'all ask me, whatever y'all want, I'm going to get to y'all in the row because I know how to cut corners. I'm not going to get up here and incriminate myself or get nobody something to watch, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to make it boring either. Well, motherfucker ain't going to want to fuck with me. I'm one of the realest ones. Fuck what a nigga told y'all, bro. Like, but we, you know, Reese Gavouch, like, this this been me forever, bro, at the same time. So I don't want y'all to be offended when I was shooting this shit down. Like, no, for sure. Because Ben reached out to me like four or five times. And I know another a lot of people that's doing interviews gonna be mad as fuck. Like, damn, bro, like I've been reaching this who I've been trying to. You get what I'm saying? Like, that just wasn't my cover tea at But the we time, we bro. know what your concerns are, and we're definitely not trying to get anybody in trouble or nothing like that for sure. Just, yeah, it's just I'm you know, I'll just be fighting legal situations. I just want to stand on my own business, man. Hopefully all this shit gonna be over with, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Living my life and just doing this shit for real, for real. So like I know it's gonna come eventually. But for the most part, you know what I'm saying? It never been shit I, I too much care for, bro. You know what I'm saying? We we just did an interview with uh No Lemon with Cairo and when we said, Yeah, we got Bezu coming on, he's like, No, you don't. He goes, No, yeah, no way. I told him like three times and each time he's like, Yeah, all right. He's like fully yeah, not yeah, believing like, it. I know we broke him like, man, no, nah, Bazoo <laughs> ain't doing no be, interview, right. bro. Like I think you know his, what I'm saying? his interview though also kind of showed that it doesn't you don't necessarily have to have like the number one star rapper. They just want to see like real ass people that have been around the whole time that have a no real question. perspective. And a lot of times they might get more information That's why you tell out of them, man. like you. If it's a fire, they can't put it out. You hear me? <laughs> can't put it out. <laughs> you hear me? If it's a fire, tell them they can't put it out, man. Everybody don't need to be getting on these 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 platforms, man, because they be like they be having no knowledge of how they be harming themselves, man. I like I just told y'all, Adam, I don't think they be knowing no better because they not. There's not nothing they used to. They not used to the cameras and no shit like that. So like, motherfucker be damn near burying themselves. Don't even know they burying themselves. Like y'all only see for what y'all do because this y'all platform. This what y'all do to make y'all money. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So however y'all capitalize off of it, they probably thought they caught those motherfuckers capitalized. Now they got them people snatching them up for other shit. Like it didn't happen to me before. You know what I'm saying? I just ain't speak on it. Like mm. the internet plays is a major part, bro. My discovery, like damn near for this case right now, is probably like. 400 and some pages, bro, of uh, uh, social media. You get what I'm saying? Really? 
But what they trying to claim me as, you won't see me on social media saying on BD this, on BD that, because I'm not a BD. But they trying to use that gang, like I'm fighting a gang charge, man. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how serious this should be. Like they don't have nothing to put on me, so they trying to put anything on me, you feel me? So y'all trying to hit me with a gang charge because it carried this much time. But the gang that y'all affiliated me with, just, just because y'all see my associates, I'm not in that gang. So how could y'all find me guilty on this charge? You know what I'm saying? Was that something always, though, that like you were always cool with a bunch of BDs since early on in your life? Man, I was cool with a lot of individuals all my life, bro. Like, right. I don't, I never believed in all that. Like, what I am, bro, like, my opposition is, you know what I'm saying? So, like, the gang shit never mattered to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a thorough ass nigga, regardless, like, on any level, you feel me? For sure. Hey, I'm finna hit you. I'm gonna hit you. I'm finna hit you back. I'm in this interview. All his yeah. friends don't believe it either. Like interview. <laughs> I just saw his face. Yeah, but like I said, like it, it never was about the gang shit with me. Like you know what I'm saying. I'm just I, I'm just fucking with who we're hunting. Like you know what I'm saying. I, it don't matter what you is, bro. Like I got GD friends, bro. I got BD friends. Like that's why I tell y'all. Like I sit and watch these platforms and watch how they play this role. Like it's a GD BD thing in Chicago. I guess to the rap way, to me, a bunch of niggas goofies, you ask me, gang. Like, man, that shit, that's not what's going on in Chicago, for real, man. Like, We know who you're into it with. We're it, just going to try to act like we don't know. It's set tripping. Now, I ain't talking about woman to it. I'm <laughs> talking about the general, like, they act like it's a GDBD war right. that's just big as hell. Like, yeah, it was once upon a time, bro, but, like, the city is the tour of the city, bro. I don't give a fuck what you is. You from that block, your ass, you, you riding with them, you getting your ass spanked with them, you feel me? Niggas is out there getting killed guilty by association. Yeah. Niggas, niggas getting killed, probably going serving a motherfucker some weed. Don't even know a nigga. All you, all he know, dude, he getting in for dude. Then we, we gonna make them feel the whole time. They find out later on. Chicago just fucked up. Period, bro. Like it don't matter what the fuck you is. You know what I'm saying? Right. Did you? Uh, so you said you were trying to rap and stuff before the whole drill shit popped up. Did you know Sosa or Fredo or Reese or any of these guys before they started blowing up? Yeah, yeah. Like I, you know, what I'm saying I've been knowing Dirk. I believe since two, if, if not 2008, 2009. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, D thing, bro. Like D thing with the dumbbell with my brother Real. You know what I'm saying? It was D thing, Chino. Rest in peace, Chino. Mm-hmm. That was Dirk manager. He from my block. You get what I'm saying? So D thing, Real Chino has be hung with each other. So. D thing was on my block on the regular all the time. He introduced me to Dirk like in 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. But I never was a block hopping type of person back then, bro. Like I don't be doing all that just going, even like I got I got peers from a lot of different blocks, but I fuck with them. Just because I fuck with you don't mean I fuck with your niggas unless your niggas fuck with me, you feel me? Like I don't, I never be, I never been a friendly type, you know what I'm saying? I, I was the type of nigga that used to always just be on my block, you know what I'm saying? That's how I'm coming now, like. I don't be with the block hopper shit. Everybody be cool, but I keep it on the mutual grounds. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's why the back door be open for a lot of these niggas because they be thinking everything be cool. Lolly gag and you going over this set, get into it with your own block because you fucking with this set. And nigga, clip you and back door you. You ain't had no business being over there anyway. Be with who you grew up with. Be who you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I told y'all, our city so built with hate, so I never been a block hopping type of nigga anyway. But I fuck with niggas though. Like, my relationships be genuine because niggas know I'm thorough, so they gonna fuck with me. Like, and they guys, some of they guys fuck with me. Some of them shake a nigga hand and stab a nigga in the back. Like, but they ain't gonna show it. Like, the thing about me, a nigga gonna respect me in my presence. That's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? I don't get no fuck what no nigga think about me. A nigga ain't gonna, as long as a nigga don't cover no corners and, and, and bring that shit my way, you can go and keep it moving. I'm gonna I'm, I'm reciprocate the same energy you give me. You feel me? I ain't never been with the friendly shit, like, hopping around. So, yeah, I knew Reese. I knew Bro and them was already rapping. You know what I'm saying? So, so all them, a lot of my little guys from my block. Hung with Sosa and them, you feel me? When they all went to school together and shit, you know what I'm saying? So I gave I gave jail most of my life. So when the drill culture was coming coming about, I stayed my ass in jail. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was always in jail. I was out for this ain't once you what you want, but I stayed my ass in jail, bro. Like this is long as I really, really been trying to keep it going before I just caught this other case. You get what I'm saying? I think I was just out for like the longest I ever been out was probably like two years, bro. Out of my whole life as a youth coming up to now. Two years the longest I ever been out of jail. You get what I'm saying? So what was that like though when you started seeing drill music like taking over? It's like your real life kind of playing out in music and the whole world is getting captured I by feel it. Like, I feel like we them, bro. You feel me? I feel like we them. You know what I'm saying? Like my block personally, bro, it's about 15 rappers on my block. You know what I'm saying? Like I be feeling like niggas don't begin. My, 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 I can't even call them my little bros and nothing like that because... We all brothers. I ain't, I don't be like little boy in no motherfucker. Mm-hmm. But, you know, niggas be seeing the talent, bro. You know what I'm saying? We got some of the hardest motherfuckers in Chicago right now. THL, Lil Law, THL, G-Baby, you feel me? 
the city rock with them regardless, you feel me? But at the same time, like, if our city was together, like I told them, like Atlanta, a lot of niggas be on game, but everybody want that spotlight, you feel me? Motherfuckers don't know, everybody want the shine. At the same time, it's a lot of hard motherfuckers for my block, so rapping been going on in my community forever. Like, I bet my little bro, done, before I thought about rapping, little bro them already been rapping, you know what I'm saying? G-Baby been rapping since he was like nine. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He got a passion for music. I had to grow a passion for music, you get what I'm saying? Like, I ain't like music, I was just doing this shit just because of who I am. But I had to grow a passion for it, you know what I'm saying? Like. Music is therapy for some people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I listen to me. I'm a bass head. I, I play music 24-7, bro. I don't watch TV at all. Really? You know what I'm saying? So certain songs that I can relate to, you know what I'm saying, I can vent to, it's like therapy to me. But I don't really listen to nobody but the guys. So a lot of these niggas be cap rappers, gang, you feel me? Once I feel like you're a cap rapper, I don't, I don't be into the shit no more, you know what I'm saying? You listen to anything outside of the rap stuff? Yeah, I listen to Detroit saying, oh, okay. you know, Future, one of my favorite rappers, bro, you know what I'm saying? ESTG, mm. you know what I'm saying? Outside of the guys, I just listen to a few, you know what I'm saying? But like, I don't really listen to a lot of these niggas. I ain't gonna lie to you. No r and I'm starting to like r and I mean, I've been listening to r and since I was shorty, but you know what I'm saying? Right. I just be thugging, bro. I don't know. Now. I just, I, like I told you, music therapy to me, so I just like I just like listening to music, bro. No matter what it is, you know what I'm saying? R&B, R&B. You know, my new name for to be stu- Stupid Cupid, y'all. I'm going to be start doing this, this, this soul for the ladies, man. And we need that. So you change it over. You know, I'm always showing the signs of aggression, you know. Mm. I'm gonna try to change it up for him this time, man. I got something for the uh So you had a relationship with Dirk, but uh how did you meet Vaughn? Was it separate or you met Dirk through Vaughn? My brother Lil Vernie uh introduced me to Vaughn, I believe, two thousand and twelve. Yeah, I think I met Vaughn like two thousand and twelve, you know what I'm saying? You know, I can't speak on how 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 me and Vaughn locked, oh, but that man. was you know, that was my boy, like Vernie brought him around, you know. Vernie, that's that's my that's my dog, you know. Man, you know he paralyzed right now. Is this Vernie in the wheelchair? Yeah, bro, bro is a hundred percent him. The muscle, me? the muscle for sure. That's my brother. You feel me? But you know, I Vernie introduced me to V Roy. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> like I be looking at them making their little documentaries and shit. Oh yeah, Zoom at Vaughn in, in, in jail, and that's how they click the cap. You feel me? I've been new Vaughn before the jail situation, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I was thugging out here with him, but. That's how that shit go, you know. But then you got closer while you were all locked up? Actually, Vaughn was around probably like his last six months of his, uh, of his time. They kept Vaughn away from us. Mm. That's why he was fighting so much. Vaughn was always in. Uh, Max got, they had Division One. They shut Division One down. So Max got Division 11, 10, and 9. Now we call the trenches. That's what it's going up at. That's why I did most of my beard at a 9. You feel me? But they kept Vaughn at 10. I don't know why he was fighting like, like a motherfucker, but they would. By all us, all us was the, in the county at the same time. The drill wave, me, Rondo, T Slick, goddamn it, uh, D Rose, C Day, C. Everybody you could name that was locked up. All us was in the county at the same time. Like wow. that bitch was up. Like the drill coach. It was one time, bro. We was in, on deck. All of us, they stacked the deck with every last one of us and put all our ops on one deck just so we won't be running each other throughout the jail fighting a lot of shit. Like all our ops just share the deck and all us share the deck. Me, Rose, Slick. So I saw to all my guys, basically, you feel me? We all was on one deck. It helped us get through our bed better, but the shit ain't last long, you feel me? I seen a clip where FBG Butter said you ran the deck. Man, you know, Butter and Lil J, the first deck they touched was the deck with me. Uh, when they when they got locked up for their murder case, you feel me? They landed on deck with me, me, uh, Didi, and B.A. I ain't run no deck. His ass just be talking, man. But a lot of shit he be saying be cap. I don't even want to repeat the shit because I don't be with the back and forth and just trying to prove niggas hoes and niggas be lying, gang. Like, fuck that shit. Whatever he say goes, you feel me? I don't be wanting to talk about that shit, gang. His ass cap, though. Like, a lot of shit that niggas saying, he be, these niggas be cowboys, gang. They entertain y'all, so I just let them get y'all that type of entertainment. I don't be wanting to talk about this. You can't even catch me talking about another nigga, man. Yeah. Y'all ask me too many questions about another nigga, bro. I'm going to tell y'all, man, this interview about me, gang. Like, I don't be want to talk about these niggas. These niggas be goofies, bro. Like yeah. In real life, like I mean, I can't time see goes myself by. into it with you. Like you just keep hearing more and more wild ass stories as time goes by. You are gonna hear a lot of them, bro. It's a lot of ain't been released, bro. I was in there. Look, the times I think that county was the worst at the time. All us was in that the drill culture, bro. Like that bitch was going up everywhere. Like there's a video. Y'all that- heard about the spinning ass. Y'all heard about the Glock Dewey, but it's way more to that shit, man. Like it's way more to a lot of that shit. Like Cook County Jail, bro. I really was thinking about sitting sitting back and just doing a little documentary about the real Cook County for real, because that bitch like a whole, once you win it, like the people that's fighting trauma, motherfuckers fighting 45 out of life. 
murder automatically forty five life. There's so many people that fight murders attempts. Ain't coming home, bro. That jail is its own world. Mm. Like every, all while we facing our time, while we waiting for trial. Yeah, we think about the world. Yeah, we get on the phone, talk to the world. Yeah, we talk to our women. You feel me? But it's it's its own world inside that bitch. Like you just clocked in. Like you got to be on on on, on 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 demon time through the door in that bitch. Like you got to be with it or that shit ain't for the week. You feel me? I seen a clip of you like stopping somebody from like getting in a fight or some shit. Yeah, that was that was a motherfucker. I, uh, I used to fuck with and shit. You know what I'm saying? While I was in there, or whatever, I was one of my homies and shit. I was trying to stop them from running the cell, rolling the motherfucker goofy. You know what I'm saying? Was gonna get the, they was gonna get the deck ran in and shit. You know, motherfucker had something going on, but it had got out of hand. Like you feel me? Niggas was big teeth and all type of other shit. So yeah, that wasn't that, that ain't shit though. It's a lot of fights, bro. Like it was a lot of shit going on, man. They said you ran out to the to stop the fight, like it was the Royal Rumble or some shit. Which one? The well, the clip I'm thinking of is that you see you kind of like run across the whole the whole area to like get up in this yeah, confrontation. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Hey, is it weird for you to see that shit though? Because I mean. I'm sure you remember that situation, but it was a long think, ass. You I never thought you were gonna see that again. I right? ain't never think none of that shit was gonna ever get leaked, bro. Cause it was so many, so many situations happening in that bitch, and I never heard of it. Like right now, how the county ran because I was just in there. You know what I'm saying? They had put uh, the police had put these these pipes on me that they found out of the trunk or whatever. You feel me? So I just went back to the county recently. You know what I'm saying? And that motherfucker way different from when we was in there from 13 to 18, bro. Like. It's a bunch. That bitch turned around. Everybody either got found guilty or went home. The majority got found guilty. So, like, the whole division there is just different. But it's more so uh, now, bro, like, all the officers back then, it was older officers and people that's been there for 15 years that got history, chemistry in that bitch. Now they just hiring anybody. I believe it's one of the—they say they think the police are releasing them. I believe it's just a fan ass officer, bro. It could, they, they got motherfuckers in there, man, that went to school for the shit, man, that, 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 that probably grew up with a motherfucker. I've just seen so many motherfuckers I knew in there. From my community, goofies that play football, anybody working in the county now. So I believe it's just a fan ass officer released, probably got in some trouble or something, got fired or something, and just releasing that shit. Cause it's nothing but all they gotta do is just get the incident report. Like if somebody was fighting or something, you feel me? This uh, incident report gotta be made when a motherfucker fight. Mm. So they gotta, when, when the white shirts come on the deck, they gotta press the camera, turn the camera on. Anytime anything go on, the camera gotta go on. But they got pod cameras. You feel me? Yeah. So when they when I seen them doing the interrogations and shit after you fight, they always got a question. You ask you, do you want a P, do you want PC or you know what I'm saying? And I seen a lot of videos of different people from Chicago how to handle it, and it seemed like you handled the situation like how I expect you to handle the situation. You ain't really say shit. I don't be wanting to talk, bro. All right, but uh, so how you feel about the the viral video that leaked to Vaughn on when he was asking for PC and shit? I know. Let me tell y'all about that situation, man. Look, man, that's why I say like I don't know. By, by, by Vaughn being big all over the world, everybody look at it differently, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't no ops on that deck while he was playing like he was gay and Vaughn wasn't gay. You know what I'm saying? In Cook County Jail, bro, niggas do so much shit. They stick ink pans in their dick just to go to an outside world hospital just so they can see bitches and jag off to them. You feel me? They swallow double-way batteries out of the remote for the TV just to go to an outside hospital. You feel me? So it'd be so many incidents that the officers got to deal with in that jail and, and, and the inmates find they way to find the tactic. Like if the if the if the, if the, if the division locked down, if the division locked down, a motherfucker, oh, I'm finna try to get get in traffic. That's what they call it, get in traffic. I'm finna try to go to Cermac. Motherfucker, say for instance, motherfucker fall out, play like he had a seizure or something. They so used to that shit now. They picking your ass up, dragging you right back in the cell. You get what I'm saying? So Vaughn wanted to get on deck with one of the guys. You know what I'm saying? And they don't be going for none of that shit. So him playing a role. Like he gay, you can't force no motherfucker on no deck. You know what I'm saying? That's gay. Like if you tell a motherfucker, like that's why he was playing a role. But this, they they call that playing a role, bro. Like, of course a motherfucker wants something negative and bad to say about bro. You know what I'm saying? But I know how I was in there. I know how Cook County is. You know what I'm saying? Not saying I would have did none of that shit. I just know the the, the 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 actual facts of that jail. They not hearing nothing. All that my ops on deck with me. If he would have said my ops on deck with me, they would have said he was a snitch. You feel me? But him saying my ops on my, on the deck with me on my daughter. Rather they could, he could sue them or not, they dragging his ass right on the deck and put him on the deck with locking him in the cell, gang. They macing you, putting you in the cell. You feel me? He did, he went about everything without even having to worry about that shit because that's what you got to do in the county. Like you got to make the shit sound believable. Like if you tell a motherfucker you gay, they 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 gonna do something to me. Cause I'm gay. That's a hate crime. You feel me? So of course he knew and he getting recorded. He knew that already, gang. That wasn't no. 
He don't. He didn't give a fuck about what the fuck a motherfucker think about him getting recorded. The officers even knew this shit. You know what I'm saying? They knew he was copying. You, you hear him clearly in the video. Oh, he don't want PC now. He, he was just really just trying to get to another deck. They said it, but they only leaked one clip of it. You feel me? Mm. That's how Cook County is, bro. Like, you could be walking out of your cell and and have blood coming up out your shit. Blood. If, if they don't feel like it. They feel like you did it on purpose. Your ass going in that cell, and you will get rid. They you will get written up later. You feel me for the shit? But at the same time, you gotta do shit like get somebody drugs when 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 they do the pill call because the officer gotta be right there when they doing pill call. Somebody that's on psych meds or something. You feel me? And you gotta stack the drugs up. Shit like that. They have to move you around. You feel me? You get like ten pills and act like you swallowed them, bitch. You feel me? You got OD. You can die. So that's something severe to the point they have to take you in traffic. They have to get you, you know what I'm saying? If it ain't nothing that serious, it's, it's only so much you can do on the deck to get off the deck. All that, uh, my ops over here, this deck, we can say, hell, I want to go on another deck, send me to the hole, none of that shit. You can say, I'm going to the hole, I don't want to be on this deck all day on my daughter. They're going to mace you and drag your ass in that cell. You're going to be sitting that motherfucker maced up, damn near finna die. I know Cook County Jail, bro. Division 9, maximum security, half of these niggas that be having son of save blood probably ain't been in no max prison. And when they got to know how the laws is as far as getting in traffic or getting off that deck, you feel me? The deck was a Christian deck, blood. Who the fuck wanna be on a Christian deck and all the gang in the same building on the other floor getting busted, you feel me? They got microwaves, all type of shit, you feel me? Like the Christian deck, I'm sure they probably gotta go to Christian service while they on the deck. It's a privileged deck, you get what I'm saying? If you're on a Christian deck, it's a privileged deck. Like they probably get all out, but it's probably like a bunch of old motherfuckers. He fun. It was a young nigga. Who the fuck want to be on the deck with 40 year olds and 50 year olds? You feel me? Trying yeah. to do their time. They on this deck. Bro, I wasn't going to do nothing. Like, they didn't, it didn't got so serious, bro. Like, we did shit like way out shit, bro, that y'all don't know about, bro. Like, we literally grab sheets. And, and it's a pole that go on the top of the deck, bro. We will grab a sheet. The police, I like they don't want to do nothing for us. Uh, get us bank off the deck. So when they pop our doors and let us out. When you want one motherfucker to do something, they locking the whole deck down. So niggas don't get no fuck, but we, we doing something to get off the deck. I used to run out my cell, bro, with my sheet and hurry up and there's a pole just like this, bro. We literally climb all the way up the pole, all the way to the ceiling of the deck, bro. Tie the sheet up there and hang on that motherfucker like a tent. Literally. <laughs> Go get the superintendent on hanging myself, you feel me? Yeah. They can't climb up there and try to get you down because if you fall and kill yourself or hurt yourself, it's going to be on them, you feel me? So, like, it's certain tactics we, we used to have to pull with them people just to get shit done, bro. Like, People don't know how that jail shit is, man, because they ain't never been through it. So everybody gonna get their own perspective on how that shit is, bro. Yeah, even though we know he was like working his move type shit, you was still like shocked to see. Ain't shit gay. No, I wasn't shocked, bro. Ain't shit gay about blood, man. That's that's either here or there, though. Like, I mean, everybody gonna always have their own point of view, how they look at shit. I mean, if y'all want something negative and bad to talk about, that's y'all perspective. Everybody got the right to their own perspective. You feel me? It's just crazy because, like, you know, like you knew him as an actual person. I knew him as like a rapper, but then he passes. And there's like all these narratives about him are so viral. Like they start talking about him like a serial killer. All of a sudden they talk about Vaughn like crazy again. Then that shit comes out, gives people opportunity to say like, oh, he wasn't really hard like that or whatever. It's just like he's such he a viral was, character. Man. That Vaughn was just what he was, man. Everybody know it, man. Vaughn ain't Vaughn. He was what he was, bro. He what a lot of niggas want to be, bro. You feel me? Did you actually? I'm say what a lot of these niggas want to be. Ain't no secret, gang. Like these 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 real facts, man. Like. It ain't too many niggas, blood. Like, all the real niggas either dead or gone, bro. Like, our, our city just fucked up now, bro. Just pay attention to the to the, to the the social media thing. Like, we finna speak on that topic with the push and PC, because I'm with whatever my people with, you know what I'm saying? I never I never been, I never condone and none of that shit. Like, all the senseless killing that's going on in my city, the little kids getting killed, the women getting killed, you know what I'm saying? I know... I'm one of the major influences that corrupted my cities. I don't mind trying to help bring this motherfucker back, bro. Fuck who don't like, fuck who ain't with it. You get what I'm saying? Like, the shit they got going on with Ruger, J Main, um, you know what I'm saying? All the fans ask me every time I go live, why you don't get on the phone with them? Why you don't? Look, I never interacted with them in no type of fashion or form. My voice could be my voice on my own time. As long as I'm with the cause, I'm with whatever they with. But I ain't got to get on the phone with them. I ain't got to, blood. like, them never been my caliber of niggas to talk to. Like, Cause I don't know what the nigga attention is. I just seen niggas say they pushing peace and whole time still sneak dissing and trying to make it a still BDGD situation and, and say a motherfucker black ball. Like if you pushing this shit, bro, push this shit completely. Don't be flies. Don't front for no internet because money involved. Don't stunt to the world like this. How you come? You feel me? Like I'm the, I'm more a type of a nigga. I'm taking sacrifices. You feel me? I get off the band. I pull up on niggas block. What's up? What we doing? We in tour or we squashing this shit? How we coming? Like 
I'm gonna take them chances because I know how I'm coming. You feel me? Half of them niggas ain't finna pull up on no motherfucker block and stand on shit. They just following the lead. One nigga doing it, everybody else wanna follow suit, bro. I ain't no following ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? But I'm with all that shit, bro. Like, I'm, I'm we, we pushing peace. However, like, I'm seeing this shit going slowly for shorty, but I wanna bring my city back where it used to be when I was coming up having fun. Like I told y'all, what I wanna do with the youth, you know what I'm saying? I wanna start the little baseball teams, you know what I'm saying? Like, 12, I know they probably smoking weed and probably picked up their first gun doing I can try to help, but like, I know I'm a major influence in my city, bro. So, like, this shit ain't just about the low end, the south side of me and my ops, bro. You know what I'm saying? This what it is, motherfucker, bro. Like, I don't get no fuck who don't like what I'm on. This is what I'm on. You know what I'm saying? And I'm standing on that shit with an iron fist. If a motherfucker catch me and do what they do, which it ain't going to happen, I'm too advanced for these niggas. I sit and watch how these niggas lose their life. There ain't nothing to be bragging on, but these niggas flunkies to me, gang. Like, they ain't cut. They ain't built for this shit, like. I don't get caught like it, man. Any, shit can happen to anybody, blood. Blink of eye, you turn your head one one second, man, the wrong move, motherfucker see you, you don't see them, it can happen, gang. Don't surround yourself in certain environments, you ain't got to worry about that shit. I, I'm too much worried about one of my own snaking me out before I, I let a little goofy get up on me, gang. That's just how I look at life, you feel me? Like, ain't no nigga getting, ain't no nigga, can't no nigga think farther than me, man. I, I, I real lie, do this shit, bro, you feel me? So you but, for the pushing the peace movement? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely so for that. That's what I'm on. So I'm you on can that. see yourself saying with somebody that you... Have problems with like back in the day. If it, if it, if it, if it's meant and it's gonna happen, yeah, I see myself with a motherfucker that I had smoke with or had any type of episodes, anything when it came to the streets. Yeah. I don't mind moving forth and pushing that type of that that that, that type of general. But I'm the type of nigga. If that's my word, I, I work. Shit happened. War been going on since Vietnam. Gang, you feel me? That don't mean we gonna control the city and stop everything. But I know. We can influence a lot of people that don't want to do this because there's a lot of niggas that don't want to do this shit for real anyway, bro. Niggas, A lot of niggas want to be safe. A lot of niggas don't want to be into it. A lot of niggas don't want to be getting their ass spanked for another motherfucking shit, bro. Like, niggas be inherited. Other niggas bees don't even know what's going on. It's a whole new generation now. These shorties different. You feel me? I only teach who I want to teach. If you pay attention to me on live every day, I get on live and talk my shit in my own lane. Like, but I'll be just trying to influence the ones that's, that's, that, that want to listen. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who don't want to listen or, or, or do what they want to do. But at the same time, I had guidance coming up. A lot of these young niggas ain't got guidance. I'm not going to tell no little nigga to do something that I ain't going to do myself. You feel me? I never was, was the type of nigga to send no motherfucker off or hide no motherfucker out here bad. You feel me? Like, I want to help push my niggas and help my niggas get somewhere, elevate, and do what they doing, whatever they want to do with their careers. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just, like, it, I'm the type of nigga my heart so good. I don't just focus on me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no selfish ass nigga. I'm coming how I'm coming. But there's a lot of niggas that don't listen. And I still farm their ass like, all right, you ain't got to listen, gang. Just, I don't want that shit around me, though. You feel me? Like, if you ain't on what I'm on, ain't nothing to talk about. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, yeah. It's, it's amazing seeing Tay Savage kind of pivot into talking about peace and stuff like that. But there's yeah. this old ass video. I'm wondering about your history with him because there was this old video of you, him, and a couple other people in the car. And you are like extremely well equipped, equipped in the car. Say one of the ones that was out here with me. <laughs> right. What What is your memory of like? Do you remember that specific day, or was that just like a lot of days? What it looked like? Oh, yeah, that? I, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, right. Crump was in the car. Crump used to be OTL, bro. A lot of shit y'all don't know. Like, yeah, I was with Tay like damn it on an everyday basis. That was my boy. Like, still is. You know. What you I'm didn't saying? even like, show his face in that clip, but now that we know him so well from the videos and yeah. stuff, you can hear his voice and tell it's him. Yeah, I was. I was. You know what I'm saying. Crump was OTF. That's why Crump was in the vehicle. So y'all probably looking at for the new fans, new generation fans. Trump became a big, a big troll, troll to the world. So everybody knew him for talking shit. Like he was so acting like he was OTF. Okay, blood. Trump, Crump was high driver, gang. You feel me? Like Crump was in the video with you. I know exactly what video you talking yep. about. Blood. I know what he's talking about. He used to be OTF, bro. Trump, Crump used to hang with us. Crump used to go pick all the guys up and take them to the studio. Man, that was our Aaron boy. You hear me? This ain't no motherfucking secret. This ain't no flops. I ain't on this bitch comic game. Like, this. When, when did that end? When did you guys stop being cool? Man, when did what end? You and Crump being on good like, terms. That's when niggas, when niggas felt like they couldn't. I don't know, blood, whatever his situation is with Dirk and them, bro. I'm my own man. I don't really be caring how niggas be falling out, gang. Like, Crump wanted to be, like, he wanted to, be, he wanted to put that shit out there how he put that shit out there. He felt like he did what he did. He, ro he rolled with his niggas, so that's what route they took. They got, you know, niggas be, niggas be feeling some type of way about certain shit. Niggas can't, I'm myself, gang. I'm going to be me with or without a motherfucker. That's how I'm coming already. So, like, I don't be too much caring what they be having going on, man. Them niggas don't be, re they make themselves real ops. You know what I'm saying? These niggas just be involved in their self with shit, bro. Yeah, These niggas I, OTL crazy, you hear me? Because at one point, y'all had, like, a, a good relationship for sure. Yeah. And then uh, even King Louie, it seemed like Louie was around. All them niggas was around when this shit started, man. 
This shit just totally different though, man. I done watched so many niggas flip crowds and I'm the same nigga, gang. I ain't went nowhere. I'm coming, I'm coming. Like I done watched a million motherfuckers flip friends and peers, bro. I can't just I can't give with no new niggas, you feel me? I ain't, I ain't never like that. I ain't how I'm coming. That's how I need to get the ass clip, you feel me? Do you believe that Crump actually had money on your head at one point? Money on who head, bro? That was the rumor is that Crump had money on your oh, head. Oh, you heard something like that? Well, on YouTube. You believe something like that? I don't know. I'm not really what sure. What did Crump have? You tell me. I guess. <laughs> Maybe he took it all out. When I got my jaw, jaw broke in jail, bro, I got snaked by a nigga that was not my op. Crump claimed he put money on my head. The nigga... Come to find out, man, the nigga was fucking with, with Melly Blood, like, in some fast enough form, you feel me? But I was shooting dice with the nigga on deck, feeding them all type of shit, you know what I'm saying? Y'all get him on the interview, whatever, he'll tell y'all, girl. Ain't, ain't no nigga never hold me in jail, went on me in jail. I stood on my business after he snaked me. Like, I, the first snake, he broke my shit, I ain't gonna lie, you feel me? You so were like, brushing your teeth, right? No, I ain't, I ain't get to brush my teeth. I was going in my bag to uh, grab my toothbrush and my towel, you feel me? Uh -huh. Like, his sale was, like, right here. Whoever the celly was, they was probably was already plotting, plotting before the sale, you feel me? Like, we shot dice like two days before that. I fucked the whole dice game up. I gave him like $40 back and some phone time. But he had used, he had used too much of my phone time. So I said something to him already, like, man, that's how niggas fall out. Like, you could have asked me for that shit, homie, you feel me? Mm. That's little shit, though. Niggas fall out for little shit like that, though, you feel me? So whatever it was he did from the time, from the two days we shot dice and got on the phone with them niggas, they like, man, then you over there with dude, the nigga was... Sliding on my door head, they trying to kick it all that shit, homie. So it, it was something that was unexpected. Like niggas don't be knowing, like ain't like no nigga like check it out, it was a weep in a bump. You feel me? I respect that game, but that's why I never denied nothing anytime the shit get leaked. You know the fans gonna be trolls regardless anyway. But I'm so much of a real nigga. Shit happens. Ain't no nigga never spin on me. Ain't no niggas never slap me or put their feet on me. That's when, that's when that, that's when I'm going all out. You feel me? Mm. Shit can happen, gang. Like I never said I won every fight I ever had in my life, but at the same time. It ain't like he knocked me out when he broke my jaw. He got his ass kicked. I, I guarantee he's going to tell y'all that. Well, but how do you handle that situation after that happens when you're still stuck in the same fucking jail? Like, how do you even handle it? It was over. It? After, after that happened, you know, after certain shit happens and you got names, they automatically, like, the gang and tell know everybody. I, I, you feel me? So, mm. about me being a big name, I wasn't never going to land back on deck with them again anyway. You feel me? They probably had to keep separate on us. I never landed. I stayed in jail probably, like, two years after that shit, bro. I still ain't running to them. You feel me? Like, they had him in a whole another. It's a South Tower and a North Tower. They had him in a whole another tower just so he he went he won't bump into me and shit like that. You feel me? But mm. that's little shit though. Like I, that's something you know what I'm saying. I took on the chin. Like whatever come behind that, come behind that. You know what I'm saying? Before then, reached out to me trying to holler at me about that shit. Like man, that one post go like that. I fuck. I don't even know the nigga say he told another nigga. Oh, I, I, they rolled me in the county. Rolled me and jumped on. I mean, they rolled me in the Audi home. Blood. I never been in the Audi home a day of my life. The Audi home is a juvenile detention center, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I never been to the Audi home, so I, I could have never rolled in the Audi home. So I know once I got to doing my homework and research and seeing Melly hanging over that shit, I seen what it was. Like, oh, okay, niggas chasing that shit, nigga wanted some clout, you feel me? Why do you have respect for Melly where a lot of these guys you didn't? What what did you consider respect? Uh, we on live with him, kicking it with You're him? on live, and it was just like, you know, you, you were kind of talking shit to each other, but there were other moments where it felt like you, you respected him. I did. I ain't going to sit there and fly and flex like. They be saucing Melly up. That's what I, I fuck with Melly. Melly, uh, like, yeah, they be putting an emphasis on shit, but I let them do what they do, gang. I ain't, I ain't here to say nobody, nobody or not. You feel me? It is what it is. But they definitely be over, over, over saucing that shit. Like, he worldwide. Let some people tell it, he made me famous. <laughs> I was me before I even heard of him. You get what I'm saying? Like, I met Melly in 2013 in the Kawate. I never knew who he was until I was in the Kawate. In that me? clip or another time? No, this is another time. I believe, okay. I think Tay said it in one of his interviews, yeah. though, of how we met, though, if I, if I ain't mistaken. But I met I met Melly through Tay, but I ain't going to lie. Melly was a, a, a stand. Like, it's shit that he know what he's saying, and he always kept it gangster and kept it thorough. And, like, I just built that type of, it wasn't no real bond or no real Oh, what up? I see you. I ain't gonna do nothing to you. You see me and like, no, it wasn't that type of relationship. Like, but if we see each other on FaceTime on the phone, like him and Vaughn used to be on FaceTime a lot. He'd call me for certain situations and shit. You know what I'm saying? So we grew, we grew to chop on that type of level. But like I said, that time I was drunk. Actually, I was drunk as hell. I never knew that live was gonna go viral. A lot of people like in the other states, I didn't get locked up in. That's what they know me off that live. Yeah, you're hitting the bottle and shit. Yeah, yeah. That like, shit got two drunk. million views. Now. Bro, I had a whole motherfucker. Yeah, each clip got millions of views. So mm -hmm. like, imagine all of it would have been one clip. It, I was on live with him for like an hour, but 
like I told y'all, I was new to I was I was I was new with the lives. You know, Instagram was going on for a while, but you know, like every time Instagram always comes with something new. So I knew we could be on live, but I I, I actually thought once we hang up from this live, nobody'll see it again. Yeah, no, it's it's over with. I never knew a motherfucker screen record and <laughs> put it on YouTube. All that goofy ass shit went viral. It is what it is. You feel me? But like there were moments yeah, where it was a cool nigga. Like we 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 used to be on Facetime before live. Like so. I thought that's how it was gonna go. Like we talked so much, I thought it was just gonna be like we hollering at each other and it'd be over. I never knew that shit was but gonna go. There's forever. moments where he's kind of like shaking his finger at the camera, and it feels like he he's pissed off that he can't jump through the camera to like because you, you're saying things that are really pissing him off, and he can't do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, because you're like you're you're kind of like you know. You saying, know, I promise y'all probably don't believe me. You ain't seen I, it since then. I never watched it live. Mm. After I've watched it the first the very the very time when it was going viral. And everybody was calling me, tweaking off the shit. I watched it probably that one time. But like as far as like a lot of people watch it, I be hearing motherfuckers still around like, man, that shit like a movie series to me. I just go clock in with that just to clock in with like, I don't be watching it. So I don't sit and remember shit where I was real live drunk as hell, bro. Mm. I damn to knock the whole field for Duce to the head. You feel me? Like, so you used to hang out with like people from Your Money and shit? Because if you was rotating with Melly, then you had to be hanging out with like at least. Melly wasn't thought of when we was hanging around Young Money. Like I ain't, if he was, I ain't know of him. Like he was, his name wasn't ringing what it was ringing. Like I heard about Melly when, like as far as doing bad shit and wilding out when I was locked up for my murder. Like that's why I told him in the video. Like I don't like the fact your shit been ringing since I've been gone. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like his shit wasn't ringing. Like we was hanging with Young Money in 2005, 2006, 2007. You feel me? But we used to all hoop and shoot dice with each other all the time, you feel me? Like, they neighborhood is literally like a two block radius from us. Like, walk two blocks down, that's them. We used to go down there, shoot dice, all that shit. But you know, they had they had the good in their community. They was all mama's boys. They was driving their mama's cars and grandma's school, all type of shit, you feel me? So we used to go down there, kick it with them. They had all the hoes, you feel me? It just went for us, from us fighting to, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how that shit, that shit been, it's been, I think, they, Zico died 2008, man. That shit been going on. My homie Key locked up for the shit right now. So that's what just made the war just be a war that stick. You know what I'm saying? Because when our homies arrested for the shit, you know what I'm saying? For them losing one of their guys. But it started from us fighting. Like, we was fighting. You know how regular kids is always fighting, you know what I'm saying, in the community. We knew each other, but it was always fights a lot, you know what I'm saying? So all the other shit came about. I don't know shit. You feel me? Mm. So they... So you and Dirk, like, so how did you and Dirk really just lock in? Because you, you was moving around with them and shit. So, like, where did that relationship build? Besides just saying his brother, I know you hung out his with Dirk. His brother introduced me to him. I told you. Yeah, so that that's where y'all really just really locked in at. And then, so as far as music and shit, why you and Dirk really don't, like, do as much songs as, like, because you were saying, My like. legal situation, bro, like, mm. me, Dirk, and Vaughn was fighting a uh, murder and uh, robbery and shit. We couldn't be around each other, period. So these all while Vaughn was on the rise, I couldn't be around Vaughn or Dirk, you know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't be around him. But, you know, the case beat now, now I can tell you, like, I just started being around Vaughn right before he passed away. Like, I started popping out, like, you know what I'm saying? I told bro, like, man, motherfucker miss you, blood. Like, fuck the people, blood. I don't care if it's 15 minutes, just pull up on me, bro, you feel me? Like, we couldn't be around each other, do, do our legal situation. We, we co-defendants on the case, so usually when you got a co-defendant and it's on the same case, you, you can't be around your victim but you can't be around the people you talking, you can't have no phone contact, mm -hmm. you can't have no physical contact, none of that shit. So that's why I wasn't able to do no type of music with Dirk or Vaughn, you know what I'm saying? Like they end up doing it with each other because what they had going on, like Dirk will record his verse and Vaughn will record his verse, you know what I'm saying? He did what he did, but. Can you speak on what happened in that incident with Vaughn and Dirk where you guys all caught that case or is that a little? Can I speak on one incident? That case that you guys all caught together? Shit, I don't know. They, some, some made up shit to me, shit. Mm. I don't know nothing about that, homie. Definitely. Yeah, just because it's over. I, don't, I still don't recall what the fuck they say. I don't even know how I got on that case, for real, for real. Right. Like, if y'all, when y'all seen the media and the news, y'all saw Dirk and Vaughn. Like, I in, really In be, court, yeah. Because there was this viral clip of I them really kind of talking to each like, other. Yeah, how, what the fuck's who come in? Is, how the fuck they put me on this case? I don't know if the victim... The case was bullshit from jump anyway. All the shit y'all seen with the media, like they run with the media attention. Just because they seen the lady, Fanny, Miss Fanny Williams, say, oh, if Vaughn was alive, mm. I would have indicted him. That's cap, gang. If Vaughn was alive, you would have indicted us on this case. How was you going to indict us on the case when Vaughn was alive? A whole, the, case, the case happened February 2009. Vaughn died, two, you feel me? I mean, not, two, not 2019. Mm. 
He died 2020, bro. So why the fuck y'all indict us the whole year he was just out? You get what I'm saying? If you had enough to indict us, that shit just capped. That's that was a cover up to try to make it seem like y'all never had the evidence y'all claim y'all had anyway. Nah. Everybody that was saying motherfuckers rats and this, that, and the third, all them bloggers that be running for media attention, I don't see none of them apologize and they leaking the videos of the, of, the, of, the, of the actual case and you can't see nobody on the videos. They all five videos they leaked on social media right now, you feel me? These are the videos they claim they had while we was fighting the case before they started leaking footage of cases. Oh, we got him in his car shooting and his blonde dress show him shooting out the window. We got Vaughn chasing the motherfucker down. Zoo name never was in a case. How the fuck I end up a co-defendant on their case? You get what I'm saying? Like, how did I even end up on the case? I, I was watching the news when they had brought them on the news. My name was never brought up. You get what I'm saying? Them people just know who a motherfucker is. Chicago calling their ass. Man, look, them three, dude, that's dude enough. You feel me? Like, don't have no knowledge that they just regular civilians. I know what's going on, bro. It's, it's common sense. And that's why I just be telling y'all, like, that's why a motherfucker got to watch how they handle a motherfucker. Like, it'd be cool to y'all. It'd be entertaining to y'all because it's shit like a movie to y'all. But to us, that shit'll fuck around and get us buried. Motherfucker get on here and say the wrong shit or do the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? I move with precaution for sure, for sure. Definitely. You know? So, uh, but I wanted to just ask how much information we could get about the arrest that had you locked up for the four years where right where you did beat the body right after that. What what actually happened that you could talk about in that whole scenario where they tried to charge you with that? With my murder case? Yeah. Man, look, man. Stuart Little's around this motherfucker, man. That's all I can tell you, homie. Like, niggas running around this motherfucker trying to be Mickey Mouse and putting a motherfucker in some shit. Like, bro, the case that I was fighting my murder on happened 4th of July, 2008 or 9. Don't quote me because I don't remember. Like, I done been through so much afterwards. I didn't get arrested for a murder charge in 2014, so you do the math. Five tell, years later, it's you pretty tell unreal. You what conclusion you come with for that. Right. So somebody told on you at a later date? Somebody lied on me at a later date. Right. And what, like, so why was that enough, though, to get you actually, like, held for it wasn't, four years? Bro, like, it's just, it's, just, it's just that bad. They want a motherfucker off the street. Like, it was hearsay from the jump anyway. You feel me? No eyewitnesses got on stand. But it's five people got on stand on me in trial. Five people, and I still came home, dog. Inshallah, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I just feel like I'm blessed, man. I got to just take advantage of that type of shit, bro. Like, the most I could just tell you is, like, I feel like a motherfucker just... They they arrested they arrested this one motherfucker, man. It's a it's a story, man. I don't know if my baby mama want me to talk about that type of shit. Her baby daddy, that's all type of weird man shit like some soap opera shit, man. Maybe another time I tend to talk about that situation with my murder case, man, because it's crazy how they summed it up and put everything and got it to get me off the streets. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just be intimidated by me, bro, and just be wanting me out the way. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They, nigga get you out the way the wrong way instead of the right way, man. I'd rather you just get your gun and do what you got to do with that motherfucker before you send a motherfucker out of jail. I done lost, like, my kids. I can't explain to my kids what really was going on. I done lost eight years of two of my oldest daughter's life, you know what I'm saying, because of that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I did for one and a half, but, like, her mama strictly kept her away from me because she dated a nigga that got me locked. All type of crazy shit, bro. So, like, I got I to gotta deal with this shit, bro. Like, that shit fucked me up and scarred me mentally, you know what I'm saying? That's time I can't get back to my kids, you know what I'm saying? But inshallah, I'm just happy my kids don't judge me, you know what I'm saying? They understand. So, like, I be talking to my daughters. I be letting them know, like, man, you know, I always been here. I'm sure they mama tell them that I've been here for them no matter what, regardless anyway. But, you know, I, that was my first two. So, like, that was my daddy girl. You know, the daughters love their father, you know what I'm saying? So, like, the times I couldn't be into their life, I had to deal with the trauma, just knowing another motherfucker raising my child, that then that got me in this motherfucker. Like, it's, it's just crazy, bro. It's a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? So like, And she's still with the guy that allegedly husband, told on you? That's, my, that's her husband. You know, she gonna, uh, she gonna believe his story, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk about them. I just stay away from that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever they story is, however it is, he ain't never seen me hurt nobody. I don't know why the fuck it went that way. Another nigga from my block, a rat that a lot of motherfuckers feel. I ain't bite my tongue about shit. I'm victimized. These niggas don't be right. These niggas out here swear they gangsters. These niggas be harboring the rat activity. Just let some shit like that come on my name. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? Be down to try to figure a way out how to try to snake me out the box. But these niggas so scared of niggas, man. Like, it's just some fucked up shit, bro. Envy and larceny a motherfucker, bro. Like, that's why I stopped bullying. I was a bully when I was a shorty, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That shit... I sit back and just just recap a lot of shit that I done did to motherfuckers back then. 
niggas a whole grudge. I never thought of that shit when I was young. Like, man, I'll do something to him. This should be 20 years later. This nigga gonna still hide this in the back of his head. You feel me? Mm. I stopped bullying motherfuckers and I just do me. Niggas just know to stay out my way because like that bully shit, that shit only gets you so far, bro. A nigga fuck around, hit you in the back of the head for shit you did 20 years ago. You didn't forgot what you did to him, you feel me? Right. So who is THFO Raheem? That's like your stepson? Yeah, or? that's my stepson. And that's with the, you still with his mom? Yeah. All right, because uh, yeah, you, you say yes, I'm still with him. Yeah. No, nah, we not together right now, but like, but, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know you've been, y'all had like a long relationship. But the reason I asked, because I seen somewhere it was like THF Raheem was related to FBG Duck and yeah, they cousins. Yeah, that's just crazy. And yeah. Brick, yeah, cousins. Yeah, so a little awkward. His father said his father passed away two thousand five. Yeah, it's a little awkward when there ends up being overlap like that. Who? In terms of your stepson being around people you don't necessarily get along with or whatever. No, I mean that's his family, bro. Like you know what I'm saying. When he passed away, I was still locked up for my murder case or whatever. So, you know, they it was gonna happen regardless, man. Like. My whole community, his father's from my block. So, like, Duck came to the funeral and everything. You know what I'm saying? The funeral was on my block. You know what I'm saying? But I made sure I reached out to my guys and told them, like, man, y'all going to respect my baby mama. Like, all that. Y'all been – but my guys, like, it, it never was really – like, they don't – one thing about my block, bro, they they do them, man. They don't be looking for that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? They don't inherit a lot of niggas. It be dick-sucking niggas that just want to fuck with who they want to fuck with and just inherit niggas' beefs. You know what I'm saying? Mm. My block don't be with all that shit, bro. That's why we be out the way for real, for real. But niggas know what's up, though. Like, these niggas can fly on these cameras, do whatever they want to do, man. Like, niggas know what's up, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't never, like, no issue like that as far as Duck them, because they ain't like Duck them just came on our neighborhood just to come see Raheem or something. Raheem was in the streets when he was young, when, when I was locked up. Like, he wasn't playing the streets that heavy when I was out here. You feel me? Mm. You know, when you when you a youth get older, your father originally from right here, it was stepfather from right here, you know what I'm saying? That, that shit was going to be in him anyway, you know what I'm saying? Sad that, that he gone, you know what I'm saying? That shit hurted me more because it's like I caught a lot of backlash from that shit. He wanted to be like me, but how he wanted to be like me and his father from here, you feel me? That's who, that was his major influence. His, fa his father died in 2005 when he was young, so, like, he was going to be what he was going to be anyway, you know what I'm saying? I just wish I was home to to to, to guide him, you know what I'm saying, by, by me, you know what I'm saying, dating his mama, like, I, I would have been able to be a, a play a, a better father figure role than just from jail. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit fucked me up mentally as far as being here for my kids, man. You know what I'm saying? While I was in jail, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why I be trying to just stand, stand on top of the business and stand up and be counted for now and like be here with my kids. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? Right. I just be trying to go as high as I can go, you know? Like, but I told you my situation, like, it's so many problems I have with that shit, you know what I'm saying? Because the baby mama dramas and shit, like, I don't be, I be trying to be reasonable about all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that's 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 another story, you know what I'm saying? But I'm building this little production team right now, man. I'm working on this documentary and this little autobiography of myself, man. So they gonna get this shit from me, how I'ma lay it out with my layout, like you know what I'm saying. I don't really know about too many more interviews unless everything come in and fall and play how it's supposed to fall and play. But I wanna just, I wanna get a world, I wanna shock the world with a lot of stories and shit that they ain't ever heard yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I want them coming from me, man, because I don't like everybody judging me off YouTube. That's man, that's the main reason why I sat down today. Right. Like, it'd be so much shit, man. It's just like, you can just say anything, bro. Like, if I if I was a mass manipulator and I could just make clickbait and check a bag, I could be making up stories raw as hell, man. And, and I could I could real life influence a lot of a lot of slow motherfuckers that don't know no better. So this what's really going on the whole time. I could really be eating off that shit. Never show my face. Like, if I really want to get on some manip manipulation shit, because YouTube... Got a lot of motherfuckers' brain. Social media got a lot of motherfuckers' brain. You feel me? Mm. But I wanted to sit down today and just get a word. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a phone high coming. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I told you, I'm definitely gonna sit back, watch the interview, pay attention to the comments. You know what I'm saying? Like see how, see what a motherfucker really do want to know about a motherfucker. Like you know what, mm. what I'm saying? I ain't. I know how to dodge certain questions. So like I ain't too much worried. Like my street lifestyle ain't to be televised, bro. Cause I done been through a lot of shit. You know, so I've been through so much shit though. But that's what my documentary gonna be for. You know what I'm saying? But anything I ever got accused of. I sat and faced my troubles anyway, you know what I'm saying, and came out on top. So I'm not worried about a lot of shit anyway, you know what I'm saying. But like, even with the ATF and the feds, like these niggas be so so fed and slow, be getting on this motherfucker talking game just because you beat a state case and you beat a murder or whatever you did, gang. That don't got nothing to do with the, the feds jurisdiction is way different than the state jurisdiction. So they might can't recharge you for double jeopardy for this murder that you're talking about, but they definitely could, when they do the gang conspiracy, they can bring up the shit that you came home bragging about hurting people and getting away with when, it, when a conspiracy consists on hearsay. 
a lot of people don't know that. Conspiracy don't necessarily got to mean they got actual evidence on you. You get what I'm saying? You niggas be on these platforms talking too much about their street lifestyle, like like the feds ain't got their own jurisdiction. You get what I'm saying? Like the feds jurisdiction don't got nothing to do with state jurisdiction. So yeah, you probably got away with state, but when they build this motherfucking gang, child, this gang conspiracy on you on, on this federal case, all the shit that you claim you get away with or you bragging about getting away with, they can stick all that shit to you, man. These niggas ain't smart enough for that type of shit, though. They get on this bitch loose as hell. Mm. Now, I watch him at that. I'm like, man, how the fuck you a street nigga? He on here doing this. You feel me? How the fuck you a street nigga? He doing this. But it be the goofy niggas that know how to talk and know how to get around and shit. And mm. then it turn into sarcasm or, or comedian. You feel me? Like being trolls. You know what I'm saying? Like you control the situation. Like long if you ain't implicating yourself or if you want to diverse it and try to make it seem like make it more believable because that's what this generation do. They want you to think they're a hitter. They want you to think they're a killer. So they do anything to try to make a motherfucker believe they're a hitter or a killer. You know what I'm saying? Like, Well, Jay Mayne, the same thing he did to you, he did to Tay as well. And they're, they're homies now. But like he told those stories look about like Tay seeing Kabbalah, Tay look shoot at people. Look how Tay capitalized off of mm. it, though. You know what I'm saying? He took this and turned it to this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. What's your thoughts on 051 Kiddo again now and like turning up? I don't want to talk. I don't know him. I don't know him. We say, what's up with him turning up? Yeah, like he he one of the new faces of Chicago. Like everybody talking about him, Tay Savage, FYBJ Man. What you want to know about him? If I don't know nothing about him, what you want to know? I'm just saying, what's your thoughts on like his success that he's seen? Cause he then he do like ten. There's a lot of people that like did like long bids and they coming out and like getting success like real like in a quickly no manner. Him. I ain't hating on him, homie. I don't see no success. I don't see what he's doing. Like that, that internet clout. That's a, that's what y'all consider success. Well, like, I mean, well, he got big labels talking to him. Like, somebody trying to do something with him. So you know something I don't know. Yeah, he's got labels talking to him. It's niggas, sure, yeah. it's niggas, it's niggas die for viral moments, gang. Like, I see it happening. Like, I I ain't finna do nothing and try to go viral because it, it can go left or right. You feel me? I ain't got no hating bone in my body to hate on no niggas. So, I'm not trying to pay attention to his success. Like, he's not nobody that I associate with. Like, y'all probably know something I don't know. You get know what I'm saying? Like, if you got, excuse me, if you got labels talking to him, or, or whatever he got going on, he's doing something good. Maybe he need to keep doing what he's doing. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is how people eat. They not going to let nobody stop what they got going on if this going to feed them. You get what I'm saying? If if, if he feel like dissing and trolling and doing what he's doing, going to make him some money, gang, let him do what he do. I'm not paying attention to the shit. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, it, it never been my business, you feel me? I told you. I don't like talking about the niggas, gang. I don't be on that type of time. I, I think people are just kind of shocked by him because you see somebody like Tay come home and he's pushing the peace thing or whatever. And with Kiddo, you're kind of seeing the total opposite where he came back after like eight years or ten years and he's just saying the craziest shit you could think of. I don't see why he being dumb anyway, gang. Mm. Why, why wouldn't you push peace and stand on top of your business if you're trying to get rich? That right. shit going to last so long you're trying to go viral and doing all this dissing. The more it, it, it might be a goofy clip, you gang. You never know what I have in blood. Oh, if you miss being disrespectful. Why wouldn't you want to? If you plan on being something with yourself, if you want to build your character, go ahead and make something out of this shit. Why you doing all this dissing and shit, nigga? Like what the fuck, like you definitely ain't, man. You, who you been hurt? What you talking like? What you want? You, if you do hurt somebody and stand on top of the, what you acting like you standing on, you finna get on the platform and this the picture you finna paint now. I'll just fuck the motherfucker up for thinking I was sweet because I can't own this. Like what you finna do? You finna build you finna build your character off that? Are I mean, you? This seems like the game plan for a lot of people. And where they end up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I, I, with Chicago drill culture, all the people that you seen that was chasing that shit, what happened when they chased that shit? Right. They got them a bed with a brown box and a nice white sheet, don't they? You gotta be careful. Most definitely. But so you you said earlier that you feel some, some... I don't gotta diss the I don't gotta diss the uh build no characteristics, none of that shit, bro. Like I feel like I'm authentic enough for a motherfucker to fuck with me how I'm coming. If they don't like me, fuck them. You feel me? No, I respect it for sure. But you said earlier that you feel kind of guilty because you were someone who kind of made a lot of the, the gangster shit look cool at a certain point yeah, earlier yeah. in your life. That's when I was young and dumb. Yeah. I put my face and my name on a lot of shit that I could have avoided that shit. And I could have... I like being unpredictable now, bro. But it's like it's hard when... Well, well I, I still could be unpredictable, but like a lot of people know me that I don't know. So I don't know if they got good or bad intentions when they approaching me. You feel me? So it's like I still got to be on the gangster type of like timing. Like I don't play. Like I'll be if I see a nigga watching me too much. I don't know if he a fan or a op. I don't know if he's gonna make a phone call if he want an autograph. You get what I'm saying? Like I wish I could have been a low key nigga and played my part and let them think what they want to think. But I was chasing that shit when I was young. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But I did the shit when it wasn't cool. I've been doing this shit before niggas was doing this shit. So like I used to put my face on a lot of shit. I wanted the motherfucker know I'm coming. You feel me? Like that's how I was coming, man. So like, 
that shit played. Hell yeah, I, I feel guilty with a lot of shit that I did because I know I could have did it better. Was there any? When the jail don't teach you how to how to not do shit, it teach you how to be a better criminal. To was, be honest with you. Was there any like incident in particular though that made you feel like fuck? Like I I was raised in this shit and I believed that this was like the most important thing to put put out there in terms of how I represent myself. But at a certain point, maybe you just feel like fuck. This was it's not how I want to keep moving forward. It's not good for the community or your I people. I still don't even see, I still don't even look at it like, damn, like I'm dumb, I'm dumb, this shit, I'm tired of this shit to that point, that type of point. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm. it was a point of me living my life in the streets, bro. I ain't seen nothing but death in jail. It's like, I, it's like you, you know how you know what you signed up for? Like, yeah. so I appreciate the way that I move because it, 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 it showed me that I'm as, as, as advanced as I thought I was. You get what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these niggas be mad. Like, damn, this nigga ain't there yet. This nigga ain't, ain't, ain't gone for a lot of time. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? This shit hurt a lot of people, believe me or not, bro. Like, seeing me still doing me, gang, like, that shit hurt. And rubbing niggas wrong. Because, I, like I told you, I'm, I'm one of the last ones left with this drill culture, for real, for real. So, like, I never looked at it like, damn, like, hell no, like, I'm tired of this shit. I don't want to go through this no more. Who don't want to move around and, and walk around in the park districts with their kids and enjoy real life freedom without looking over their head? Who don't want to do that, gang? Like, that's why I told y'all. That's a lot of niggas. That's acting like they don't want to push peace for the internet, bro, because it's niggas that got identity crisis. You know what identity crisis is, you mm -hmm. feel me? So niggas' pride be in a way to the point they want to be something to social media. You get what I'm saying? Instead of them just just, just, just grabbing their nuts, like, look, this is what we on. Like, it could happen, gang. We ain't saying that the war can't get turned off. Of course, it's a motherfucker going to do some loose shit and snap or a motherfucker going to want to take their own. Nah, it matter. But back then, niggas was getting disciplined for shit. Y'all all know the yummy situation, you get what I'm saying? Mm. They sent yummy to go do something, but was scared that he was too young to know what he did and he was going to fold, so they got him out of the way before he folded. If a nigga doing something that's a breach, he should get disciplined for doing something that's a breach. If you jeopardizing me and what I got going on, I'm trying to feed the community, I'm trying to do good for everybody and their kids, you do something, you're going to get dealt with accordingly, you get what I'm saying? Niggas don't got that type of shit going on in their community because everybody want to be the boss, man. Yeah. Everybody want to be the big dog from their block. You know what I'm saying? So that, that yummy situation, because DJ, it's about to be all up in the media and everything again because DJ, you just interviewed the dudes who were alleged to have killed him. Was that always a situation that was just like a huge story your whole childhood and shit? I mean, I think I did an essay on the yummy situation at school. Really? School, wow. So that's how I really know the yummy situation. Like, as far as, like, I ain't never seen no movie or you know, none of that shit. I was, we just really had, you know, for, for it to be in history class, Chicago history. Fuck a black history film. Like, black history gonna be black history. You gonna learn everything about black history when it comes to the Harriet Tubman, anything with the slavery, you feel me? Yummy, the yummy situation to me doing an essay on it was like a modern generation. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, damn, this shit ain't too, it's probably like two decades old in my eyes when I was that young, you know what I'm saying? Like it was like probably only two decades before I knew any better of it. So me doing an essay on it and learning everything about it, it was like big to me. Like, damn, this shorty from Chicago, the hunter said that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't like he no suburban motherfucker. Just think of Emmett Till situation, you feel me? And, and, and a motherfucker felt like they, like our older guys in our neighborhood knew, knew went to school with Emmett Till and knew him. It'll always be history to us regardless because it's, it's, it's got something to do with the community. And I know individuals that's from the same hood where you're from. You get and, what and that was one of the first times that the whole country kind of like stood back and was just shocked at what was going on in Chicago because they're like, holy fuck, you got 10-year-old kids killing each other. It was something big. It was something big, I believe, to the world. But if I ain't mistaken, uh, Tupac did an interview from jail and spoke upon the Yummy situation. Wow. I think he opened up the eyes to the world about him being 10 years old and killing the motherfucker. I think Tupac spoke well, on the Yummy that. situation in jail, yeah. That's fucking crazy. I think it was an interview Pac did, if I ain't mistaken. I think so, and before, yeah, I think I've think I seen it. Yeah, I think he, him and somebody else had put the Yummy situation in the song with some, a big artist or whatever, but I think that's what opened the public eye worldwide, you get what I'm saying? Right. I don't think too many people really knew too much about it, besides people in Chicago. Like I said, I did an essay on it, so that's how I knew, but it probably would have been something just for us. If, if they didn't make it worldwide, you get what I'm saying? Somebody using a bit, they big platform to speak on a situation like that, you know what I'm saying? Of course, that's going to be enticing to a motherfucker, 10 year old, doing hits for a motherfucker, and he ended up getting snaked out because they didn't know if he was going to be able to hold the pressure or not, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I can't wait till DJ U drops that interview because I'm the, really I think trying the guys to know. that was locked up for that did, did interviews from the penitentiary too, if I ain't mistaken. Oh, really? Okay. So I think they're I out shit out, but I ain't like if if DJ U just did something on it, he just up he just updating for the new youth that don't know no better. Right. Yeah. It, it ain't nothing but history repeating itself again. You know what I'm saying? He probably want the new youth that don't know 
it's a whole new generation now. They want to learn different shit. You know what I'm saying? That, DJ, you ain't gonna lie. He got a lot going with this platform. Like he getting he getting the interviews done. Like for real, for a lot of motherfuckers tapping in. Whatever. You know, he one of the ones that reached out to me too. I know bro might be salty at me, but like shit gotta be with time. Time consuming, blood. Like this how I move. I ain't like I don't really be sitting down like that. You know what I'm saying? You know the business. Y'all know what's going on, but. <laughs> it got to happen how it got to happen, gang. Like, yeah. gang. Well, how tapped in are it's you? It's going to be questions. It's going to be other questions that other interviewers going to want to ask me that y'all probably didn't ask. Like, I know it's going to be shit that I'm going to be catching. So, like, but how tapped in are you to, like, all the Chicago media that's going on? Because you got a lot of young people, like, doing videos where they're doing, like, news type stuff as well as interviewing people. Like, like, are you real tapped in on that? Is that something that, or are you kind of burnt out on even knowing about the, a lot of those details? What Chicago media you talking about? Like, well, I'm talking about people like DJU and 16 shot him and shit doing interviews, and then you also got people like you know. I I, actually, I ain't tapped in with uh, nobody for real, for real. Like I told you, I don't like when it comes to them blog sites and shit. Like I don't, I don't got nothing against them, gang. It's just I just you know I never was. I ain't easily influenced. It just the motherfucker just have, have a regular conversation with me and it get done, you know. Vaughn very first interview was with 16 shot him and it went big. You feel you me? You were like, up in there, yeah. I was there, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? We shooting I beat the body video that day. You feel me? And he told me, yeah, you told me, like, man, one day I'm I want I'm gonna get you your own interview, you feel me? Mm. Then he had reached out to me, uh You mean sixteen? I think we'll say cheese. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about sixteen. Yeah. Who I said, DJ you? No. Oh, okay. I meant sixteen then, yeah. Sixteen wanted to reach out to me and shit. And then he reached out again when Say Cheese around the same time Say Cheese had hit me and shit. But like I don't a lot of people be hitting me, bro. Like, I, like I told y'all, and he, uh, you, one of y'all asked me what I sit with. Act. One of y'all asked yeah, me what I sit with act or whatever. Like, regardless, be doing big or not, it ain't enticing to me to just jump down just because he got a big platform and I, I can capitalize off his platform. Like, I ain't saying he owed me no apology or no shit like that because he, like, I, like you know, what I'm saying he do what he do. He a journalist. Like, he want to talk about the drill culture. That's what he do. You feel me? But like. I feel like Act played a major part in all these bloggers getting their perspective of how they get their perspective of me. You feel me? He played a major part. Was there a time in your life where you he were used angry to do at him? Yeah, I was angry at his ass for years. Like, <laughs> he used to do his little voice. Like, you know what the fuck going on with him? But he had a whole little, man, they played that motherfucker to me over the phone, man, when they kicked Dirk Doe in, man. And he's, it's like he had said A to B, but like he gave it like a little story as if he knew me. Like, you feel me? Look, there's top most assassin. Woo, he gets away with this, gets away with that. Like, and I felt like he the reason why everybody else is doing what they do. Capitalized and did what they own their own fashion and form. It's like a thousand different documentaries they got of me, bro. Like, you feel me? He don't owe me no apology. He did what he did, but like at the same time, like no, he's, what he's about saw the, the positive future. shit a nigga doing? When y'all see a nigga doing shit positive, why y'all don't catch that? You know what I'm saying? Y'all catch all the bullshit on the motherfucker. Like, when y'all see a nigga trying to do something, it's like y'all y'all wanna keep my name. Fucked up in the culture so much. When I got people looking up to me, I got kids that's watching these interviews now. My kids old enough to pay attention to what's going on. So who want to see their kids talking about me hurting and killing motherfuckers all their life as they growing up and they feel like they daddy a killer? Like at some point it's gonna come believable to them because it ain't like they looking at one motherfucker. They looking at this blogger transferring over to this blogger, this blogger transferring. Like I got kids that love me dearly. You know what I'm saying? I love them dearly. So at the same time. That ain't the that ain't that ain't the route. I want my I don't want my son jumping on the streets thinking he a baby zoo. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, he finna do this because his daddy this or a nigga respect him this much because his dad. No, hell no. Like I already did all this shit, bro. I did this shit for some of my kids. I ain't got to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? You can ask. You can sit ten people in the room and ask them what's their purpose of living. They probably won't even tell you what's their purpose of living. You get what I'm saying? Especially the new youth right now. Like my purpose is to be here for the people. That was here for me when I couldn't be here for myself. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I did everything for me already. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's over with. If it ain't my grandmama, if it ain't my, my, my the people that took care of me when I couldn't take care of myself, if it ain't my kids that I know that's with me when I'm right, that's with me when I'm wrong, ain't judging me no fast enough for them, fuck them. If they ain't what I'm on, fuck them. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's my purpose of living. Like, but a lot of niggas won't, like, y'all just start asking certain people, like, what's your purpose of living that y'all feel like that's very influencing? I guarantee you. Niggas ain't gonna have no real purpose. You get what I'm saying? I got a million and one of them, like, because I sit at the drawing board a lot. I capitalize off of everything I do. So at the same time, like, I don't wanna own, I'm not mad at him. Hell no, I ain't mad at him. He did, he do what he do. Like, that's his job. I, don't, I still don't remember which one of y'all told him, like y'all said about Vlad. I don't care if y'all say y'all got a, a, a great relationship with him or whatsoever. There's certain shit, like, I just can't rock with. You feel me? I can't rock with it, and I, it get too deep. Because even if you dodge in this question, it's like he purposely. I understand y'all saying y'all giving him up for what the fans want. You say he a journalist for real. No, you told me. And you talk. 
Yeah, me and you talking. He said, like, you real friends with Vlad. He's not the police whatsoever. However you feel, he might not be, gang. But he'll ask you this question, twist it around, make that motherfucker do a backflip. Mm. Just because you answer this way, he going to go all the way around and ask you that motherfucker again a whole different way. Blood. Like, So you got to be quick on your feet fucking with him. You get know what I'm saying? Well, like, one, one thing that Vlad told me a long time ago is that when he went to interview the baby, he knew that the baby had killed a guy in Walmart, and he actually reached out to the local police department to make sure that it was a closed case so that he wouldn't be having a rapper See, that come shit on behind to his the scenes that I ain't know about. That's super player. You right, yeah. That shit I don't know about, but it's like certain shit, bro. I'd be like, damn, like, yeah, I understand. Y'all want to know this. Y'all want to know that. But I've never been the type of person that gave a fuck up if a motherfucker know about my street lifestyle because it's, it's so much more to me than just the streets, though. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it's way so much more to me than the streets. I understand that shit cool. That's what they like. That's what they want. But like it's way much more to me than just the streets, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm very intelligent on all levels, but at the same time, like, I don't want to just talk about the, 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 the nigga street lifestyle all the time. You know what I'm saying? But like I told him, I'm well, I tell you, I say it's gonna be a good interview, bro. I ain't gonna be on no sour shit. Like, fuck you, XP that for. Ooh, I told you the same shit. Like, right. I mean, he he just asked you, you about somebody that you clearly don't want to talk about. You know, you shot it down, boom. It'll probably be a little bit of a viral moment or like, look at look at Zoo. He don't want to talk about so-and-so, but I mean. I shot something down already. Well, the, he tried to bring up a, a current. I got more shit I got to ask you, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I wanted to ask this. Yeah. One, one, one thing, just to follow up on something you said, you said you don't want your son to be baby Zoo or whatever. Do you encourage your son to maybe not put himself out there in a certain way because you know that at a certain point he could maybe have to deal yeah, with the yeah, consequences right now, of his so right now is, right? the time for me to be on him even more because you know what I'm saying he on his, he on his way to his teens because you said he's what 16 or no he's 11 my oh son. okay okay so, but, but I mean yeah do you encourage him to maybe like not put himself out yeah, there right? you know what I'm saying but you know he a game head right now mm. but my son so slick and sneaky like to me he still played a baby role the angel role but it, excuse me, but it'll be some of my guys sending me videos of him cursing. Nigga, you a snitch. I don't like snitches, nigga. Ooh, you feel me? Like, yeah. what made me notice he pay attention to the social media, he be on YouTube a lot. But when I used to watch him when I was around, when he was six and shit, when he used to watch, two, he used to watch weird shit on YouTube. So I, I used to be cool with that. One day he had asked me, like, uh, he did it. You got your jaw broken, Jill? You feel me? <laughs> so I know what he doing. He typing yeah. on YouTube. You get what I'm saying? Searching in his daddy. So every time he looking on YouTube, all you seeing is negative shit, crazy shit, crazy shit, crazy shit, crazy shit. Like, so now I got to be extra hard on him. Like, son, this ain't the route. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always ask him, like, what you want to do with yourself? Kids that say it, police, officers, lawyers, you know what I'm saying? Of course they got big dreams when they kids, you know what I'm saying? But it's up to you to help them chase them dreams while they're young. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you can just take heed to what they said, but is you going to help them capitalize off what they said they want to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what type of parent you gonna be? You just gonna be like, oh yeah, just keep on just doing do, doing good in school. Get your grades good, you know what I'm saying? Then you can go to school for that, you know what I'm saying? Like, how, it's about how you go about it, you know what I'm saying? I know my son, he bad as hell, you feel me? Every time she called me and tell him, like, he just so sneaky, but he's smart as fuck, though, you feel me? But he's sneaky as hell, like, he know who to play it with, you know what I'm saying? He, he an angel around her, he ain't gonna curse around her, but he do a lot of shit, more shit around his mother than he'll do with me. Like, he already, I, don't, I never whooped him a day of his life before, but he knows, like, yeah, I ain't going to get away with this, so I ain't even going to play with dude who the ass. You feel me? Like, I feel like the world has changed a little bit because now a kid like your son could be looking up to like a YouTuber or a streamer or a video game player, whereas for you, it sounds like it was mostly rappers and street dudes, maybe some like baseball players and shit like that, but, you know. Yeah, he stopped, he's just stopped being more vocal now. Like, at first, I didn't know what type of music he liked. I used to be hearing his ass playing crazy-ass rock star shit, like, you know, I got a temper problem, he got a temper problem. Mm. So when I used to hear the little rock star music, I was like, man, this little motherfucker gonna be trying to bust a motherfucker head open or something like this. <laughs> this rock star shit, you feel me? Now his favorite rapper, King Von, you uh -huh. feel me? The average kid's favorite rapper, you get what I'm saying? So, you know, you gotta watch that type of shit, bro. Like, mm. yeah, like, these my peers, but these my kids too at the same time. He I asked you about Von? I'm more, yeah, he asked me a lot about Von, you feel me? Like, now he older. Like, at first, when he was young, he didn't too much care. Like, he been knew Dirk was my boy, like, all that. Mm. He asked me, like, could you FaceTime Dirk for me? But, like, now he just be super, super laid back. Like, he be, you got to see him, man. He think he me for real. Like, he be super player. He always want to be fresh. He got a little swag. Like, he just want to, you know what I'm saying? He, I can tell. So, now, it's, it's certain shit that I be catching. Even though he ain't going to show me, I can see where he headed with it. Like, now, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I done caught him listening to instrumentals and trying to rap. Saying a little crazy shit, I'm just looking like, okay, this shit, the shit influenced the kids. Like, I like, regardless if it's negative or positive, like, 
it's a major influence and then when they see a motherfucker doing good from the city like you know what I'm saying people don't get that like to me a rap nigga is a rap nigga gang just probably with money but to another motherfucker a celebrity is a celebrity to them like mm. a motherfucker just motherfuckers passing out motherfuckers going crazy like before I even like I'd have been around so many rap niggas before I even got in the mix of any of that bro like I just look at I carry a motherfucker how they carry themselves. you know what I'm saying like you me What's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, yeah, you got you got fame. Like, I, like I told you, you asked me, did I did I care for that? Like, to back then, if I would have if I would have played my position better, I would have been more so a, a behind the scene on some entrepreneur shit and just onto the money instead of the fame and the money. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's so much shit that come with this fame, bro. Like, I tick easy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I gotta catch myself with a lot of shit because now I gotta know how to be professional, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't let everything piss me off or get under my skin, you get what I'm saying? I get so much shit, the, tr the troll and whatever, all that shit come with this fame, bro. Like, it's so much shit that a nigga be like, damn, man, this shit be making motherfuckers wanna lose their top. I can't show no motherfucker they getting under me to the point, point I'm crashing out. I'm too motherfucking old for that shit, bro. Like, certain shit, like, now I gotta learn how to take shit on the chin. Like, man, that's what come with this shit, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like your son, like, he'll get older and he'll end up watching an interview like this and he'll get the whole picture. He'll hear you talking about how you grew up a certain way and you thought a certain type of thing was important at see a certain how, point. Yeah, you just, just, just put that out there. That's it, it, it pays off. You know what I'm saying? It might would change his mindset, but prior to me not want to do nothing at all and just be stuck up in my ways, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker be like, man, a nigga probably don't never know what's on my mind. They probably don't know how I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? A lot of motherfuckers probably watch this interview and be like, damn, I'll fuck with Zoo now. Like, I ain't. Uh, you know, people be judge you off, they judge y'all. He think he too tough, or he this and he that. You get what I'm saying? Like, a motherfucker don't know how to judge you or, or come with you. So, like, I never cared, though. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's my my mentality. Like, I don't care what the next motherfucker think. Like, I don't, that shit don't be on my Like, I'm not trying to please nobody. I fuck who fuck with me. I love who love me. The motherfucker that be hating on me, I get on live and salute their ass, too. You feel me? Mm. Like, I piss them off. I be get, but every time I, I know they be tuned in, bro, because I could be on live high, just doing some little gilly shit, just tweaking on some. Oh, yeah, I'm finna tweak with a motherfucker and see if they gonna tweak back with me. You feel me? I had this in my head. I'm finna tweak with a motherfucker. See that? You a gap motherfucker. Man, don't let them get you out of character. You, hold on, pipe down. They ain't getting me out of character. I know what I'm doing. I'm tweaking. Like, I already made my mind up what I'm finna do. But then, the minute I'm talking some real shit, once I, once I get in mode to get to talking real shit, I get to seeing and calculating. And now everybody tuning in when I'm talking that real shit. I, I get on loud and talk that real shit every day. Excuse me. I'll be watching more motherfuckers tuning in. Like, yeah, I fuck with you, Rob. You a real nigga. I get a million DMs. Damn, that's the realest shit you ever said. You just changed my life, big bro. I'm glad. I be sometimes. I be happy to jump on your live. Like I get so many DMs and motherfuckers be tapping in with me. Like yeah, bro. Like I see shit. I acknowledge shit. But like me responding to everybody, that's how I respond to a lot of DMs, bro. Instead of me just opening up my DMs, acting like I'm too cocky to open up a DM on motherfucker fucking with me. Feel me? I go on live purposely so the fans that do be tuned in with me tapping in for real, I let them know I acknowledge them because without y'all, there won't be no me. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So. Some days I'll be bored. I'm on house arrest. I'm sitting in the crib, bro. I'm tapping, tapping in on my fans. But, you know, niggas be doing stupid shit. So I got to watch how I move with that shit, bro. But I ain't never been on no big head of shit. I, I feel like I'm too big to not talk, uh, interact with my fans. You know what I'm saying? I be I be reasonable on air level. You know what I'm saying? So for sure. That's why niggas fuck with me for real, for real, bro. You know? What's it like being on house arrest for that long? This shit hurt. The way they, the way they move with me now, bro. <laughs> the case ain't got nothing to do with me, gang. Like, the way they move with me, blood, like. They stopped and a lot of shit I got going on, man. I didn't had label meetings. I, the last time I was ever label meeting, like they they fucking with my situation and shit I got going on. If you remember, I told you I was out here for the uh, label meeting. Mm -hmm. They they gave me movement for the label meeting, but they wanted me to go to the studio and, and dinner while I was having a meeting. wasn't able to do like they they zoned me on house arrest in the hotel. You get what I'm saying? What the mm -hmm. fuck, y'all? Let me come to California for for a label meeting. What you think a label meeting consists of? You get what I'm saying? So. My legal situations be holding a lot of shit back, bro. And like, you know what I'm saying? My fans been waiting on me to drop. And this why I ain't dropped because of the shit that I'm going through right now, you know what I'm saying? As far as my legal situation. Like, I want to be able to get this shit to them authentic. I want to be able to put this shit in their face a lot, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with them how I want to fuck with them. So, is this shit almost over with. I'm, I'm finna start trial real, real soon. So, now I'm finna be back in mode and get them what they've been waiting on all this time, you know what I'm saying? Because they really been tapping in with me like, damn, bro, when you gonna drop? Damn, bro, when you gonna drop? I can only do so much on house arrest, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you know me? I want to move around. I don't want to just be sitting. Even though with content is content, like, I, I got to put something in their face. Like, they already know I'm on a band, so it ain't going to be like, oh, this video dry. He on house arrest. Y'all know what's going on with me already. I sit in the crib and get fresh as hell just for no reason <laughs> anyway. You know what I'm saying? Shoot like, pool and shit a lot, Yeah, right? like, I just be chilling in the crib, though. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like, 
I'm ready. I'm prepared for this shit, man. I'm finna get this shit in my all, you know what I'm saying? And, and satisfy everybody that's fucking with me, you know what I'm saying? You so you wasn't able to go on any of the little the dates for a little dirt concert or a tour that he just had? I was out I was on when I was on house arrest for the tour concert, I wasn't able to go. I only was, went to like three shows, you know what I'm saying? That was I snuck. But I was on I was on house arrest on Wright Street. Right Street, man, they ain't, you know, they ain't yeah. getting no fuck. Like, long if you ain't caught no new case, but the, 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 the house arrest I'm on now, if he was my co-defendant on this, in this county, I would have been my ass back in jail trying to sneak around. You get what I'm saying, bro? Like, mm. I wouldn't lie to you. About Dirk, what has it been like seeing him be able to, like, you know, change so many times in his career and basically, like, continue to just make his music better and better and get to the point that he's at now. That must have been pretty remarkable from, from your viewpoint because that's not really Say like... Say that one more time. Hold on. Say that one more time. <laughs> I'm getting too deep with it. Um, with Dirk, like just the way he's been able to progress so much and take his career to such an insane place. Like, you know, he started out as just a regular ass drill rapper and now he's like one of the biggest artists biggest. in the world. Well, what has that been like for you to witness that? And did you always think he had talent like that? I told him. I told him he was going to be bigger than big. Like, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I seen it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Dirk was consistent, bro. Like, I'm going to tell y'all this. Like, like I told y'all, D-Thang gets to me to bro, you know what I'm saying? So I was around a lot off camera, you know what I'm saying? Like as he when he when he was on the come up, when he was a local rapper, you know what I'm saying? I tell him, like, man, bro, you're gonna be big, you're gonna be big. So I used to just see, rest in peace, Chino. Chino, SB, D Thing, you know, back then, motherfuckers used to sell the, the, the iPhones, like they used to go get the iPhones off the numbers and shit and sell the iPhones. I watched them, bro. Work so hard and believe we all believe in them, bro. They used to sell the iPhones just to book his studio time. Sell them, sell them to the A-Rabs, the iPhones just to book his studio time. He in that bitch. Like, before he, of course, you stay in that bitch, you're going to get better and better. But at the same time, like, he had a passion for it. Like, you could tell when the motherfucker got passion for music, when the motherfucker just doing the shit just to be doing it on some lazy shit, you feel me? He used to be in that bitch rocking out. So I seen it, I told him, I always told him, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what's up. I said, Lou for who, you know what I'm saying? He know what it is. At the same time, though, bro, like, I really be just just looking like damn, like this shit. It, it's more shocking to me than anything. Like damn, I done watch this shit get big, big, big. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never had nobody that close that was just that big. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bro, then got big, big, big. Like I told you, he won the industry's favor. So like, yeah, yeah, that shit ain't nothing but motivation. You know what I'm saying? This shit can get done. All I'm gonna to do is stay stay consistent with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How often yeah. you and Dirt talk? Like, what's y'all relationship regular. like right now? I talk to bro. I talk to him on the regular. That's my brother. What, what yeah. do you think we had just talked about? Nah, I, I, I figure y'all probably locked in a lot. So how you feel about, uh? because it seemed like him and Lil Reese really ain't seeing eye to eye right now. Like, we don't really get to see <laughs> I them. I don't know they business game. But if you just see from the internet, we don't really get to see them hanging out like how we would want to. Or the fans. what type of relationship they have. They from the same block, gang. Like, that's something you got to ask Dirt and Lil Reese if you talking to them. I can't answer nobody questions. That's more so of me. Talking about it, that's what I told you I'm not gonna do. I can't talk about <laughs> another nigga, gang. Like, right. I ain't got gossip, but I ain't got it in me to do that, gang. Like, I can't talk about no nigga situations or if they fuck with each other, if they don't, or if I know they smoke up and they don't. Like, just because that's my homie or my peer, he ain't got to talk to me about whatever his relationship is with Reese, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever they got going on, they got going on. Now, if you was asking about my relationship with Reese, I'll tell you, he cool. I fuck with him, you feel me? Like, I don't, if you see smoke with another nigga, you feel me? That don't necessarily mean it's my smoke because I'm affiliate gang. I'm not no following ass nigga, homie. I do what the fuck I want to do when I want to do it. I dictate my own pace. So, like, you can't ask me about no nigga that I don't know nothing about, gang, because it's like you you, you show more saying, like, oh, if they don't fuck with each other, you don't fuck with them either. You feel me? Well, if he do this, you don't do that either. No, I, I dictate my own, my own, man, gang. It's a lot of fake love out here. Y'all know that, right? It's a lot of fake love out here. The reason I even asked that, because they say the black ball, like, I know you've seen Paparazzi Poe saying Dirk blackballed him and stuff. So it seemed like that's how I a lot of people. I don't even know who Paparazzi Poe is. Yeah. You hear me? So it couldn't be no blackballer. Blackball who? Paparazzi Poe? Who the fuck is that? I don't know what that uh, is. It's, a lot of people think that uh, if they had a relationship with Dirk first, like Drake, or, you know what I'm saying? Art, certain artists want to do music with certain people because they fuck with Drake. So that's where the black ball shit comes so from. So do y'all blame the artist or do y'all blame the person that they dealing with? So you mean to tell me, say you Drake, say you Dirk, you feel me? If you choose not to do no music because you got a relationship with Drake, do you necessarily got to feel like you told him not to do it with him or he probably on some? Man, I fuck with fool and he into it with him, so I ain't gonna do it. Why I can't be on his? Why I can't be on his time? Why? Why the finger always got to get pointed at you? You get what I'm saying? Like 
How you know how this shit go, gang? No, nah, but that's one thing the GDs always complain yeah, about. That's all, the GDs always know, say that the, the that hey, they I get blocked from all these opportunities because of the BDs. Thing, though, I know you're you're not there. It ain't about no GD or no BD shit. Right, Let me yeah. tell you one thing. Guess what you can't do? Guess what you can't do? Deny talent. Right. True. You hear me? So if a nigga had that much faith in himself, he wouldn't be screaming another man blackballing him because you know, like I know. Selling a motherfucker is just like selling drugs. You feel me? If I know you're going to make me this much amount of money, gang, ain't shit you could tell me to stop me from getting my bag on him. Mm. You, he, he tell, if he tell me that your coke, we can sell his coke better, and I tried your coke myself, and seeing that your shit better than he is, you think I'm going to listen to what he telling me and I tried it? <laughs> How can, it's the same thing. That's like selling drugs. Right. A musician is a musician. You can't deny talent, gang, so... I couldn't consider a motherfucker just verbally saying a motherfucker blackball because they feel like they ain't making no well. Like, a lot of people ain't making no well. It's talent. It's pure talent. That's harder than a lot of niggas that y'all be naming and asking me, do I fuck with, gang? And I know hard them. I know it be bigger than them. You feel me? But at the same time, a nigga got to get this shit out the mud, folks. It ain't nothing going to be like getting out the mud by yourself. You feel me? It's cool to get a, a, little, a little curb yeah, or an arm reach, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. But when you're your own boss, when you got a mentality of, of, of being yourself, have the mentality I have of myself, Dirk, my brother, gang, if he wanna, if he wanna reach and open up the doors for a motherfucker, he could do so. You feel me? But at the same time, like, it's gonna feel better with me for like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I, I can capitalize like this, you know what I'm saying, and do what I do, gang. Like, you know what I'm saying? I respect everything he got going on. He don't owe me nothing but loyalty at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? That's what these niggas be having shit mixed up at. Like, he ain't got to talk to no lady with, oh, yeah, fuck with him or don't fuck with him. You get know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm sure he got good shit to say whenever that dude motherfucker do speak on the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, ain't nothing like that's This go back to me telling y'all when I used to rob motherfuckers, I used to do what I do. I fucked the paper up so fast because why? I ain't gonna appreciate it because I took it. You know what I'm saying? If I work hard for it, you don't think I'm gonna appreciate my money better? Right. For the record, I don't think Dirk ever had to tell Drake, don't do a song with Youngboy. That's all I'm telling y'all. I think Drake is a student of the game, and he knows exactly how people are going to perceive him, and he doesn't want to look like somebody who's fucking with Dirk and then fucking with somebody that doesn't get along with Dirk right away. You know, that's he's too smart to think that that's like a good look for him. So I, I highly doubt Dirk ever had to have that conversation with him because Dirk, Dirk's not going to tell Drake what to do. That's what I'm saying. You so know? y'all thinking the music Drake. game, y'all thinking the music game, Y'all think that's really what we really be going on though? Like other other uh, rappers don't be want to fuck with them because they fuck with them. You think it's a pick and choose thing with the rap game now? I think some people might be like that, but I think the Drake. I know a lot of musicians. I know a lot of musicians fuck who the fuck they fuck with and say they new to the situation. Like I right. sure baby make a lot of music. Who the fuck he want to make music with? You feel me? Like he ain't don't mix me in that shit, nigga. I'm I'm in this shit for the money. Don't mix me in that. Don't rap beats none of that shit. You get what I'm saying? Like the industry did. Like the industry now. The rap beef more taking toll of the streets than what it was back then with T.I. was beefing with Gucci Man or T.I. was beefing, I mean, Gucci Man was beefing with G's. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. the, the, the rap industry now, for real, is a bunch of fuck shit going on. Like, all that shit about to me, gang. But at the same time, like, I feel like niggas gotta, niggas gotta catch a certain wave or, or hold a few dicks to get on, gang. That's what, that's what the industry is to me, gang. Like, if you ain't already locked in, who you locked in with it, doing what you got doing, it's gonna be hard. Do you have unreleased you music with Dirk? Yeah, most definitely. Really? Do will we ever I get got, to hear it? I got I got unreleased music with Dirk. I got unreleased music with Vaughn. You feel me? You play me some shit. They go crazy. I got some. I got some crack blood, but you know what I'm saying. Like I, I I put a time on everything that I got going on. One of my projects that I'm working on, I'm still trying to figure out what's how, how the shit gonna go. Like you know what I'm saying. Everything gotta be great timing. You get what I'm saying? So. Mm. Y'all definitely could be looking forward to, you know what I'm saying, me with, with other artists. And, like, my fans wanted to know, do I got big artists on my project? Yeah, I fuck with I got relationships with, with major artists. Like, I got my own relationships that I done built with certain artists. 21 Savage, you feel me? Pooh Shiesty, Moneybag, yo, you feel me? Big 30. I, I big 30, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got, I got relationships, 42 Duh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know major people like everybody with my own relationships that I done built on my own gang, but I ain't never been the type of nigga that be want to run up on, on the motherfucker. Oh, yeah, you will jump on this with me, you will do this. Like, I want to see how I'm coming off the muscle first because it's my first project, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, a couple features might be cool, gang, but I want to see I want to see what my work ethic do, like how, how hard a motherfucker going to fuck with me without no major features right now. And then later on, shit like that can, can fall in play. But for my first project, though, I'd I rather 
deal with the, the, my team and help build my team up. You know what I'm saying? What we got going on and, and start from scratch and show them that we got this bitch on our back for real. Cause this, we supposed to bend, knock this motherfucker down and step through this motherfucker for real, for real. You feel me? Like, that's how I'm coming. Like, you got like a release day or when you plan on dropping it or? Man. Coming soon. You feel me? That's all you need to know. Coming soon. I ain't going to drop no dates. I ain't going to. You think you're getting off house arrest soon? Most definitely. That's when everything going to open up for a motherfucker. Everything motherfucker been waiting on. I'm going to be off house very, very, very soon. But that's all I was really worried about, my legal situations, man. I ain't want to do nothing so much to incriminate or them try to use against me. Because like I told y'all, I got 400 and some page discovery. With my social media, I only have Instagram. I don't have Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook. So if they looking at somebody else's fake accounts, that's cool with me. Mm. Ain't no email logged into them accounts on my name. So like, but they got four hundred some pages on my social media, like dealing with my case right now. So like, I was just, I really gotta watch how I move right now while I'm fighting this case, and that's why I ain't really did a lot of shit. I don't want them to use no old song I probably did that I fuck with that I'm dropping now and to try to use that against me like some shit that like shit be happening like that. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So. Once I'm done with my legal situation, though, y'all finna, y'all, it's going to get greater later for sure, man. I ain't going to lie to y'all, man. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty remarkable just that you've been able to, like, make that many relationships happen in the music game and stuff, given that you were locked up for so long, and then that you also have been, like, unable to leave your fucking house for the most part. Like, that's pretty crazy. Like, how, do you, how did you actually meet Big 30? Uh... I, I introduced Thirty and Shy to the Dirt. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? Man, How'd you man, know that? Man, Duty Low, uh, OTL Duty Low. Yeah. You know we uh, shout out Duty Low. Yeah. Uh, we record. We recorded it at the studio called First Class. Now hell, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Shiesty, like back money bag yo used to be in a in a in a in a, in a Lambo room. Me and Duty would be in a white room or the Ferrari room. You feel me? And Push Ice the and all they little crowd, all they little people from Memphis used to be in another room, you know what I'm saying? So we all recorded at the same studio. So I had locked in with them and shit. Man, Duty had locked in with them one, and went in a session with them one day. We was just in a vibe and catching the vibe with them. And yeah, since then, like, every time we pop up there, they are coming to our sessions, we are coming to their sessions while we recording shit back and forth, you feel me? So you were there when they made Back in Blood? Yeah. What was absolutely. the vibe like? I ain't gonna lie, Dirk ain't even like that back in blood. I ain't for that motherfucker to do two hundred something million. Like <laughs> Dirk didn't know, like he he wanted to change his whole verse on there. Really? Yeah, Duty like man, come check it out. Uh, I want I want to introduce you to Shice Life. My people push Shice them and shit. So we uh we all go in there and shit. You feel me? And you know it's like my just listening to instrumental. My fuck just vibing. She is Shice, You know what I'm saying? Shice jump on that bitch, do his thing, gonna fold up. Dirk Allen is busy, lost the top shit. That's how that shit went. That's how it be. But it be the songs that the motherfucker don't be knowing that's gonna do something. They end up doing something. That bitch turned out to be one of the hardest songs. Like you feel me? Classic. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you remember uh, where you were at when you found out about Vaughn passing? I was with, I was with Vaughn earlier that night before he passed. Really? Yeah. On but, tour with him, or what did you have going no, on? No, I went to the Vaughn had an album release party out here in Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Uh, I forgot the name of the club, bro. But. The, the world ain't know this, and I ain't really broadcasting because me and Vaughn was never supposed to be around each other anyway. Like I told y'all, before he passed away, we just died back. Like, we like, fuck that shit. Like, man, them people ain't on us. You feel me? Like, and he had an album release party that I had attended, you know what I'm saying? So, from my knowledge, Vaughn was, uh, after the album release party, he's supposed to went to the Airbnb. I have no knowledge of why or uh, who influenced. It was top birthday, too, at the same time. Mm. So, I don't, have no, I don't got no knowledge on who influenced them to go to the other club. I know he was how to peel for sure, for sure. But it was very... Like he was whispering in my ear, tech, like, he man, he man, this bitch got me for, like, I'm high as hell, he man. Really? He don't, oh, he don't, he don't kill this bitch, got me, but I'm good, though. You feel me? Like, he loved, like he was enjoying this high, you feel me? But this was at the album release party. I forgot the name of the club. I ain't familiar with the clubs down here. But, uh, you know, as we was leaving out, he hopped in a, in a, in a Bulletproof and, and, and shot off. He had texted me, like, he like, we all finna meet up at the Airbnb. Mm. So that's that was the last thing I said. That me and all my guys that was in the car I was in went to the Waffle House. You know, I smoked cigarettes, bro. I'm, I'm, we had the Waffle House ordering something to eat. So I'm thinking they finna go to Airbnb. So we had the Waffle House. But you know, while, they, while the guys ordering their food, I'm outside smoking a cigarette in my phone and shit. I'm on my phone and shit on my door. I hear every shot. Like, I hear that bitch sound like Wild Wild West, gang. But this crazy part is, like, I felt it, but I didn't feel it. But I just knew it was the guys. Like, I, something told me, like, 
that got to be folding. I'm like, it's late as hell. We just left the club. You feel me? Like, Vaughn, I'm in the bulletproof. So I'm like, Vaughn, good. You feel me? Got security and the bulletproof, but I'm smoking a cigarette outside the Waffle House. It's right there by the, uh, by the college and shit. We was at the Waffle House by the college. I hear all the shots going on. That bitch is just going off nonstop. Different guns. Don't hear this shit. So I open up the door of the Waffle House. I'm, boy, y'all don't hear all that shots, boy? I made mean, photo masks get in the bank out or something. You feel me? So no shit stank on my daughter, boy. Like, probably, like, bro, them still waiting on their food while we calling around. Ain't nobody answering their phone on my kids. I guess all the episodes was going on then. And, uh, <clears throat> when my grandma, like, all the guys, I tell them, like, man, I swear to God, man, I just heard a lot of shots. Boy, y'all last tweaking. Y'all ain't just hitting on them shots while y'all was in the waffle. They hell no. Nah. Boy, I ain't tweaking. No, I'm like, man, call, call, call the guy's phone. So, as we talking, and they calling the phone, probably, like, within eight minutes after I hit the shots, and we talking about the shit, Vaughn Hellcat fly past the Waffle House, bro. But they been rolled past and went and did what they did. But it's Charles to fly past the Waffle House and blow the red light. When they ran the red light, I knew what was going on. I'm like, damn, I'm like that was just Vaughn. Y'all didn't see Vaughn Charles? They on the guys, that was just Vaughn Charles. His Hellcat fly, run past the red light the whole time, bro. A shot. They were trying to get him to the hospital, you feel me? They blew the red light and rolled past us. I'm like, damn, that shit just fucked me up, you feel me? They wouldn't let nobody come to the hospital, none of that shit on phone. I'm in the crib, man. I got this shit like 7 in the morning. Motherfucker called me with that shit. That shit was just crazy. I ain't gonna lie. That shit fucked the motherfucker up, though. That was my dog, man. Like, shit just be having it so fast and quick of eye, you feel? But I know that was top birthday for sure, for sure, though. Right. So, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know how they end up at Chic. And he, that ain't even where the album release party was at. We was at a whole nother club before Chic, like. Right. And that's it. Like, once I seen the videos, it looked like they was getting out for to go in that motherfucker. Well, it's because they Unless knew. Unless they was riding past. He went there because they knew that Quan Durano was going to be there, right? No, hell no. No? Hell no. So it was just a coincidence that they ended up in the same place? When I woke him up out of sleep, if that was if he knew dude was there, why was he asleep? Like, but I think they, they said that he was sleeping and then like somebody said, yo, that dude's here. Right, like, they woke him up after they saw him there, but I don't, I, I, me having no oh, knowledge, okay. I don't think, hell no, I don't think he knew he went that knowing. Right. Vaughn would have been on a whole different type of time if he knew he was on a motherfucker's ass. Like, right. that shit just had, like, they, they woke him up out of sleep and told him that shit. Like, that's just that. Like, I ain't speaking on, on blood in them situations either, though. You know what I'm saying? But that ain't that ain't what it was. You know, the media going to say what the media going to say anyway, though. But Well, that does make sense if he yeah, just no. found out in that moment. Because that was everybody was kind of shocked by the fact that he would go there and just. Yeah, you could tell the way everybody was walking up and the way he was rushing, like a motherfucker just tapped him and told him, like, man, dude, right here, you feel me? Like, you could yeah. tell the whole thing. Like, you can see you peep it out for yourself. Like, you knowing Vaughn and knowing what type of time Vaughn be on. That's what it is, man. You feel me? But. Yeah, rest in peace. So, just so you know, while we were doing this interview, Trap Lil Ross put out a six-hour documentary about Young Boy. A six-hour? <laughs> yeah, you gonna watch that? I mean, I wasn't, no, I wasn't a fan of uh, when I heard Vaughn shit. Like, I did you watch that whole thing? The whole thing. What'd you think? It was interesting. I'm not gonna say it in a lot of y'all. You know what I'm saying? It was really, really interesting. But mm -hmm. like, a lot of that shit cap. But you know, they gonna say that I'm taking enough of Vaughn because that's my brother. You feel me? But a lot of that shit was cap, but the way he put it together, bro, he 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 a wise he a wise dude. Right. Trap Lord Ross, that's his name. Yeah. yeah. Trap Ross. Well, but I, shout out to him, man, for even sitting doing any type of content, and he he, you know what I'm saying? Vaughn already had the eye on him, so it is what it is. But like he for him to put that shit together like that, I literally sat in the crib. You're saying Vaughn day, already boy. knew about him? No, I say Vaughn already had this cloud and oh, the yeah, buzz, yeah. Or whatever. So like I'm sure a lot of motherfuckers would have tuned in anyway, but. For him to put it together, how he put it together, and with himself, no production team, no nothing, he did his tingy thing. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, oh, his thingy thing. He did, yeah, thingy oh, thing, okay. tingy yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Am I, am I you use both? Like, yeah. I think I think Traveler <laughs> Ross said someone on Vaughn's team actually hit him up and told him to remove something from the Probably did. I'm sure they did. It like, was the chaos shit. Yeah, but that shit all cap. Like, man, the way they making the same, like the, the police coming up with all type of evidence and this and that and third, man. That's the same thing like I spoke on y'all when I talked about our case, man. If they had anything on us as far as evidence for us being as big as we is already, they would have been thirsty to try to set us down, man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's what I want the public I to stop paying attention to. Stop always going off what y'all see on YouTube just because the shit sound and look good, man. If them people had any type of evidence to indict a motherfucker, Vaughn was alive a whole year prior to him passing away. 
So if they had enough evidence to indict him, they would have indicted him already. Trust and believe that. I mean, they they did say they were trying to indict him on the FBG Duck case, and I know you've seen the. the I mean, that article. shit, all that shit be capped, bro. You know, like with the Duck case, they tried to say he passed out a hundred thousand to the old when it first came out. That's what the, that's what the saying was until they did they research and seen that he passed a hundred thousand out before Duck even passed away. Hmm. So now they trying to use the jury as an excuse. Like man, they just using shit, man, just to use it, like. I see they put Dirk. Dirk don't got nothing to do with none of that shit, bro. Like, they putting his name in the midst saying that his brother, whatever, like, whatever y'all heard a motherfucker say over the phone about Call D thing, they don't necessarily put Dirk on the case. Like, with us, we big. A lot of motherfuckers be hating already, man. And they be looking at the eye like, all right, we can't get Vaughn. Y'all not finna go to no castle and arrest him. So, like, what y'all gonna try to do next? You get what I'm saying? Like, when y'all say, tell me they say, when y'all say they say, man, it's the same shit y'all looking on YouTube, too. It's just because y'all bloggers, y'all do what y'all do, don't mean y'all pay attention. But half of that shit, man, don't be facts about nobody, bro. Like, me knowing my circle and me being around, bro, like, I'm not saying nobody no angels, but, like, the internet is the last thing I'm going to believe, man, until I see the, 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 the DA put this shit out there or they they going on the internet and, and, and doing a podcast or sitting on a, on a post saying, oh, well, we got such and such on this and we got such and such on that. Anything that come from a blogger or anybody, bro, that's the least I'm gonna do on a believable side. So like, yeah, like you said, they say, they say a lot of shit, bro. You feel me? I, I, you said something about you being around Duck during that funeral or whatever, but- oh, I wasn't around, I was arrested when uh, you saw oh, Raheem oh, funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I was arrested, I was locked up. I had, I had actually called the day of the funeral, you know. But got, did you, know did you have any me, other me, kind me, of Raheem mama like I was you know what I'm saying being a support system and making sure her head was on oh, wow. right and that's when I had they had told me like Duck and his family was there and I had got on the phone with a few of my guys like man I don't get no fuck what's going on or what nobody got going on shit better not happen on the watch and y'all better have the utmost respect for Tiffany you know what I'm saying like I don't want to hear that shit like oh whatever it is Duck family say he was gonna be there regardless. He's gonna do what he's gonna do regardless because that's his family. They fa they real family oriented. You feel me? So mm -hmm. like, whatever was gonna happen was gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like a lot of shit when it comes to these street beefs, I leave myself out of. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's certain situations going on. You know what I'm saying? Like one of Duck cousins is from our block. You know what I'm saying? One of his older cousins. So he used to call me when certain shit used to be going on. I used to tell him like, man, I ain't got no control over that. Like, you don't even hit me with that shit. Like. I don't want to talk about that shit. I can't squash whatever going on with any other block. You know, it's a mutual respect we have for each other when he reached out to me, you know what I'm saying? Because he already know, like, ah, yeah, Zoo, a phase of a voice, but at the same time, he can only say so much, you know what I'm saying? When shit get deep and blood get on this shit, man, I just be really just be trying to leave myself out of shit that ain't got nothing to do with me, you know what I'm saying? It don't consist of me and mine, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they going to paint their picture how they paint their picture, you know what I'm saying? Like. They are, to me, I feel like they just trying to tie everybody to some shit and just try to make it be something that it's not, you know what I'm saying? If they could, which I'm blessed, I'm happy. A lot of shit that be going on that I was arrested, that I was on house arrest, you get what I'm saying? Cause my name will be in the gutter with so much shit, bro, just for the simple fact who I am and who I associate myself with, you get what I'm saying? So like, shit be a gift and a curse, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's stopping me uh, for, 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 for really making a lot of money. I done missed out on a lot of money being on the band, but at the same time, like me being on the band, to save me from a lot of shit, you get what I'm saying? Because I know I probably would have been around or been involved, you get what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about the duck case, I'm just talking about in general, like, when it comes to the streets, you know what I'm saying? I played my part in the streets, and that's why I'm on some some different shit now, like, I sit here and see this shit for what it was, you know what I'm saying? You don't gain a lot out of this shit, but you lose a lot, you get what I'm saying? When it comes to this street shit, bro, like, yeah, like I told you, once upon a time, I die and go to jail for this shit, man. This shit ain't what it used to be no more, like, a lot of this shit ain't worth it. Niggas don't be on what they claim to be on. Everybody want to be that nigga. Everybody want to be these sliders. Everybody want to be this. Y'all chase that shit. I'm gonna. Y'all can have it. You feel me? I see all my fans right now call me Uncle Zoo. You hear me? I'm considered an OG, regardless of my age difference. A lot of motherfuckers call me old head. I ain't old head, gang. I I'm see still, Dirk call you Uncle. I'm still young as hell. I tell him call me Uncle Zoo. I ain't see Dirk call me Uncle Zoo. It was like a lie. Like, he was like, what up, Uncle? Or someone like He probably hear me telling all my fans call me Uncle Zoo now. Yeah. You feel me? Like In the drill world, if you make it to 33, you're kind of like an old head, though, which is kind of sick. Most definitely, but to me, I'm not old. Like, to them, I'm all, they consider me old. Like, I'm, they, be, they be all in the comments. Are you knocking on 40? I ain't nobody near knocking on 40. You feel mm -hmm. me? But we'll be happy. I definitely will be happy, too. Be 
It's a lot of niggas ain't make it to see my age. A lot of niggas ain't make it for pr they first prom. Right. A lot of niggas ain't make it to make their first child. You get what I'm saying? So it's a blessing for me to be getting called an old head or whatever they want to call me. I'm happy. I'm I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, like yeah. The, no, that's I'm, an honor. I'm not yeah, offended by no motherfucker yeah. calling me no old head. Like niggas don't make it in my city, bro. Like for real, for real. Niggas don't make it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing something right. So I I I'll take that on the chin and accept that on, on any given day. You know what I'm saying? Inshallah, like. I'm doing what I'm doing and go continue to do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, the best. I just seen the best get took out this shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? So that don't make me no king because I know how to dodge the streets or I know how to dodge getting locked up. You get what I'm saying? Like, man, there's a lot of real niggas in the grave site. You feel me? There's a lot of the real niggas behind them walls, man, that's wishing they got the opportunity that I got. You get what I'm saying? Like, a lot of niggas be screaming, free they niggas and free this and free that. I ain't standing on no business, you know what I'm saying? I ain't taking care of the guy's kids that's 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 still alive. Like, they kids here and they father's gone, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's that play a part what make these youth jump out in the streets because they don't be having both parents at home. So, like, anything I can do to try to I, – all right, that giving back shit cool, you know what I'm saying, giving back to the community, you know what I'm saying, because you fucking communities up. But let's do something bigger. Let's, let's, let's start doing boxing tournaments and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like – Let's 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 put our bread all into the same shit and have the youth fighting and knowing that you ain't gotta pick up a gun all the time. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of gyms out here with these free open gyms that we can do the train that hire some trainers. Get the get the little youth in the glove, get the, the females in the jump rope contest, you know what I'm saying? Teach them how to ride bikes. Like I ain't seen bikes since my generation, you know what I'm saying? But I'm glad the bike era is over with in Chicago like that for the youth. You know what I'm saying? Cause back then, Trick bikes with with, with with mag wheels and stun ups, that shit was exciting us. That was our Bentleys and Rolls Royces and shit. You feel me? And we used to jump on motherfuckers, still they packs, still they mag wheels. You get what I'm saying? Like we <laughs> bad as hell. So this generation now it'll be ugly. Trust me. Like with the with the my son eleven, I buy him a bike. Uh, everybody ain't got no bike, so I buy him a raw ass bike. He gonna have to learn how to fight. But at the same time, these little motherfuckers playing with guns now. Mm. So I wouldn't want to risk lo my son losing his life over, over a bike. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm, I'm kind of glad the bike generation over, but we had a lot of different shit to do when we was younger. You get what I'm saying? They don't. How you feel about, the, about like, the switches in Chicago, like, changing the culture, like, the drill scene? It make everybody feel like they a killer. I, I, I hate it that they made them, because these niggas, like, all you got to do is just add a, 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 a few inches, a, a seconds of a, a pressure on a gun, and that bitch shoot 30 shots. You hit them, there 15 motherfuckers. You ain't even try to hit. You just throwing a gun. You ain't, I ain't like... That shit terrible. Like when they when they made that, that shit changed the world. Like I told y'all early in the interview, my my favorite gun was a three fifty seven revolver. You get what I'm saying? Like different era. six shots was good with me. Like I I took my hat off to me having that motherfucker. I I ain't with that bitch. You feel me? Like I ain't a nigga playing with a thirty gang and, and a fifty shot and a hundred shot. They got fully ARs, fully Glocks, fully everything. You feel me? That shit different now. Like that's a lot of senseless killing going on with that type of shit, man. Like. No matter how hard are they trying to get them off the street, the more they they probably got some type of 3D printers or something that's printing them bitches out. They took them off the markets for all the black webs that motherfuckers buying them on. They still hitting the streets. So, like, hmm. it's all, that's like all the guns. I don't give a fuck if they start turning the guns in right now today, blood. Like, it's like it's always going to be guns touching the streets. Like, they put, somebody putting these motherfuckers here for us to kill each other. You know what I'm saying? That's Especially how I look at the, it. With the 3D printing, being able to order shit off the dark web. Man, it's like them dark webs, over, man. Over. They, them, them people doing all type of shit, man. Them white boys, raw as hell with that shit, man. They making a killing off of it. They ain't going to never stop. As long as the money coming in, they ain't going to You ever get anything shit. off the dark web back in the day? I don't even know what the fuck a dark web is. I just hear about it. You hear me? <laughs> I've never been a computer a geek or none of that shit. Like, I've never been on it either. But I watch some YouTube videos of people going on to it. And like, yeah. so you can just order whatever on there. Yeah, I'd be, so, be too scared to even... Ah, that type of shit in my search box on my phone. You yeah, know? you don't like, want to mess with that. I don't want to look. I'm not even no dark web, nothing that, 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 that I can log on my phone and then people can grab my phone and see that I searched this type of shit up. Like, I don't want to be... Uh. Did you see recently where they said that the police might have actually killed Vaughn or had the fatal shots? No, I didn't see that at all. I, I pay attention to the internet, but I don't pay attention to the internet game. Like, I don't, like all that miscellaneous shit, I don't, I don't waste my time watching that shit. Well, that's why Lil Tim's charges got dropped, just because they said that the cop's bullets were actually what did it. Which is, that's what they saying. That's what they're saying. I mean, they, like... Kind of hard to imagine. But. With the video, don't nobody know. Everybody gave their perspective of the video on, and try to judge the video off of what they seen, what they asked. But if they knew how many guns was going off, ain't no telling what nobody would have did in that situation. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Like, a lot of people judge mental on 
seeing people running like Lily Von Bodyguard. I could tell it was so many guns. Von Bodyguard ran and he was right there next to Von. You know what I'm saying? He's armed and equipped to have this type of shit on him. Like this is what you you claim you uh go to target practice and you, you know what I'm saying, the, for your opponent, your target, whoever it is. You get paid to protect Von. You know what I'm saying? You ran. The video clear as day, his bodyguard ran on him. Vaughn was in the bulletproof and had a potty guard right there literally next to him that ran. So ain't no telling how many guns was going off and where the guns were coming from. They say the police was shooting. They say other people were shooting. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I wasn't there, gang. I just heard. What I, what I heard, when I was at the Waffle House gang, I heard a lot of big shit going off. So ain't no telling how the same was. Ain't no telling how them niggas really reacted because a bodyguard could say they ready to protect you at any given time, but they never been in the field with no street niggas shooting at each other. You know what I'm saying? Y'all probably shooting at targets. Yeah, that's cool. That motherfucker standing still. You know what I'm saying? You don't know how to act when you, when 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 a fire coming to you though. You know what I'm saying? You ain't you ain't got a quick reflex. Clearly it shows. You feel me? He got fired right after that. But at the same time, my brother lost his life in your hands, putting his life in your hands. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't wish jail upon no motherfucker. Like, good shit he beat the case. You get what I'm saying? I don't want jail on no motherfucker game. But how, how what's self defense about that? You tell me. You feel like that was self defense? I mean, Honestly, no, I want y'all honest nah, opinion because so I see the internet saying that self-defense. Okay. Self-defense, it, it he got to oppose a threat to you. Vaughn was fighting him bare arms, gang. Vaughn was fighting Lutz him. You was in a vehicle. I mean, Vaughn was fighting Quan, though. You was in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. How is that self-defense? That's why I say that's the media giving their perspective. Mm -hmm. Self-defense wouldn't be Lutz him hopping out of the car protecting his guy because he getting jumped or whooped one-on-one -on -one regardless. Right. So, Vaughn didn't pose no threat to you with no weapon, no fast, no form. So how could it possibly be for self-defense? That's why I don't believe the media. That's what the media is saying. Oh, he beat it because of self-defense. Ain't no telling why he beat that case, man. You, the, 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 the justice system hate Vaughn, gang. They hate me, gang. So I know how this shit go like. Everybody beating their case clearly, you feel me? I hope thug never come from under their shit, shit. Like, I don't, I don't want nobody in jail, gang. Like, that ain't never been my type of time in any way, like. A lot of niggas got their opinions. Oh, yeah, he should have got booked. He should have got this. That's good he beat his shit, man. You feel me? That's good he beat his shit. Like, who the fuck want to see a motherfucker in jail just because we lost our homie to that shit? That you ain't no real nigga if you claiming you in the streets. Like, why you want to see a motherfucker in jail? Why you want to see a motherfucker get wrapped up for some shit? Like, mm. what's going to happen going to happen. You get what I'm saying? Like, we know this shit already, bro. Like, but the... the I never heard that part where you said they said the police shot fired the the, uh, the fatal shot, mm. and I didn't. It, the, the, it's a video clearly showing what happened for real, but I don't know what grounds did he beat the shit on them. I fought a murder, so I I got to see what premeditated meant. I got to see beyond reasonable doubt. I got to see what all that type of shit mean. You know what I'm saying? Because I came from under of it. So like, in my in my jail from that footage in Chicago, Georgia got their own laws. You know what I'm saying? But for Chicago. It definitely would have fell under the self defense grounds. You know what I'm saying? You was in a vehicle park. Was you ever like a fan of NBA Youngboy music? Because I mean, I seen a video like one time. Most definitely was. No flaws. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people was a fan of NBA Youngboy music. You know what I'm saying? That's how this shit go, gang. My ops used to be cool before they was my ops. Like, I definitely fucked with homie music. You know what I'm saying back then, but. This shit turned around. It is what it is. Like, I don't, I don't, beef is beef, gang. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't finna go broadcast on social media. I'm into it with no motherfucker. Motherfucker know what it is already. Like, I don't gotta talk about that type of shit when it comes to the media. Like, oh, yeah, I'm into it with NBA Young Boy. I'm into it with Quando Rondo. I'm into it. Ooh, you feel me? Like, half of these niggas ain't into it. You get what I'm saying? Wars in Chicago right now, it started over pussy. And niggas just inherit the beef for they blocks, not even knowing it's over pussy. You get what I'm saying? Mm. I look at the Vaughn situation like a recycle, a repeated Tupac and Biggie situation. You feel me? I literally do. Like, history do be repeating itself. You get what I'm saying? Like, don't nobody know but Vaughn what the actual facts was or why they was into it. The, the niggas can have their own perspective on what they want to have their perspective on. Nobody know for real what went down with blood. You feel me? So... He talked to who he talked to about that situation. You know, I done heard stories. He said he was whooping either one of them on camera regardless of where he saw him at anyway. His attention wasn't ever was to kill nobody. Like, you feel me? Wherever he see him at, he said he was <clears> whooping <throat> them, embarrassing them, showing them they little boys. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens. Like, you know, y'all see the footage getting legal Vaughn right now, scratching off on shit. That's what blood always did. You feel me? Like, you think the reputation of Chicago people in general is why that situation escalated? Cause you know people, everybody. No, I don't. Cause I don't think like I don't. To me, dude, 
only shot he shot was a scary ass shot anyway. Like it wasn't no gangster shit. Like what nothing gangster about that. You gonna have the dick sucker saying what they want to say. Oh yeah, he did. He did him. Vaughn should never thought he was tough. Whatever. What, what what I witnessed wasn't nothing tough either. You ain't do no gang shit, nigga. You ain't hit no motherfucker stand over him. You ain't stand on no business. You hopped out that motherfucker and shot one time, nigga. You feel me? If you lucked up, you luck. Whatever you did, like wasn't nothing gangster about it. Like niggas running with that shit. You get what I'm saying? Like that's how that shit go. Like they oh they mad because they they lost somebody. They, what, what if the shit was on the other foot? Shit happens. Whatever gonna happen, gonna happen. That's what come with these streets. Niggas gotta accept what come with these streets, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like we know this shit, bro. Like. It ain't too much to talk about. Ain't nothing to talk about. You get what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't no friendly shit. Like it is what it is. Like that's what that's what it is. You I, know what I'm saying? I seen you big up Muwap on how he handled the situation. Like you know what I'm saying? I think I seen you say something. You seen me what? Big up Muwap, or it could have been you. When you seen me big up Muwap? On IG was it? it when you seen me on IG, big up Muwap. I thought you just, I could have sworn I seen you say that. You just saying something, trying to throw something out of the cash. Yeah, just give it to me how you want to give it to me before you say you say anything. Did you, you big up How do you feel about I Muwap? I salute Muwap. Yeah, Because there was a lot of fires going, it was a lot of fire going off in the situation that he handled that motherfucker. He ain't leave his brother's side. I definitely salute Muwap. Ain't no question. A lot of niggas ain't got the heart to do that. When, gun, when bullets flying and you don't know where they coming from, you feel me? He ran off, came right back. He trying to protect himself with no gun at the same time. He not leaving his brother. I definitely big up Muwap, but you didn't see me big, big up Muwap. You don't see me talk about nobody's situation, so I know you ain't see that, but if that's what you want to ask, all you had to do is just lay it on me. I would have laid it on you. <laughs> Maybe a lot of shit ran in there. You, got, you, got, you, ring, you got, got a ring. You got a ring. for you. Well, though, yeah, huh? I got a fan question real quick. Can we just do this one? There was an old Chief Keef song where he said, run up on four six, leave him flat dead. What did that mean? Or why, why would there be any conflict there? Man, I don't, the, the, the media took that, what they took it ass, man. I don't think Chief Keith was dissing us, man. Like, really? no, nah, he wasn't dissing us. He was saying, run up on Brody, you're going to get your ass flatlined. You feel me? They oh, took okay. it. They took it how they took it because uh, Chief Keith was in tour with uh, Fetty Wild once upon a time. Really? And he was saying, pull up on the zoo, zoo, who the fuck is you, nigga? You know, Fetty Wild was calling himself Zoo Crew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he said, I'm going to blow New Jersey up. So when he made that, Beneath those song, the fans felt like he was saying, oh, yeah, you stretch it for six. Who out the band? It was a little fake, little back and forth shit, man. So before, but he wasn't dissing us. We weren't dissing him. Like, we don't, that's the internet shit. You feel me? The internet takes shit around with it. Like, well, I never knew that when he said Zoo Infinito that, it, yeah, that he was no, that, that. They, they blew it out of a porch. Like, a lot of the fans back when he said that, they thought he was talking about me. Like, personally, Sosa fucked with all my, my, my younger guys. I never had no relationship with Sosa ever. So how could he be talking to me? He don't even know me. I don't know him. You get what I'm saying? Right. I fucked with Sosa music. Still listen to Sosa music. It ain't shit. Like, they just be capping on the internet. They run what they run. You feel me? Right. Well, there was another. I said some shit like when a motherfucker, when they was blowing out of proportion, I did say some little slick shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? They ran with it. That's all it was because I let the fans back then, I ain't know how to catch shit. I let the fans get in my head and knowing that he had a relationship with a couple of my little guys anyway, you get what I'm saying? Fans get in my head, made me feel like he was saying it like that. I said something back and it's, that's what made them feel like it was smoke. It wasn't ever no smoke without But there, there was a THF Billet interview where he basically confirmed that that was a diss towards THF and that Billa, probably made people take it more serious Billa too, right? Billet probably thought, or, or he got his own perspective of how he took it. Like, who was, who was so sent to it with from THF? What? What what did somebody from THL do to Sosa? What Sosa do for somebody THL to be into it? You get what I'm saying? Right. That's why I got to the bottom of it and made it make sense. You get what I'm saying? Like, what the smoke at? What happened? Do anybody got a story on what happened or what somebody did? You right. get what I'm saying? Like, how could a motherfucker confirm anything and they like tell me what happened? Is is B Billa still exiled from THF or are you guys cool now? No, that's my dog, man. Or, so you just had a that's little brother, issue that was for a while. Beef, man. Okay. Let me clear that shit up for the world, man. For a motherfucker like. Me, me. The, I'm the type of person I love my guys, man. So like, it's a situation. Bella handled the wrong way, on an emotional note. Which you know, what I'm saying, I understand people go through what they go through. Me or Bella should have never took that to the internet. You know, what I'm saying that's my dog, bro. Like, so we were saying shit to each other, negative to hurt each other feelings. Like some shit we could have handled on some brotherly love shit. Cause Bella one of the ones that I like. Bella one of the ones that influenced me to rap. <laughs> Bill the one of the ones I damn near they had write two, three songs for me when I first, first started rapping. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just never dropped them. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, like, bro wanted to see me do something with myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need no public apology because we apologize to each other as men. You know what I'm saying? We talk on the phone. You know what I'm saying? 
bro going through a situation right now, he just lost his mama, you know what I'm saying? I showed him I'm here for him regardless. Like, you know what I'm saying? We talk on the regular. Like, the internet, once I notice the internet take shit and run with it and try to capitalize off what they think they be doing, bro, the end, social media fuck up a lot of the relationships, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's up to us if we gonna let that type of shit happen. Like, Bella been around all his life. You know what I'm saying? Bella was with me every day. That was my boy. So, shit, I didn't say it. Like, nigga, you ain't been with me. You ain't been. It was shit. Just, we just saying to each other in there because we both bumping heads. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know how to take that type of shit on the chin, though, and accept my wrong doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, we both foul for running to the internet. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't say nothing but an indirect post mm. because he blocked me like a female. I told yeah. you, like, I'm like, I'm talking to you, nigga. I'm checking you one on one personally. Take it on the chin or treat me back. That's what I thought it was going to go like, but he blocked me. So I made an indirect post. And when I made my indirect post, he knew it was about him and responded to it. Once he responded, we got to going back and forth, and that's how that shit went like that. You get what I'm saying? Which we could have, we could have did, we could have handled that shit way differently. Like a lot of my guys that know us personally know that we fuck with each other. Didn't want that shit to go on, but it wasn't ever gonna go no farther than me and bro fighting each other when we see each other. Like I wasn't gonna cause no harm to him. He wasn't gonna cause no harm to me. You feel me? You know, we Trench's, both respect each other. You feel me? You know, Trenches news is don't know him at all. All right, so Trenches news. He recently said that King Vaughn used to have his lyrics written by some dude named Bloodbath or some shit. Like. Cap. Cap. Not at all. Blood bath, that's my doggy. Blood bath for uh, blood from St. Louis. He was the only blood that could county jail, you feel me? I fuck with Shorty Hard, but he never wrote no lyrics for fun game. You feel me? Since the news just be talking, man. Don't know him. That nigga act like he know me. Don't know me at all personally, blood. Never another nigga that never been around me. You feel me? Some shit he be saying be facts though. Because he he had to been around. He just nigga told told a motherfucker he lived in my building. I never seen him before, so he probably was around. And he just was a, a nigga I ain't never know. Hmm. But Bloodbath ain't wrote no motherfucking music. Bloodbath, one of Vaughn little homies, you feel me? Like he Vaughn fuck with him a long way, you feel me? Vaughn was in there thugging with Shorty. Like he ain't write no music, Vaughn. When I tell you, Vaughn never planned on rapping. He never planned on rapping, gang. Like that shit just came to him. How it came to him because he kept on with that shit. You feel me? Who is uh, THF Brubber? Because I, I seen a song where Dirt recently said he don't rock with him no more because he snitched or something like that. Who is THF Brubber? Yeah. I ain't never seen him. I ain't know he called himself THF Brubber. But Brubber, who he is, man, a rat. Brubber, one of the ones who, who, who got down on me, blood on the body. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So a lot of these niggas scatter shorty. They sucking his dick, whatever the situation is. He talk crazy, he get crazy, he act crazy. No respect coming from my way. That's all y'all need to know, man. Like, never been scared of him, ain't scared of him, ain't worried about him, gang. What's gonna happen, gonna happen, you feel me? But, you know, shorty do him. A lot of these niggas be really be tucking they shit from him, you feel me? He get wild. I ain't gonna take nothing from him. But he put me in a situation that he ain't had to put me in, bro. Like, and he giving this story to certain individuals, making it believe him because he a mass manipulator. But I got the facts, like, when it when it comes to me producing the facts, actually the shit, public records, gang. You could look my case load up, you know what I'm saying? My lawyer passed away, rest in peace, you know what I'm saying? That was on that case for the body. But this shit on 35th of Michigan, this shit on uh what y'all call that look that, that, that site that be dropping all the shit, uh Spot on Spot No, Chirac Ology. Oh yeah. Chirac Ology, yeah. My whole case load on Chirac Ology, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit in the statements that they I don't know if he got his the shit sealed because a lot of people case load with they case load the, the the witness name get blocked out only for trial so you won't know your witness so you won't get your witnesses uh killed or no shit like that in Chicago but you know I got I got the proper case load for the simple fact it, I'm I'm the victim I'm the, I'm 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 the, I'm the motherfucker that's victimized of the situation the motherfucker put me in so of course I got the shit but. Like, whenever I just really, you know, I don't be running to the internet with a lot of shit, but I let the streets do what the streets do. You know what I'm saying? I let the streets handle what the streets gonna handle. So I don't wanna be saying, like, I'm sitting here broadcasting that on social media trying to turn this motherfucking name like I'm hating on them and they know what they did. I know what they did. You feel me? So long as we know whatever gonna get handled out there, they gonna get handled out there. I don't ask for no help. I don't ask for no nigga to ride with me. I don't ask for no nigga, none of that shit. Bro. Like, you made your bed lay in it, nigga. You feel me? When it when it's time for the the, the, the situation to present itself, it's gonna get presented, gang. And that's what it is. They got they got the right to believe what they want to believe. You feel me? Only reason I, don't I know about, talk it about that shit is because Dirk put it in the song. So you feel like Dirk began shit hot because like he even like he said like uh, you know Zoo a chief out here. 
I feel like it'd be shit like that that'd be making people like make shit stand music out. Music is music. Music is entertainment. That's probably why them people be looking in on me because he's a big artist and he say a lot of shit in his music. But music is music. Music is entertainment. You feel me? Who not gonna talk about their brothers? Who not gonna big up their brothers? You get what I'm saying? Like that. You can't use music to try to solve nothing. Like I'm no motherfucking gang chief or nothing, blood. Because I. How is I'm a gang chief and I'm into the people that the same shit I claim they claim. You feel me? Like, ain't no such thing as no gang chief. Ain't no such chief out here what? How? He said he say the law trying to get you out the way they say he a chief out here. They the police think I'm a chief out here. You feel me? Let them think what they want to think. But how could they prove I'm a chief out here? I don't give orders. I don't get people hurt. I don't get people touched. You get what I'm saying? A chief how? Music is music. It's entertainment. He just trying to rhyme with his lyrics, man. You feel me? A lot of music they be trying to Criminate a motherfucker and try to put pieces to the puzzle because a lot of these niggas be on this bitch talking too much and putting their lifestyles out there so they believe everybody make music. It's so many cop rappers out here, shit. Y'all damn to believe everybody a killer, shit. You ask me? You feel me? <laughs> these niggas nothing. <laughs> Real facts, but shit. What's your thoughts on like, uh, you know, a lot of people be getting exposed for snitching this year. Like, what's your thoughts on like 1090J or him exposing rappers or you seeing him recently? Let me try and I already say gave my input on on tonight, Jake, dude. Like I thought he was the one that was exposing all the snitches. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, yes. But everybody for the grievances. You know what I'm saying? Rather right. you writing the police up or do you write anybody up? A grievance mean you writing. That's just like President charges. Rather it's on the police, you writing them up. You get what I'm saying? You writing them up. So they saying he filed a grievance on a nigga that's supposed to did something. You know what I'm saying? To somebody in there. It's, telling is telling, gang. So follow, all right, because that's what everybody been debating. Some people Ain't saying filing a grievance about. is not a, is not snitching. So man, filing a grievance is reporting the situation. Whether you reporting the police on the streets, whether you reporting the police officers in jail, or whether you reporting the motherfucker that did something to you in jail, a grievance is is reporting. That's just like a police report. You feel me? When the police suspecting you or something, they're gonna write everything down that they suspected you of. So this police report is gonna get used at court. On, when they run down your caseload on what you're getting charged with. You get what I'm saying? So a grievance is them reporting whatever they reporting. So whoever they wrote a grievance on, they're reporting it. And whoever that it got to go in front of going to hear it and see is it valuable enough for them to stand to charge you with the situation or to let it go. You get what I'm saying? If you file a grievance, they're going to let you know if they're going to approve it or or disapprove it. You get what I'm saying? It's a, it's reporting something. So it's telling blood. Telling is telling. However y'all want to consider telling, Y'all can't consider that. Like, I seen him going back and forth about the Kodak shit. Uh, what about when Kodak tried to get the police in trouble for beating them or whatever the fuck they did, uh, harassing him? I don't know, blood. A, a grievance, you either you either writing a grievance because you filing a lawsuit. You get what I'm saying? When I got my jaw broken in jail, I could have sued Cook County Jail. You get what I'm saying? But guess what comes behind suing Cook, Cook, Cook County Jail for failure to protect? You get what I'm saying? Mm. In order to look, sue them for failure to protect, Guess what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to press charges against the individual that snaked me. I'm going to have to press charges on that person. So if I press charges on him, what is that doing? Tell him, right? Yeah. Okay, then. So I can't file no grievance on Cook County Jail for failure to protect me in a facility. You know what I'm saying? I could say, oh, I told this officer, don't put me on his deck. My ops over here. I go over there with my ops anyway, get my jaw broken. Nigga be trying to do that for a lawsuit. But why he doing it for a lawsuit, his intentions ain't telling, but he's not getting a lawsuit if he's not pressing charges. You get what I'm saying? So it's going to be a hit or miss. If you, in order for you to, to file a grievance on anybody and try to get a lawsuit, because that's what niggas act like they use grievances for, for lawsuits, for jailhouse lawsuits. In order for you, you got to press charges on whoever you pressing charges on for the stance of paper trail behind anything you do. You get what I'm saying? So that's just to break that down for anybody that want to know. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can't say he snitched because I don't know what 1090 Jake's situation was or what he wrote a grievance on. You get what I'm saying? I never asked, like, it ain't my business. I, I was on live one day and the motherfucker like, what's your input? Same thing, y'all. What's your input on 1090 Jake? I'm who the fuck is 1090 Jake? The dude who be putting everybody on blast? Ain't that the nigga who be catching everybody else? Up? Yeah, he wrote a grievance on somebody. Woo, an inmate. If he wrote a grievance on the inmate game, that's telling, blood. A grievance is, is reporting them. You get what I'm saying? You seen the video of Boss Top when he was in, uh... No. Nah. Oh, yeah, there's a video that leaked the Boss Top and he was kind of like just giving a description of what a little Tim looked like. On body camera. Oh, I saw that. I thought you were talking about the one. That they, I, was, I just seen something before I came out here. That so, was on the internet. Boss Top was supposed to be in jail. Uh, and he just said that. An interview uh, or some shit like somebody that. Somebody with gold teeth, like, kind of giving a description of who shot Vaughn. How do you feel about that? Is that telling? Because people were saying that was telling. I ain't actually watch all that, but, uh, but 
I, I seen him when he was when he was saying like, man, I, they just grabbed me. I, just, I don't know what the fuck. Them motherfuckers just shooting from everywhere. Well, I just heard him. Just, I just heard him chatting. You feel me? I ain't really pay attention to like word for word what he said. Like, I don't, bro. I don't watch the YouTube videos to look at the comments. And see, oh yeah, he's snitching. Oh he he ain't telling you. I don't watch the, the, the when shit be on my screen. Like if I'm sitting here, like I was, I just really got to into no jumper probably like. A month and a half ago, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really be into all that shit, bro. Like, we got some I don't just stuff. click and watch every episode <laughs> y'all have or nothing. Like, for somebody that I feel like go be on that motherfucker talking about something and, and, and make it sense, I really be want to see what niggas' characteristics is and see if niggas going to get on this motherfucker and fly or not. You feel me? You know, but if I judge a motherfucker on what they doing, I'm just judging off me. I, I'm going to get my insight to myself. I ain't finna go live. Oh, yeah, dude, just did it. No, no jump interview. He flies. You feel me? Like, I did say something like I had... uh. Turn the camera around on no jumper. Like, these are the type of blogs where motherfuckers just sit and <laughs> gossip all day. You feel me? Like, this well, shit like that. Man. Like, but it's not y'all. That's not the one. The one dude who ran, I shook. Man, like, that, I ain't know that was all connected to with your shit, bro. Like, they sit and do a whole nother type of thing besides this, y'all just sitting right you here. You talking about Brick Baby? No, Brick, Brick Baby would be with y'all. It's the dude, the light skinned dude, the tats and the glasses. Like, ain't that no jumper, too? The mm -hmm. one where I shook his hand when I first came in. Light skinned dude with tattoos. The dude guys. that be stuttering. The light skinned oh, dude with the glasses. Flacco, not light skinned. <laughs> nah, but you said the dude. No, it's a light skinned dude with glasses. Oh, okay. The hat. He got the hat on. Oh, with sharp. The shades. Sharp, yeah. sharp. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, considered yeah. no jumper, too, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a different type of podcast. Yeah. We, we all mix and mingle, we'll do all kinds of different shit. Right. But he don't know jumper. But sure. they more, they more so uh, like. Y'all interview people. They more so uh, get a insight on. Well, they do the, interviews the, the, the too. Yeah. That they catch. We got what like you a, think about this. What you think about that? We got like a daily news thing. That's like, yeah, that yeah. That's what it's like a daily news yeah, yeah. thing. Like you feel me? Like that's what I was really talking about. Yeah, the, like yeah. the little jump. I'm like, I can't, I can't sit right there with them and just be gossiping about oh, what I think about this situation. I can't do that game. But oh, like yeah. that's y'all's job. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I can't do it. Man. All right. So yeah, how much more you got? Just a few more. Just a few more. No, we got a couple more. Because I've been, I've been told you do what you had to do and you ain't do it. Now I see that you all in your motherfucking phone, nigga. All right, so look, you had a relationship with uh Kodak? Like y'all have bumped heads or ran into uh, each other? I uh, I dealt with Kodak probably like twice on Facetime and probably been around him once. You get what I'm saying? But like I, one of my homies is his homie. You feel me? Like they from? I guess they from the same hood or area or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, like I ain't never had no real relationship with Yak. Like, you feel me? He fuck with duty, all right? Like, you know. So, how you feel about him taking a million dollars to do a song season on? Mm. I stated what I stated with that situation. Like, I mean, he feel like he did what he did. Ain't no nigga, can't no nigga change him. He dictated his own pace. That's how he feel. Like, I was just saying, I, I made a statement as far as, like, you know what I'm saying? The song I heard, which made me feel like it was a cap song, smoking the roaches and killing the rats. You feel me? Like, you 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 pushing this part as far as you on deal rest, you get what I'm saying? But now a certain amount of money get presented, you get what I'm saying? Your whole attitude and energy changes. I mean, you gotta stand up for what you stand up for. That's like me sitting here criminate myself and saying some shit, and then I try to go back on it and I can't go back on it no more. You get what I'm saying? Because it's already dropped. Like, you gotta know what you're saying before you say it, cause certain shit a motherfucker gonna cap capitalize off that. They done made all type of meat me about that, and then you turn around and do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not mad at him for doing what he's doing. He his own man. You feel me? He thugging how he thugging shit. That's if that's what he chose. He wanted to do. That's what he want to do, bro. I, I don't really be having no attention on. Really like, it's cool. Rap niggas cool. Like some of them. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't cap blood, but like same time, like I don't really like. It ain't like he did nothing to me. I ain't I ain't no smoke. What, what's the smoke? Like I don't care what the internet. If I make a statement and the NMA respond and make it try to build something up and try to start some type of beef or a war or something, you feel me? Like, he ain't get on no song and disrespect me or man, you feel me? Like, what the fuck? Like, what's, what's that gonna do for me? Like, what I'm gonna get out of that? You get what I'm saying? So, you wanna take a million dollars to do a song with somebody like that? I don't think you need to hit your cup of water. You, you drunk? <laughs> I gotta ask a question. <laughs> hit your water for me, young. We gonna, we gonna take a toast together, you hear me? I don't even think you even, should even get a response for that. You hear me? Yeah. Um, That's an insult. Are you cool with Lil Zay Osama? It's really cool. Was there an incident with him and some of your homies, allegedly? Yeah, so I heard of, allegedly, yeah. Yeah, something about robbing him or something? What do you know about that? Anything? I don't know about no rob. I don't know about nothing for real. Like, I was locked up when that shit happened. It's just I came home and heard the aftermath. I didn't heard a thousand different stories, so I ain't even put the piece. I ain't put my, my time consuming and try to figure out what's going on with that shit, bro. Like, 
this world right now is sort of like a, everybody want to be they self. You feel me? Everybody want to do what they do. So I don't really, they know what it is. I ain't going against my guys for no motherfucker. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. But it ain't no smoke with them for real, for real. Like, I ain't no motherfucker trying to hurt each other. It's just the internet guys and shit up and they, whatever happened, happened. I mean, they, they, for all I know, they probably trying to settle their difference. You feel me? I don't know what's going on. Like, I got so many problems, bro. I don't really be getting into all that right now. Like, I'm trying to fix everything I got going on. You feel me? Gotcha. I ain't influencing no motherfucker to be beefing, bro. Like, I don't be on that no more, gang. Like, I used to be wild as hell. It's a gang star and shit, being on bullshit. But, like, my, my mindset and my type of time, I'm on, I'm so so more so on some, if you ain't on what I'm on, get the fuck on. Don't come around me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, whatever going on, going on. They know what's up, though. Like, I ain't dissing my guys. I ain't sneak dissing my guys. I ain't doing none of that shit. You feel me? Like, if it's that, it's that. Just let a motherfucker know it's that. You feel me? That's all. That's all, that's all I got to say about that situation. I don't, I'm not in, indulging in that shit, bro. Like, that shit passed me. You feel me? Mm. It ain't happened on my watch. I could I could be a voice if a motherfucker allowed me to be a voice about the situation. But at the same time, niggas took matters in their own hands and did what they did anyway. So, like, we all grown out here, man. I'm going to let my nuts hang. You feel me? So, I just hope they let their nuts hang and it be what it be. You feel me? I, don't, I ain't with the diss and the rap diss and none of that shit, no, bro. I, don't, I ain't, I ain't got to do that to turn me up, man. I feel like if I keep on doing what I'm doing to stay consistent with it and stand on top of what I'm standing on, this shit going to come to me because it's meant for me, man. Like, I didn't call too many blessings. I didn't capitalize off a lot of situations, man. But you know what I'm saying? Every time I'm trying to do something big or every time a big play come my way, my legal situations always end up holding me back. So... Right now, I'm on a steady pace of trying to get this shit all the way over with so I can really do what I want to do because I ain't been free since I've been free. You get what I'm saying? If it makes sense. Like, mm. I ain't really been free since I've been free, bro. You know? So everybody looking like, damn, he bullshit. And he, he, he stopped dropping. No, I want this shit to go how it go. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm no. Like, I ain't got to worry about falling off, homie, because this shit, uh, the, the real going to fuck with the real eventually anyway, man. The real going to win, the fake going to lose. That's my slogan. You feel me? So, a uh, nigga can only fake it so long. I ain't got to worry about. Trying to be comp a lot of niggas in competition, secret competition at that. I ain't got to be comp competitive with no nigga because I know how I'm coming. I know how niggas coming for real. They be acting like they coming like that. Nah, mm. that ain't what it is. So I ain't no secret competition. I'm just continue to do me and thug it out how I thug it out, man. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully I'm be at the top where I belong, you know? Right. Is, it, is there anybody we should be looking out for, like any new music or anybody that you fuck with that you want to shed some light on? I told y'all, you know, I've been working on my project. This motherfucker gonna go crazy, man. So, like, I ain't put no time in on it because I'm still working hard to get everything out at the same time, man, you know? I, I just did this interview. I just did this interview, so uh, shit, shit finna follow. You feel me at the same time, though? But, like, my project I've been working on, I'm still getting this production team. I want this autobiography to drop at a certain time after I drop my project. Like, I want everything on the time. And, like, you know, I'm on some independent shit right now, so, like, at the same time. I'm doing what I'm doing, you know? I'm OTL, that's bro them, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm doing me, gang. Like, I'm I'm, I'm building my I'm building my shit up how I'm supposed to build it up, gang. Like, you know? You got I, any, any artists underneath you that you, like, pushing or anything? Yeah, I got a lot of my guys that I'm pushing behind. Like, I'm always going to push for my guys, you know what I'm saying? Everybody from every block do what they're supposed to do when it comes to their block, you know what I'm saying? Like, Bro, them be, be, be having so much going on, I've been paying attention to the fans, want us to do something together. And I, a lot of us rap for my block, and we ain't got no music together. So that's what I'm really working on, right? Like, real live. Like, I probably will put a project together with all my guys, too, because there's so many of us that rap. The fans, like, damn, y'all got music with everybody else. Why y'all ain't got music with each other? And it makes sense. I'm like, damn, why don't we got no music with each other? You feel me? So everybody be all over the place. They probably be looking like a motherfucker be dissing the whole time. We with each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm always going to gonna, gonna, gonna shout out the roof of my team. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how this shit's supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? I played a major part in these streets. And I was influenced to a lot of my guys, too, you know what I'm saying? So at the same time, like, I'm definitely trying to work on just getting us to do the right shit, too, you know what I'm saying? Because I know that shit going to be crazy. Like, it's so much talent. Everybody got their own flows. Even with OTF, like, all us got different flows, you know what I'm saying? We supposed to be the 2023 24 Cash Money Hot Boys and No Limit, you get what I'm saying? Like, we a big influence to the world, you know what I'm saying? But like I told you, like, it just take, it take time consuming, gang, like, Everybody got to get in, get in that bitch and do the right shit and, and stay on top of it. You know what I'm saying? No, nigga shouldn't feel like, oh, he harder than him or he weaker than him. Let's put this shit out here and get their ass what they looking for because this is what they want. You get what I'm saying? Are you yeah. trying to get out of Chicago? Like, once you're off house arrest, would you would you like to potentially move out? Or 
Is that not really? I love my city, but I, yeah, I would. Like, I ain't gonna never stop going to Chicago. I'm just moving right while I'm in Chicago. You get what I'm saying? But for the most part, yeah, I'm trying to get rich so I can move my kids and have them somewhere safe so I ain't gotta grow up in the environment that's going on. You get what I'm saying? Like, don't nobody want their kids growing up in the city for real, man. The city fucked up and corrupt. Like, mm. I'm glad I got more girls. I only got two boys. You feel? I'm glad I got more girls. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to worry about too much. Like my girls, smart, wise. They not fast and no shit like that. So you know what I'm saying? Like I'm glad so far. I just be trying to focus on my sons. You know what I'm saying? And make sure they don't just jump into the streets mm-hmm. and try to follow my footsteps. You get what I'm saying? But I definitely want to move my kids out of town, man. So I'm jumping. I'm definitely. That's why I'm shooting for the stars to get rich. So all my kids could be straight, man. Try to set a foundation for them. A family tradition I leave behind, you know what I'm saying? Just in case anything was to happen, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And so a lot like I just I just wanna make sure I just keep some my plan that I got, I ain't too good with telling people my plans no more. I just wanna just just I just wanna accomplish them, you feel me? All my plans, I like to put them bitches in play. I'll be at the drum boy a lot. I just wanna put them in play and just stop telling motherfuckers. Motherfucker I always end up scooping up my shit up and motherfucker might be in a better position than me to capitalize off of, you feel me? And not even lay the credit on the motherfucker. So I'd rather just do what I do and make shit shake it. Then motherfucker like, yeah, he's still in no business. He on he on this shit, you feel me? So I be I like surprising people with a lot of shit, bro. All right, Respect. so if you had like a message to the youth, just like to end it, what would you tell the youth? Everybody that's listening. Same on? shit I get on my live and tell the youth every day, man. You will get respected more to be yourself, man. Like I told y'all, I don't want all y'all following Sue following lead, thinking all oh, this picking up these guns and trying to hurt something gonna get you the respect you need because at the same time the niggas that die for the respect bro be the same motherfuckers that die for the respect if you get what i'm saying man niggas be trying to go viral for a viral moment and end up going viral like that ain't the way out all the time it's a million and one ways to, 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 to check a bag bro like being no street nigga no killer bro niggas be getting their ass clipped because you make a motherfucker scatter you you know what time it is after you make a motherfucker scatter you man motherfucker want you out the way if they can't get you out the way the right way they're gonna get you out the way the wrong way so my message to the youth man I just want y'all to just go ahead, push forth, and try to stand on top of this business when y'all see what we on with the city, especially Chicago. And this shit go for everybody else that's watching all over the world too. But I'm pushing my city for the most part, man, on that, on that stop the violence shit. I want everybody to try, try to help get each other on the same court. Like, I don't give a fuck if a nigga, like, 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 like Blue say, nigga ain't got to come by y'all nothing. But, like, at the same time, man, let's, let's bring our city back to what it used to be, man. For real, for real. Like, our city so fucked up. I ain't no plan in parks. Parks dead. Kids walking the streets dead. Walking to the candy store dead. People scared to even let their kids on the porch. You get what I'm saying? Like, I want to bring our city back and I want to help. So, like, shit going to take time. It's going to do what it's going to do. But, you know what I'm saying? Whatever a nigga with, don't hesitate to reach out to me to tap in with me to see what type of time I'm on because that's what I'm on. You know what I'm saying? I'm pushing that shit like everybody else pushing. I ain't got to rotate. I don't see no reason for me kicking with certain individuals. So, I ain't got to rotate with them. But I'm on that. You get what I'm saying? Like, just tap in with a motherfucker and make that shit shaking. You know what I'm saying? I got some I got some good brothers that's pushing this shit with us throughout the city too, man. So like hopefully that shit make a change. Cause I know I'm a major influence and I play the part of this shit. So hopefully it changes our city, you feel me? If if not a lot, a little bit. I'm satisfied with that though, you feel me? Just nigga ain't gotta make a great accomplishment, just as long as a nigga try. You get what I'm saying? And that's that, that, that that's 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 what I'm going for, for. You get what I'm saying? So that's all I got, you know. Nah, yeah, man. Thing, yeah, thing. This has been an amazing conversation. Like, I just really appreciate it. You probably got like one of the best conversational styles out of the whole Chicago, the whole era that you come from. Like, you're definitely one of the best talkers. A lot of the biggest names in the Chicago drill scene are not exactly the best interviews, but you just like casually just hit us over the head with like three hours worth of game. That was three hours. No that was fucking crazy. If you pay attention to me on my lives, man, I, yeah. I, I do it every day, bro, to try to make sure I t- tap in with the youth, man. Like, What's your gram just so that they can uh, follow uh, you? Uh, Big Ball Zoo underscore 46, man. That's yeah. my Instagram. So if a motherfucker ain't tapped in, tap in with me. Legendary. Yeah, Remo? That was legendary Thank for you, the show. Big Thank you to Remo. Remo pushed me and reminded me about like 10 times to get this interview done. So I got to give him credit for actually you know, you know, rem- making me do it. He stayed you, on man. your ass too. Sure. So it was what? it was a lot of work to get yeah, this Remo, done. But we did jump through the phone with each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, this man, motherfucker, boy. Zoo is on me. Oh, man. Appreciate you, dog. Good fucking with y'all, bro. I appreciate y'all once again, though, man. THF Bezu, no jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Have a slap, man. Dirk, come holla at us, man. Yeah, we're Dirk guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta come back. Yeah, you gotta make that happen next.
Yeah, he, I mean, he was here about five years ago. Why not come back? Do it for Vaughn, man. Vaughn was there too, man. Shit. All right. Hey, everybody at home, like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate you. Nojumper.com. Follow us on all platforms. Shout out Remo. Let's go. We out.